The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pig! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, October 24th, 2023. This sports program starts now. Football! Happened last night, and more surprises have been in store this NFL Week 7 than we have seen all year. Week 7 of the NFL slate continued as an incredibly unpredictable one as the Minnesota Vikings beat the San Francisco 49ers last night, where Kirk Cousins was dealing and Brock Purdy was giving away the ball. He has looked like a human for the last two games. Is this what Brock Purdy is going to be for the rest of the year? Or is he just in a slump that he's going to find his way out of? There will be a lot of chatter about that today. We'll also have... John Bucci Gross oh. of ESPN NHL coverage because tonight all 32 NHL teams will be playing and it will all be broadcasted in an NFL Red Zone style broadcast called the Frozen Frenzy. Hey. Yeah, I don't know about the name. I appreciate Frozen Frenzy. It's good alliteration. I think Ice Zone would have done the For sure. done the job and everybody would have got it. But nonetheless, an incredibly novel concept coming to hockey tonight. Bucci Gross will be hosting it. We can't wait for this. This should be electrifying. We'll also be joined by a man who's a part of a defense that made Brock Purdy and the boys look like humans last night. The hitman, Harrison Smith, will be joining us. Fresh off a big-time dub over the San Francisco 49ers. Had a force fumble, yeah. six tackles, yeah. and a pass breakup. Now, he didn't have two picks like Bonham, but we'll certainly ask about why that potentially happened. Can't wait to get a little check-in from the Minnesota Vikings, especially after a massive win last night. Aaron Rodgers will join us at 105. He'll be breaking down all the latest uh, vaccinations. Yeah, nice. problem. And that's it. Yeah, yep. exactly. We won't talk about anything else. Obviously, that is all we talk about the entire uh -huh. time, even though that's maybe the only thing that people would seem to cover in one particular part of the world. And then they say that's all we talk about. Interesting stuff. But Aaron, Aaron Rodgers will be coming on. Big game for the Jets. Dude. Yeah. They got the Giants. Mm -hmm. Whoa. This is New York, New Jersey wow. supremacy conversation happening yeah. this weekend. And for Aaron, what has he seen out of the Jets team that makes him believe that they'll still be around whenever he could potentially get back in record timing with a torn Achilles? And then how about... What about Brock Purdy, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert? All right. these guys kind of going through a little bit of one of these. Mm -hmm. What did Aaron Rodgers say to them? And has he ever done that? What is his take? He was on the Manning cast last night. Fantastic. So yeah. Love the Manning cast. It's hard to watch the game yeah. while you're watching the Manning cast. Almost impossible. Yeah, so you kind of have to watch the game twice. One with the Mannings mm -hmm. and then one back just without them. Last night's game was a great one. Cannot wait oh, to yeah. chat about it all day today and then look ahead and also chit-chat with Sham Sharani in the third hour. You know, our NBA guy in the NBA season tips so off this evening. Good luck. You're going against all 32 NHL teams in the frozen frenzy. Uh -oh. uh, the NHL seems to take a stand here on this glorious Tuesday. We will try to make your lives all much dumber. The toxic table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. See the shark on the on the chest. Is that because PJ Fleck always preaches the necton mentality? Yeah, he does. You know, because the shark is necton. Uh -huh. Necton's always hungry, always looking for your next meal, always going forward. Is that why you wore the shark? Because they beat the hell out of the yeah, Iowa they Hawkeyes. Didn't. They didn't this past weekend. They no, I, no, I would never do that to Ty. And uh, to be completely honest, I do stand on Ty's side of the fence. I do believe the snake oil salesman is still Whoa. coaching in Minnesota. See? And you know, just won see? the bronze pig first time. You don't you you say snake oil? I say results. I mean, do we, do <laughs> we need Always to go incredible. back into what we talked about yesterday? There should be an asterisk by that. It was a fugaze. It was not a real win. But that's neither here nor there. I don't I don't know why Connor wore you know the shark t shirt. Why'd you wear the shark t shirt? I just figured it's a nice one. This is where it all started. You know, this is like the first graphic tee. Figured, Getting chucked up a little bit almost. Oh, you know, <laughs> yeah. While I was talking about it, it just took me back to, you know, being just a little sweet boy. 
One day just looking for shirts with animals on them and how far we've come. Now I'm just a big, dumb boy yep. looking for sharks on T-shirts. Yeah, but you're a good boy. Yeah, you're a I, sweet boy. I try, you are I sweet try to be. Boy. I, try, uh, I appreciate that very much. One half of the Hammer, Don, Don. Cowboys Tone Digs. Hammer, Don, Don is a gambling show that comes out of this particular office every single day where Tone and the other half of the Hammer, Don, Don Cowboys, Bubba Gumpino, go through everything. Interesting gambling stats on week seven here. The public was, what, one in eight or something like that? Yeah, the top... The top eight bet games were 0-8, and, and then over 70% 1-8 with the Seahawks there. Yeah, the public was old yeller this weekend, hmm. and the, the, the gambling, the books, they were that rabid wolf, and then we had to be taken out back and shot behind the, the shed. That was what the public happened last this weekend. It was tough. Well, nice. Well said. Okay. Well said, Tom. So old yeller is that dog movie. Yes, yeah. yes. I've not seen it because any animal, uh, any movie that involves a dog. Mm-hmm. What about a thousand percent chance heartbreak at the end? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I like dogs. That I don't want to put myself. I'd rather laugh than go through it. Whole, but you just you said that sad movie yeah. that is inevitable. Yeah, we all kind of saw it coming too with the sports books how they were yeah, losing. Yeah. Right, the sports books mm -hmm. were losing at a rapid rate last year. The sports books won more than they had ever won, even whenever sports gambling wasn't legal and it was just happening on the streets and in the bottom of restaurants and bars and everything like that, or even in the, whatever. They weren't losing or winning as much as they were last year. Last year, they won every weekend outright. It was tough. That's why the scripted conversation got so loud, yep. because the public was losing money more than it had in the past. This year, the start of the season, public got back. We were beating the shit yep. out of the yep. sports books. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, week seven comes around, the sports books go, oh, not so fast, my friends, as if they're Lee Corso. Mm -hmm. And that continued last night. I just saw from John Ewing's Twitter, who was just up there, um, weeks one through five, 62% against the spread was the public. Weeks six and seven, 44% against the spread mm -hmm. was okay. the public. Yeah, so it's it only going to be lower. Yeah, it's yep. to, need to it's, know that. Hey, we, we need to know that right now. So whenever you're thinking about just taking a hack at every single game, maybe dial it back a little yeah, don't. bit. Don't. Mm -hmm. Only do your top couple that you like yeah. because they're going to get you. They're starting to expose us. They're starting to think how we're starting to think. And they got AI on their side at a much rapid, uh, more rapid level than us. So we got to remember that as we gamble. Speaking of gambling, this man puts out picks every single week. Yep. <laughs> I have no idea how he's doing. I assume it's fantastic because He's got a big brain, nine-year NFL vet, host of the Man to Man podcast, and everything DB. Darius J. Butler is here. Hey, hey, D-Bot, we got a packed show today. I'm excited about that. But let's dive into this game uh, mm -hmm. from last night. Brock Purdy, okay, he's played 16 games. He has seven interceptions over those 16 games. Four of them come in the first 14. Three come in the last two games. Obviously, two last night in the last five minutes of a game. That's crucial time. Can't happen. Brock Purdy has looked more normal than he has ever looked in the NFL. Even though he's the last pick in the NFL draft, I think he played himself into an expectation level where it's like, this dude's making all the right decisions yep. and making all the right throws. He did have moments last night where he was throwing darts. Mm -hmm. Jennings caught a couple. I you caught a couple. George Kittle caught a couple. He looked off safeties. He had great football. But whenever it came time for the Niners to do what they have done over this entire run with Brock Purdy, the ball went the other way. Not only last night, but also against the Browns. Yeah. Are we finding normalcy here out of Brock Purdy, or what do you think it is? Uh, you know, yeah, a couple. Uh, I wouldn't even say bad games, but some just some bad plays, and, and he just started his career career so damn near perfect. It seems so. It's a little slump. I think he'll be all right though. But play two good defenses. Obviously, the Browns. You know, they've been uh, historically good until they ran into the buzzsaw that is yeah. Minshew Mania. Well, and then last night, brother. you know, uh, the Minnesota Vikings, their defense is kind of, I guess, coming into their own based on their performance last night. Obviously, San Fran misses some pieces, but everybody's missing pieces at this point in the season. But, I mean, from beginning to end, I felt like that uh, Vikings defense was on point. Big play giving up with the uh, C-Mac, got caught in that blitz, and then there was some other ones. But Brian Flores has this guy, these guys flying around, Hitman, he'll be on later. He was making plays. His his counterpart back there, Bynum, was making some huge plays, sealed the game. Um, so I think I think Brock will be all right. He had his team in position to win that game last week until you know Moody wide right. Um, I think he'll be all right. And sure. Moody missed another one, but hit a big one too for them yep. towards the end, and also had another chance to win it. 
here. Oh, yeah. They were still in it. If you didn't throw that pick at the end, still have a yeah. chance to very much win that game. So it's not like the Niners were ever out of it, even though they weren't playing perfect. On the flip side, Vikings. Hey, let's yeah. go. Yeah. Vikings offensive line hold the San Francisco 49ers defense to zero sacks and 44 dropbacks against Kirk Cousins. What? That makes no sense. Daniil Hunter's out there hunting uh, mm-hmm. on the other side of this thing. Their defense is flying. The Vikings, all of a sudden, last year, they were 11-0 and in games that were decided by like seven points or less or something. They started the season 0 for 3, 0 for 4. It was getting bad. You thought the football gods had turned on him. T.J. Hawkinson had a big one. Mm-hmm. Now, he was a little injured. was going to take him a while to get off the field. And Coach KOC tells him to get down. And everybody says, they're faking injuries. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they would at that particular time. But that team seemed to have their most full game. Yeah. And Kirk Cousins throws for 300 on primetime yeah. again. Mm-hmm. And everybody brings up his stats about primetime and how he performs and everything like that. How about him going right back to Addison like three times after that first interception that took place on yeah. the third play of the game? How about what he was able to connect with out of the backfield? How about Kirk Cousins stepping in there and being a guy? And Addison proving himself without Justin Jefferson as well. And if you talk to Kirk, he came on our show, I think, and he said, everybody tells me about how bad we are in prime time. And Kirk like, kind of said, I think I threw for like 300 yards, had three touchdowns, no interception, but I get it. Yeah, I understand, I understand yeah. that that is a quarterback stat, the wins and losses. Incredible effort there by Jordan Addison there, the rookie who had to make big plays because Justin Jefferson was yeah. out. But do we are we turning on his Vikings team? I know we've said in the NFC North that it's the Lions, the Lions, the Lions. There's still a lot of season left. And if the Vikings are able to play against the Niners like that, mm-hmm. let's assume they're able to do that against everybody in the NFL. Yeah, who knows if they're going to catch the Lions, but after last night it does feel like, okay, this team could go on a little bit of a run in the middle here and you know with the Niners obviously it's tough party doesn't look like who he is but Michael Lombardi has mentioned this in the past teams that you know go all the way they start hot and then in the middle they have a lull and then they finish hot and it feels like we're entering that middle lull for some of these teams but if I'm a Vikings fan what you see out of Jordan Addison and thinking that Justin Jefferson isn't even on the field while he's doing this uh, you got to be through the roof Madison he, that was the best he's looked all year too did we know Justin Jefferson was not going to be playing last night how long is he out uh, at least I think two, this is his more? second week, yeah. right? At least four weeks, so at least two more weeks, I would assume. Him so. on the sideline with that grill oh. <laughs> is awesome. Shades. I need to know, though, like, there was chatter about Kirk getting traded yeah. because this they were just going to punt this season off. Yeah. Now, I can't imagine the Vikings without Kirk Cousins going forward, and it's such a week-to-week league. I assume Vikings fans are starting to think that as well. I don't know. There's- I mean, I would think so. After last night, too, like you mentioned, the interception on the opening drive, which they've turned the ball over on like their first possession so many <laughs> times this year, and you just think, like, okay, the, the Niners are about to dog walk them. And then they stand back up, punch them in the mouth, and force a, a turnover when the Niners are in the red zone. Like I think it was the first time this year that they've actually shown some resiliency early, and then they did. I mean, Kirk has already said, like, hey, I'm – I'm staying here. Like I, I'm not waving my no trade clause. I don't want to have to worry about you know finding a new school for my kids and a new uh, new house just to be like a, a rental somewhere else. Like he wants to stay there, and he is good. You know, yeah. like he he does what he can. If their defense can play like they did last night, like there's we still don't really know that much about the NFC. I feel like they're they're so top heavy, but that you know four through seven playoff seeds like. If the if the Vikings can put together a couple good weeks here, they got Green Bay, who right now looks terrible next week. Like if they can put a couple wins together in a row, like there's no reason they can't be in a position to make the playoffs Schedule's at the very, end of the season. Very gettable. And the Niners got the Bengals, so you Ooh. know that's not necessarily the right team to have at this particular stage of what the Niners are going through. And you do talk about the top of that. You got the Eagles, the Lions, and then the Niners up there. Home field advantage is a big deal. This Niners need to you know play that. I said this on uh, first take. Like, home field advantage of the playoffs, big deal. Huge. San Francisco or Philadelphia, I mean, that's two very different environments for the most important game of the year. Last year, San Fran had to go to Philly, mm-hmm. and we all saw what kind of took Spe- place, even though they got unlucky. Especially at that time of year, you know, going to Philly, who knows what the weather would be, what you have sure. to deal with coming from Cali if you have to go through Philly. But another thing about this Vikings team, last night, that offensive line, you know, the, the, uh, we know who the Niners are on defense, um, but that offensive line, it was like the, the you know, KOC could do anything he wanted. It was running the ball well. The screen game was intact. Obviously, Kirk Cousins standing in the pocket.
pocket, dialing up downfield. If that offensive line can continue to play like that, um, they can definitely stack a few. Vikings are three and four. You lose a couple more, you still got double digit wins. Mm -hmm. Still in the playoffs. The right time to get hot is when? Later, not now. Are they starting that trip as we speak? Their next six are Green Bay, Atlanta, New Orleans, Denver, Chicago, and Vegas. Like, Here we go. I, I wouldn't get be surprised. Here they we can, go. Not a bad time for the Vikings to get going. Uh, all those other teams are thinking the exact same sure. thing, obviously. <laughs> we'll talk to the hitman, Harrison Smith, in about 16 minutes or so. Joining us now is a man who's hosting a show tonight that I think might be my favorite thing to ever be created. Mm -hmm. You see the NFL Red Zone every single Sunday with Scott Hansen, where he doesn't pee for seven hours mm -hmm. of commercial free football. Tonight, Frozen Frenzy is the name, and John Bucciagross will be hosting a show that will be highlighting all 32 NHL teams playing this evening. It should be electrifying. Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, Bucci Gross. Yeah, yeah Bucci! Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Bucci, mm. man. What are you eating, man? Coffee number one of 42, Pat. That's right. Ooh, nice. Chocolate frosted <laughs> donut. That's what I'm saying. Shout out Plum Burrow. Hey, you're damn right. Shout out to Plum Burrow, and shout out to you for joining us. Once again, you look properly jocked yep. on this beautiful Tuesday. You look very good. Still in, uh, obviously, the rigorous workout routines, and the tats look sharp as well. It's my McAfee uniform. Hell yeah. As long as you have me, this is my uniform. <laughs> hey, I'm happy. You know, it, I, I, go ahead. I had to stop at Walmart and buy a, a six pack, 18 bucks. That's a pretty good deal. <laughs> six packs for 18 bucks. Yeah. That's what Walmart would do for you. I didn't, uh -huh. didn't have, drive an ESPN, didn't have one, got the call to come on McAfee late. Late shift change. They said, "All right, I got to find a Walmart." <laughs> <laughs> Go. Hey, bad respect for that move. I appreciate it. And shout out to Walmart, always being there for you. Always, yeah. always being there for Hell you yeah. if you need it. You know. Uh, let's talk. About, yeah. Let's talk about tonight, Bucci. This is a big deal, dude. This is a big deal. Huge. All 32 NHL teams are playing. It's the first night of the NBA as well. But the NHL just decided, hey, we're going to make an electrifying evening and you're going to be broadcasting all of them pretty much in an NFL red zone style. This seems like a genius decision by the NHL. <laughs> what do you know about how tonight's going to go and how should we expect it to operate? Yeah, they're all 16 games on ESPN+. Plus. ESPN also has their own triple header with Levy and Messier and PK in between periods. So, yeah, you know, the NHL worked with us. We asked for these staggered times every 15 minutes, the first 12 games. They've never had all 16 uh, games played on a weekday. This is the first time we've had it on a weekday. It's happened uh, once before on a weekend. So, yeah, we'll give it a shot. The people have asked for staggered times. They're getting staggered times. And so me and Weeksy will jump around and uh, try to, you know, figure this out. It's a little different. There's no red zone in hockey. We can't jump around every time a team gets into the offensive zone so uh we got to figure this out maybe a lot of power plays if Connor bedard goes on a power play or ovechkin will get there so it's a kind of a new thing so give us some rope have you guys done any rehearsals or anything on any other evenings there's nothing really similar i guess yeah i told people I, you rehearse for this by watching hockey just about every night for 25 years <laughs> that's how i've rehearsed for tonight you can't fake it man you can't you know you you, you live the sport you watch the sport you talk the sport. Me and Weeksy, Kevin Weeks, who will be next to me, uh, oh, yeah. we're both hockey nerds who live the sport and love the sport. Okay, so let's talk about the numbers. NHL is up on ESPN from what I've been told. Let's go. Let's yeah. keep growing the game, Bucci. I think tonight helps with that. Yes, testosterone and ratings both up, Pat. Well, clearly in that car, and we're hoping forever in this Thunderdome. Bucci, have an incredible evening. Frozen Frenzy, what time does it start tonight? Uh, 7 o'clock, ESPN Plus, ESPN 2. The rest of the night. All Please right. watch. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We're Booch. Counting on you. Hey, Deuce, we got it. Ladies and gentlemen, John Booch. Hey, hey, hey. Well, go and talk to those Indiana dudes. Uh, where's Walmart? <laughs> yep. Let me go find. Uh, yeah, awesome. See, that's a beater I do believe he yeah, had on. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, a little bit different than a T-top. You, although you can get a great deal on those beaters at Walmart, these tank tops are seven, eight bucks a pop. <laughs> okay? Whoa. You're not getting six. Whoa. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is high society here, Bucci. I am pumped for this this evening, though. So pumped. Who, who are the Pens beating? Oh, Dallas tonight. Yeah. Oh, We're oh. beating the hell out of Texas. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Connor Bedard, uh, if he goes to a uh, 
Yeah, we need to cut the Bruins and Blackhawks tonight. Yeah. Yes, we're going to see a lot of that. I hope Bedard brought his boxing gloves because we are going to be pestering that little son of a bitch all night. You think Beecher, the little cheap shot artist, is going to be hammering Bedard tonight? Yeah, we're, we're sending Johnny Beach straight towards Connor to Bedard that. tonight, and it's not going to look good. It's not going to end good for You don't Chicago. think Bedard's not used to that? Yeah. You don't think used Bedard's not used to not people trying to NHL. take him out? Uh-uh, not against an original six hockey team, my friend. This is very, we're very also new. Six. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Is okay. Does Bedard play against the Blackhawks ever? No. He's Every day. Yeah. Practice. practice. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, you think they're running them? You think they're hitting in practice? Yeah. Yeah. Not like the Bruins hit in practice. I'll it's tell like you that much. Yeah. Original six teams, too. There's some of them that have been so bad for so long, it's hard to even respect that title. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah the, the Toronto Maple Leafs. You're right. Oh, they, they've been uh, in the yeah. playoffs. Yeah. yeah the, I mean, the Blackhawks. That's not who we were talking about. Who are you talking about? Yeah. You know who we're talking You're about. You're not talking about the Detroit Red Wings, who lead the league in goals this year so far. You're not talking about that team. I know uh, that. Okay. It, what, we four games into this thing? Of course you Detroit Red Wings are celebrating Average that. six games at – or six goals at home what? so far. That, I'm so excited. When? That's how many goals we score. The they, brand-new Lions are number two in the NFC right now for mm-hmm. home field advantage. Yep. And the Detroit Red Wings are averaging the most goals per game in the NHL. Oh, yeah. Man, congrats to Detroit. Honestly. Yeah. yeah. Give it time. If it wasn't for that one place. What's that? Michigan for ruining everything going on. Yeah, because they're cheating. Are oh, you talking Michigan State? No, 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 no. Michigan State, that school does Hitler stuff. This is much different. This is strictly talking about the Michigan University football team. Just to clarify what he was saying there. For those that didn't know this, Michigan State did have Adolf Hitler on their uh, Jumbotron yep. this past weekend before hosting the Michigan Wolverines, yes. which is also in the state of Michigan, mm-hmm. which is now being party. accused of uh, cheating, obviously, and stealing signs, which has had everybody have a take on it. Every competitive human you've heard speak about it, just like with SignGate with the New England Patriots, mm-hmm. has come out and said, yeah, people have been trying to steal signs in every single facet of every single sport since the beginning of time. Now Pete Thamel saying, you know, they've kind of zeroed in on Connor Stallings. Ooh. Connor Stallings, ex-captain in the Marine Corps, I do believe. That's right. He has been hired by Michigan over the years, and they uh, seized his computer, allegedly. Uh-oh. He has been the one that has been linked to being the guy that has set up the sign-stealing operation, if you're reading all the narratives and tea leaves, coming from Pete Thamel. Now he's saying... This guy's bought tickets for more than 30 games at 11 Big Ten schools over the past three years. Also, video evidence of sideline taping is expected to be sent to the NCAA this week, caught by stadium surveillance around the Big Ten. Uh, mm. Now, there's a counter-argument to this, that Connor, former captain in the Marine Corps, also was buying tickets for maybe military vets oh. around Big Ten schools, okay. trying to represent Michigan in that particular way, which might be the case. But what they're alluding to is that this guy was the chief officer operating officer of the sign stealing operation <laughs> mm-hmm. and I'm fascinated to see what video evidence gets turned in because what if this surveillance is like every other surveillance video we see grainy you know pretty mm-hmm. not, and it's just this guy with his phone up like this and then all Michigan people are going to say the guy can't take a picture to commemorate the moment in which he is exactly. watching his favorite Big Ten team play like I feel like this is just going to get so muddy with he said, she said, mm-hmm. that's not real excuse. What is the case that we're never really going to get to the bottom of it? And all the while, we're going to potentially ruin a run by a team that is very good right now, mm-hmm. which is this Michigan Wolverines team. Yeah. They are very, very, very good right now. And all anybody's going to say, okay, just like what happened with the Patriots. Oh, yeah. Deflate gate, spy gate, boom, boom, boom. All anybody's going to say for the rest of the season is, well, of course. I mean, I said it. Whenever I was on the grab bag, I was uh, everything that comes from this Michigan sideline and Michigan team is going to be equated to the sign-stealing situation. Now. That's just how it's going to be. Mm-hmm. With that being said, I do not think <laughs> – I mean, I might be wrong. I, I like you're, to not, read, you're not wrong. I like to read humans. You know, I like to think like – How would humans that were doing this act? Now, you can't always get into the mind of people, especially Michigan people. I would never be accepted there. I'm not 100% sure if they are stealing signs in this massive operating style that they would put it on a a piece of lamp and then just be waving it (laughs) in the face of pretty much the other team and the cameras. That might be their own signals that they give out, Mm -hmm. but I'm not 100% sure that this is the other team's signals in which they put on a piece of paper just so they can get a reminder whenever they're there on the sideline, and then they're just going to be so loose with that. Maybe. I don't want to be a Michigan apologist. Okay, I don't. But until they show us video or evidence of them actually – 
utilizing a camera, zooming in, clearly taking these signals home, using uh, any type of AI or computer yep. or anything to tell them what the people are doing. I think nobody in the com competition world is going to take it that seriously. For instance, here's Matt Rule talking about the entire situation. He would obviously love to have Michigan get kicked the hell out and get punished and Jim Harbaugh leave. Here's him chit-chatting about the whole entire thing. Yeah, sign stealing happens every game. Um, there's nothing wrong with there's nothing wrong with teams over there looking over trying to steal our signs. There's nothing wrong with us trying to look at their signs. That's why you should have mics in the helmets, right? Like all these coaches that vote against it every year is because they don't want to teach their quarterback. You know, in the NFL, each quarterback goes out there with three play calls <laughs> because if I see if I see the free safety's foot like that, it might be one high. I'm going to check to this play. And if I, but you get to college and you're watching a game on a Tuesday night, and you know they they got the signal and they're just calling a play. So. Uh, it's what makes college football, to me, that's why they score maybe more points, but it's also why the kids are less prepared. So that's why they should, there should be, 100% should be, we could get rid of all the stupid signs on the sidelines, we could get <laughs> pictures of, you know, rock stars and all that stuff, and we could just play football the way it was meant to be. You go to a high school game, there's technology on the sideline. You go to an NFL game, there's technology on the sideline. You go to the college, there's nothing. When you, when you played in Michigan, did you have any suspicions that there was more than the usual amount of knowledge on their side? I, I am. I'm, I, I, you know, no one from the Big Ten or NCAA has asked me anything yet, so I'm not going <laughs> to probably comment on anything like that. I, I would never want to cash shade at somebody else going through a hard time. I don't know anything. Uh, I like him taking the high road there. But yeah. what if when the NCAA asks you, is, yeah, that's why we didn't beat him. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you tell me. I don't know what you want from me. But it is everybody that has ever had a prominent role in actual sports, like – at a college level or professional level, no offense to the people that played high school. I understand how much you love the game and how awesome you were and everything like that. But to get to the next level, the competitive juices that you have to have, the competitive stamina that you have to have are just at a different level. It's going to make you work a little bit harder. It's going to make you be dedicated. I understand there's lazy people that become professional athletes. They normally don't last long. But the people that are at that competitive stamina level that is very high are normally the people that go on to have success. They are also the people who are trying to get any advantage that they could possibly get on every single play. So if there's a coach over here on the sideline and he says this one word, and that one word means something every single time, I am actively stealing that person's sign and I am keeping it. Yeah. That has been a part of every sport. Soccer, they do it. Baseball, they do it. Football, they do it. So until we see, and I think Coach Rule would agree, until we see like some sort of going above and uh, beyond the moral clause yeah. of it all, I think it's going to be hard for me to take serious. But there are people that are really pissed about it, d But There are yeah. people that are really pissed about yeah, it. Yeah, like you said, that, that's key. Going ab above and beyond, and that would be, you know, somebody recording, going to every game, recording multiple sidelines, getting the signs. But outside of that, like you said, you're trying to turn every stone over. You're trying to find every edge. We used to go to different, you know, cities to play games. And, hey, don't throw any of your shit in the garbage can here. Yes. Anything, like, take it all with you. Like, it was, it was, it's that level of paranoia because you know you're trying to find every edge. And, you know, you have a program like Michigan, straight in Nebraska. Like, these guys are getting paid tens of millions of dollars to win championships, to win big games. And to do that, usually you need every edge. So, But we are saying – if he did record it and yeah, that's the utilize any other technology, like of course you're going to be able to dissect people's signs whenever you're staring at them for 10 hours and you've got to match up from your video to what the plays are. And it's like, oh, here's a trend we are starting mm -hmm. to gather. I think everybody's like, that's too far. Like yeah, I think yeah, that's what everybody's yeah. like, that's too far, which is why I think the Big Ten is saying that it's even anything because that's the big takeaway is that the Big Ten's acknowledging it. The NCAA is acknowledging it. Pete Thamel is, like, very adamant that this is going to be a huge ordeal. Maybe even Jim Harbaugh leaves Michigan yeah. because of it all, which would be – because who's next? That'd be wild. How long do they go yeah. through it? What they've built? I mean, that's a whole – for the second biggest brand in the Big Ten, it's just – right now it feels like it's a lot of noise and it's tough for me to really get up in arms about. What was, uh, what was Harbaugh – the self-imposed suspension. What that was for that a hamburger. Cheeseburger, yeah. Yeah. Cheeseburgers. Buying cheeseburgers. We don't know. Did he put cheese on it? He did. Uh, we don't. That, mm, that's why. That's a good question. Yeah. Like he bought I just a recruit don't. or something? Like a cheeseburger? A, a recruiter. Recruiter, yeah. Burger. Yeah. 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 Now, granted, I assume there was more to it than just yeah. the hamburger. But what was alleged is very legal now in this NIL world when it wasn't at the time. Okay. So they said, you know what? You're right. We'll do this. Mm -hmm. We're playing the University of Bumble 
shits, yeah. yep. <laughs> and I will suspend myself for it. But the NCAA, Pete Thamel says, they have not imposed a penalty on that. That was self-imposed. So now you got potential spying and potential hamburger gate yep. with the NCAA <laughs> kind of handling it. Yikes. It's like, I don't, I, I must be missing something. You know what? My assumption is that the they ha- they do they have to have some sort of smoke and gun because otherwise like you said like why would they have been so public about it like it would have been a lot easier to kind of build this case without making it so public now where like Michigan can almost get their ducks in a row to prepare for it so i assume they ha- they have to have either footage or like they already have this stuff kind of ready and waiting to go after them otherwise you know like they they almost kind of cooked themselves before they actually went after them i hope so cuz if not this is, you know, Ohio State gets beat twice, and now they're going after a veteran, which, you know, I don't like at all. You're talking about Con- yeah. Stalins? Yeah. <laughs> Captain Stalins? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Captain Connor Stalin. It's not easy to find a job post, you no. know what I mean? Like not post, at all. You know, also, sir, you and I were talking about this. If they are stealing signs, I expect Captain to be a lot smarter about it, not use his own name and his own bank account and everything like that to buy tickets to these other games. That's so. what I'm saying. Like, I read people. Like, that's what I try to do. Use now, a fake name. Exactly. Like, some, and also, like, his computer, there's no way. He got a heads up that they were going to, you know what I mean? Like, hey, there's something in a while. They're talking about our signs. I assume that computer, let's say it does have something on it. That thing's on fire quicker than the New England Patriots. <laughs> oh, yeah. That Absolutely. thing is gone before it. So if, <laughs> if they even get a computer, like, in my eyes, if this guy's captain and he's the one trying to do this and he's been hired by Michigan, which is not like a... You know, Michigan's supposed to be. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't know. It feels like there's a lot of loose ends happening for something that should be pretty buttoned up by the humans that are involved. But they continue to report on it. So yeah. I assume there has to be something. Surveillance footage, though, has never let us down in the past. No. Nah. No, never. <laughs> so it's always like, the worst. Never. Hey. It's always like, what, 640 P or whatever the, the hell it is. I mean, you can't see anything on it. I do want to be on record to say, though, I do think that those were the actual signs stolen on the sideline. Oh, you you do? thought they were just yeah. waving them around? You think they yeah. were just like, hey, we got yeah. them. Oh. You think they weren't scared at those all? Were, hey, that's the one. Boom. You see? They, there was another the photo sideline. in that tweet. There was another photo in that tweet where I think Boom. if we were to go to Ben Scott Stevens' original tweet with this one, there's four of them. Yeah. There's, a, there's another photo where there's a bald white going like this, like oh, staring. Come on. Of course they hand the sheet to the black guy. Like, <laughs> Got to take the photo. I think, he, I think he potentially, see, in my eyes, he was the one giving out signals for his own team. Yes. Like, I think that was reminders for his yep, own you team. You know what? You changed my mind. Like, I think right. there's a chance right now. I think You're there's right. a chance right now that we're stealing Michigan yep. signs right now. Mm-hmm. Like, we are currently getting mm-hmm. Michigan signs right now from that entire thing. Oh, this comes from Buckeye Huddle. Shot. You know go back to that other photo. Low level no. staffers usually next to the DC on the sidelines. The other way. Bam, that one. Zoom in. White bald. Who's that guy? He's intently staring. Is that Stanford Steve? <laughs> that, that, that does give you a little bit of a, what's that guy so interested in? Yeah, you know, yeah. and that huge head, big brain. I wouldn't be surprised if this guy has a couple signals on some people in there. And it feels like Michigan, the timing of it. Like if this goes back to last year, right? Is that probably what they're looking yeah, at? Yeah, they said they he bought tickets to uh, both sidelines for the Georgia versus Ohio State game. Yeah, like that's got to be what they're <laughs> really pissed about, if it's anything, because they can't be mad about you know Michigan beating Rutgers by sixty five. We points. will continue to keep our ear to the ground mm-hmm. on the Michigan situation, but I believe it's going to get thrown in our face a lot because Michigan is Michigan, and they might go on to win it all this year. Oh, yeah. And this is just going to be dangling over their heads. I don't think that's fair. But if they were using videos. Yeah, we don't think that's fair either. Can't Excited to see as it rolls on. Joining us now is a man who's a friend of the program, mm-hmm. wildly handsome. Yeah, but don't get it twisted; he will thump you. Mm-hmm. Big time. Call him the hitman. Last night looked so cool. I don't know if you saw his accessories all Sick. blacked out, flying yeah. around. Big time win over the San Francisco 49ers, in which he had a forced fumble, six tackles, Five. a pass breakup, and the defense picked off Brock Purdy two times. Guy's only been picked seven times. Ladies and gentlemen. The hitman, Harrison Smith. Thanks for having me back. Hey, real sex appeal today. Wet hair, this is awesome. Straight out of the shower here. came straight from the massage, so yeah. Oh, that's oil in there. That's not even, that's oil (laughs) in there. I'm just, I'm grimy right now. I'm very grimy. Hey, we appreciate you making time for us on this glorious, victorious Tuesday for you guys. Let's dive right in. Uh, Congrats. Hey, let's go. Life's better when you're winning games. I know that. I know life's a lot better, especially against the Niners. I want to talk about the boom box coming out. Okay, because the Browns did it against the Niners a couple weeks ago. The Browns get a win. 
You guys come out with it last night, okay, against this Niners team. This is kind of the Niners thing. Have you guys done this in the past? Is this a normal Vikings operation? Yeah, we, we've done that before. We did that last year. Um, honestly, I'm always, like, I'm always pretty late coming out, so I didn't even – I didn't even notice, to be honest. Uh, but, yeah, it's just more fun. Like, guys were having fun yesterday from the moment we got there. And that's uh, – you just tend to play better when you're loose and you're mixing it up. And, like, we were playing all different genres of music. I don't know if you heard Kirk. Kirk is into – he's pretty into Creed right now. Hell, yeah. Um, so we had that bump in pregame before the tunnel. Uh, so, yeah, it's just – we're just trying to keep it loose. Uh, I heard there was somebody that said that you actually told somebody that no need for the pregame prayers because Creed is actually doing our prayers right now. <laughs> is that inaccurate? Yeah, yeah, that was uh, – I get, like, you could tell the guys were feeling it. I don't, I don't think most people even know who Creed is at this point Whoa. as far as the young guys. Um, oh, no. But you get the O-line going – and and Kirk and a few other guys there, it's, it's uh, very popular right now. Well, you're doing the Lord's work, honestly, introducing a next generation to Creed, and we hope Creed survives for the eternity. Mm -hmm. So shout out to the Vikings doing that. And it's become a song almost, a part of this turn for you guys in this season. When you talk about everybody being loose, you know, this Niners team has been very dominant for a very long time. The defense obviously hits. The offense is just like methodical and a physical football team. Why do you think you guys are so confident going into the game? Obviously, every team's going to be confident. But what is it about your team right now that last night's expected as opposed to a big deal? Yeah, we um, kind of the first few games, we just we couldn't put it all together. When the defense needed to make a play, we weren't making it. When the offense needed to, they weren't. Like It, it wasn't matching up. But we all, we all know what's there. And um, sometimes when you play like like the Niners are really, really good. They're well coached. They have great players um, and they do what they do really well. They're very physical on both sides of the ball. And I think I think we just kind of took that as a challenge. Like we can we can show up to ourselves more than anybody else that we can be who we think we are. And uh, it was just a good opportunity for us. Well, in prime time, you guys certainly did that. I don't know if you hear the discussions about you guys, but now all of a sudden, it's not like, hey, we need to trade everybody away. It's like, wait a minute here. Sitting at three and four early in the season, everything's still in front of you guys, right? I assume that's KOC's message. Yeah, that's that's what's, you know, I mean, that's what's so fun about the league. Like, it is so volatile week to week. You're either the best or you're the worst, like, from the outside looking in. Um, there's so many ups and downs. You almost have to, I've learned, like, even when you're really good, it's never easy. It just, you make one play here or there. So you have to enjoy, you have to really enjoy the moments. And that's, I think that's what we found yesterday. And that's when we play well, is when we're, we're all enjoying what we're doing. Man, well, the reason why you enjoy it is because you're confident in your work. The reason why you're confident in your work is because the amount of work that you put in beforehand. How has practice been? What have you learned from this team? You know Justin Jefferson last night, and obviously Addison goes bananas. TJ Hawkinson does his thing. Has there been real growth behind the scenes with your team coming together this year? Absolutely. And that's – I don't always see what goes on with the offense. Um, but I think when you – you give Kirk, you get a run game going, you give him some time to do things in the pocket. The O-line was fantastic last night. Um, he's going to find his guys, and he's going to make all the throws. Uh, so it's it's fun to watch when you're sitting over there on defense and you know that you need to match it. And um, that's kind of how, how we started out. It didn't start out exactly how we wanted, but we hung in there and, and just kept fighting and that's just how you win games in the league. So I think Aaron talked about it on the Manning cast last night, and we've chatted about it numerous times. Like, you're notorious for being a guy that can disguise coverages and end up being where you need to be whenever the ball moves. I think Palomalu was another guy that has been brought up. Ed Reed. I mean, yeah, I've, <laughs> hey, he's a bad guy, too. Everybody, needs, He's an incredible football player. Mm -hmm. He ruined my dreams in front yep. of my family. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever talks about that. <laughs> but you're a guy that can disguise really well. Do you think... Like, did you get a good read on Brock Purdy last night? Because Brock Purdy now, and you don't know this, obviously, you're just paying attention to your team, but 16 games, he's been a starter, okay, 16 of them. He has seven picks in all of them. Four of them came in the first 14 games, three in the last two games. So last night, you guys had two picks in the final five minutes. Huge. Bynum got both of them. Was there shout something? Out Bynum. Yeah, mm -hmm. hey, shout out. Also, shout out. let's get his lady. Get his wife. Let's get his let's wife get into his, America. Let's get his lady here. Yeah. Hey, let's get her here. 
there has to be some congressman in Minnesota over there. Yeah. Hey, or yeah. congresswoman over there in Minnesota. Like, hey, this guy's getting two picks on Brock Purdy. Come okay, on. on Monday Night Football for the Vikings. Ooh. We can't get his wife yeah. into the United States of America. Come on. She's only going to be here a few months anyways. He goes back to the Philippines after the season. That's, we're just asking just for a couple days. months. Just 90 months. days. That's 120 it. days. I think these two picks <laughs> deserve that. Yeah. That's no problem. That's how you use the platform for good things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What if we get bond? Love, we love love. Yeah, love, love, love. We love love around here. Was, was there something, though, uh, like to when you're disguising a young quarterback like Purdy? Obviously, he's been very good. But is there a little bit more gamesmanship from you whenever you know you could potentially get somebody? Um, I I try to think there is. I don't know if there always is or there isn't uh, based on what, how they've prepared and what they're told to look at and whatnot. Um, I've kind of noticed the more so the the veteran quarterbacks. Um, there's a like there's literally eye contact before before the play normally to like backside safeties and whatnot, and so that that is a kind of a fun personal game. Um. But the Niners are really good at what they do. So they're going to do what they do. Um, and you just, as far as knowing that going into the game, like there was some plays I wish I would have disguised differently or played differently. Uh, but there was some other ones that were good. Uh, so you just you, you kind of figure it out as the game goes on and, and feel it. No Trent Williams, obviously a tone setter for them. Mm -hmm. I think that was probably good news for the entire defense whenever you guys read he was out. Yeah, I mean, you hate to. You hate, uh, yes. Yeah. to play teams without their guys, but, like, that guy is a guy. Yeah. And when he's not on the field, you are you feel a little safer. <laughs> like, when he gets his paws on you, you're pretty much done for the play, especially a guy of my stature. The When, when I've played him in the past, it's almost like once he gets you, like, maybe just shut it down for that play and save your energy. Uh, I'm gonna get not. off. I'm gonna get off. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you are a dead yeah. man. Yeah, I understand that. And we hope he gets healthy. Trent, we hope. Yep. Trent, we love Thanks watching you. But how about Shanahan putting his ass in motion? Okay, yeah. not only is he he's he's going in motion against people. I mean, it's like weapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they got him involved in like some sort of throwback pass game lateral at some point because he's. I'm pretty sure he can run like four or five. Jeez. No Debo as well. I mean, yeah. hey, listen. Every team is without people. But last night, it felt like you guys smothered that offense, and it hasn't been seen much, especially in the Brock Purdy era. Speaking of your defense, go ahead, Debo. Yeah, you just talked about the Niners doing what they do. Uh, you guys have uh, kind of put that on identity on tape, too, as a defense, doing what you do, blitzing more than anybody. I know I would hate that as a corner, but uh, it seems like you guys, the defense, <laughs> definitely coming into your own. Man, what's it been like in this Flores defense as the season has kind of uh, matured? It's – um. It's been, I don't know if I said this last time I was on, it's been a learning experience for me. And I've, I've obviously been around the block and we're doing some stuff I've never even heard of. Um, and it's, it's a lot of fun. And even though like as a corner, you think like, man, we're blitzing all the time. Yeah. The way that we do it, you don't always feel that way. Uh, so it keeps it to where like, it's not too much throughout the game. And I think flow has done a good job of feeling out us as players and what we respond to and like if we're going to play stuff aggressively or not can we call this or that based on how guys are are like personally playing yeah. um so it's been a it's been a good learning experience and evolving kind of collective thing going on and it's going to keep it's going to keep evolving each week that's what's fun about it like we can do different stuff every week uh, just the way that our personnel is built and, and, and the way flow calls stuff. So you guys are nowhere near your peak, huh? That's what it sounds like? Um, I mean, we're just, man, we're just, we're like an amoeba. We just try to just be what we need to be. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, we're, we're, we're wiggly. Yeah, yeah, I like wiry. I like nice. that. Hey, how about, what, Duck, Duck, Goose, yep. the worm last night, mm -hmm. Limbo was happening yeah. last night. Feels like your team Ooh. has a good time as an amoeba, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, we didn't. So we didn't have uh, any celebration plans. Uh, I was late oh, to that one. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> oh no! Man, jeez, yeah, it's hard to, limbo. to everyone. Save your energy. Um, it's hard to now, but once we 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 appointed uh, Najee, one of our rookies, as as the celebration coordinator, <laughs> we started getting the turnovers. It's just like it's one of those things. The more you anticipate, the more you 
talk about it, it, it starts happening. Hey, that's manifesting. Hey. That worm used to be the thing back in the day. And then old cuz there, 40 can only do it backwards. Had a couple of those friends yep. as well. He took off the different direction. There's a celebration coordinator now for the Minnesota Vikings. Yes. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that or not, but yes. You just beat the Niners, bub. You yeah. can say whatever the hell. You can say whatever the hell you want. Tone has a question for you. Yeah, Harrison. What part of the game plan, or was it planned? And did you purposely hit Kittle in the crotch to affect him for the rest of the game? <laughs> oh. Man, that's my guy too. Uh, oh. uh, right after, and like that's really the only place I can hit him now. Right? Exactly. Or you'll right. get suspended for four games. Yeah. And I'm trying to. I'm trying to keep my head out of it. Um, yeah. Like right when I got up, he was like. Man, you hit me right here. I was like, I'm I'm honestly sorry about that. But like I, I was like, I'm sorry, but I have to. Like I have to. There's no other option. So let's talk about Kareem Jackson getting suspended. Do you feel because you're the hit like your nickname's <laughs> sick. Mm -hmm. Like that is a sweet nickname. And I think since you you said you've been around the block, how many years are you in the league now? This is twelve. Okay, so back whenever you got into the league, when you were just a young baby face, not with a bunch of oil all over your hair, fresh out of the saw, mm -hmm. you know, no kids in the back, right? Heard that. It was, uh, hey, Rydell to the jaw. Like, hey, that is how we are hitting. That is a strategy. That is a technique. That's what's getting promoted by the NFL. Mm -hmm. You've had to evolve now, and congrats on being able to do that. Yeah. There's some Thank guys, you. though, that lay the hammer still. And, like, Kareem Jackson just got suspended for four games. His hit against Thomas, I think, certainly something in the end zone where he basically torpedoes himself at Thomas's jaw like an old school hit. This one, like, that guy's falling, going down. Certainly a hard hit. But, like, suspended four games, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of everything yeah. for a guy whenever you're talking about a 17-game season. How, how conscientious of all that are you while in the middle of playing? And how do you kind of set it to the side knowing what the modern NFL is? It's built into my mindset now. Um, as you mentioned, when I was young, like I was reckless. I got a, I got a twenty four thousand dollars fine in the third preseason game my rookie year um, <laughs> for a hit over the middle. Didn't did not lower it because it was like it was egregious to be honest. Um, and then I got fined a few other times, kicked out of a couple games. Right. And I didn't want to change because that's what football was to me. Like I, like I, the first Super Bowl I remember was Steve Atwater taken out. Oh. He took out a receiver on the, on the Packers and like his own corner and himself. <laughs> and it was like so. It was like the. It was awesome back then. And now it's like there's no place for it. So you have to like you have to build that in and already try to lower your target, take your head out of it. And the reality is that safety. If you're playing aggressively and hard, there's going to be some plays that are unfortunate and they happen. And as long as I'm trying to play within the rules and if they do happen, that, in my opinion, playing safety in today is is just it's going to happen. But if you can if you can try to avoid it beforehand and train yourself in practice, like you're not going to hit guys, but you're thinking like lower, lower, head up, out of it. You, you just got to do the best you can because it's bang, bang. I think intent should be kind of taken into account. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think we can tell your guys' intent. Now, you're all maniacs, all you that, yeah. you know, play that position and hit that. Like, Kareem, that, that are, people are calling him a dirty player now. Obviously, that's going to happen whenever you're hitting people and you get suspended for four games, four hits. Let's also applaud the fact that that dude is just, you know, willing oh, to just he's, send he's, it. <laughs> he's just willing. He's so fun to watch. He's so fun to watch. He's flying around. He's he might be the only safety older than me at this point. So he grew up like he grew up like I grew up. Like we were we were headhunting back in the day. Like that's what it was. And it's hard to change your like concept of what football is. Um, but you just have to. Like that's just that's what the game is now. Game's healthy, the game's growing. I appreciate it. I respect it. Mm -hmm. But whenever you expect everybody to do everything perfect at 20-some miles an hour, whenever people are falling and moving, I think that's unrealistic expectation. But I appreciate that you're like, yeah, I try, but you're going to get fined. And yeah. say, that's just pretty much like, hey, if we negotiate the deal, it's at this much. We need to take into account probably about $100,000 worth of fines mm -hmm. with the way I play. <laughs> that's that's basically what I, I, I told um, Nick Mullins uh, this week. We were talking about that. Um, and I, that's basically what I told him. I was like, before the season, I already think like, I'm probably going to be a little lighter <laughs> at the end of the season. 
not on purpose, but if it's the cost of doing business, I'm going to try my best, but, you know, we'll see what happens. But we have to let it be known. You're not trying to hurt anybody. Like, that is the big no, thing. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. That's, like, that's, like, when receivers are blocking me and, like, a pile's coming up, I'm always like, hey, look out, look out, look out. Like, I'm not trying to, no, like, that's not what it is anymore. It's just, there has to be some advantage for defense at some point and physicality. No, nope, really it's not happening. Better. You're never getting. I it. know, but like, <laughs> no, I, I I can't give it fully up. Yeah, know? yeah. Well, you need to. Yeah, that yeah. those days are gone. You're getting no advantage at all, pal. <laughs> disadvantages coming right down the pipe. And guess what's around the bend? More disadvantages. Yeah. Boom. And then also going to get rid of the kickoff. Uh-huh. That's some yep. fair catch to start Monday Night Football. Oh, yeah. Gross. Did you see that? Are you? Have you guys fair? You guys were the ones yeah, who did they, it. They did. Harrison, <laughs> can't happen. Said, you hear me? They said yeah. he has a green light too. Wow. Yeah, green light it's whenever. Interesting because like guys in the league don't even don't even know all those rules yet sometimes. And uh, so when we saw that, we were like, wait, wait, what is that? Wait, like you can you can fair catch it in the field. Yeah, yeah. And he's, look at you. He's laughing, uh-huh. Raj. This is what it is. You can't do this. Let's move along. We don't need to have this whole conversation sidetracked. He has an off day. He's taking time with us. But you need to relay the message back to that building that we need not see this. The Titans did it. Yep. In uh, Indianapolis, Colts did it. Yep. The Vikings did it. Why fighting a losing fight, but what a joke. They're, they don't even. Know. You guys don't even know. They take this away. What's next? Okay, you're talking about disadvantages for the defense. They take that away. What's next? It just never stops. Hungry, hungry hippo. Go, 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 with football. We yep. can't have it. Take a stand. All right. That's for me, not for you. Ty has a question for you, Harrison. Harrison, in terms of tone setting, how important is it to have a play like you had last night with McCaffrey after Kirk throws the interception and you force that fumble in the red zone? Obviously, he still had a, a pretty good night, scores two touchdowns, but the way he's been playing so far this year where he's kind of just had his way with teams and run all over mm-hmm. them, like how important is it to kind of hit him like that early, force a fumble, and kind of just let him know like, hey, it's not going to be easy sledding all night? Yeah, that's that's big, and that's something that we've um, focused on because it's not you, it's not always going to be perfect. Like the offense uh, had a turnover early, and instead of being like, oh, no, you know, pointing fingers, whatever. It's just, all right, let's just go. Let's, let's go make something happen over there. And um, so that's, that's a big part of the game. And that's, that's something that's changed too, is like constantly punching at the ball. That wasn't something that I grew up learning. Uh, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I've kind of learned that over the years, watching Peanut Tillman and everybody after him, like Fred oh, Warner, yeah. oh. um, like their defense was punching all night. We were punching all night. Um, it's 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 kind of an art form in itself that you got to get used to as you're running, and it's that's that's something that's that's very uh, it's very fun to watch around the league each each week. The you know, like Darius Leonard, or Sha- uh, Shaq Leonard, he's one of the best at it. Uh, so you can learn from other guys. You've taken boxing classes to kind of get more precise because you punch an elbow could Jumping be broken over, fist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You punch a helmet could be broken knuckle. Do you do do you do any practice on your punching? I do. I have a I have a heavy bag in my garage. Um, I'm not like a I'm not trying to act like I'm Mr. Boxer or whatever, but I've done a little bit of training in the past and um, I've kind of learned it's not about like the haymaker shots. It's more like the jabs. Uh, that that seem to be more effective. Sometimes kind of the hammer from behind, stuff like that works well, but the quick little right on the balls are are, are nice. You need to get Zivikowski in there working with you. You know what I mean? Get Man, there. I know. He could give some serious tips. Hey, he was awesome. I got a chance to be a teammates with him for like two years. He was awesome. Absolute yeah. legend. <clears throat> and sold out Madison Square Garden in college. Yeah, and they then knocked the guy out. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, what a stud. Absolute stud. Last question here for you, hit man. We appreciate you from Connor. Yeah, Harrison, short week, obviously, with Monday Night Football and you got a division opponent in the Packers coming up. Uh, what's the preparation like this week? Obviously, probably pretty nice to look over and see a number 10 and not a number 12 playing quarterback <laughs> like there was in, in the past. But is it easier for these type of games just because you're so familiar? familiar with the Packers or what's the week look like for you today's an off day so we'll you know we'll get the start of the game plan tomorrow but I would say I have some familiarity with the scheme and and um you know those things just playing in Lambeau the whole the whole vibe there it's it's always an awesome atmosphere um so just kind of knowing like what to expect as far as um, kind of the human aspect of it. And then 
uh, yeah, there's some, you know, there's f familiarity, but there's always wrinkles, and we'll see what what Flo has dialed up for us. Hey, you guys have been rolling. It's been fun to watch. Primetime Kirk Cousins gets a big time dub. Oh, yeah. There's mm -hmm. no longer conversations about everybody on your team being traded away. Yep. Mm -hmm. Huh? That's, That's good news. <laughs> we got positive stuff rolling, and you just had a massage, and now you got to rest of your day off. We appreciate the hell out of you, Hitman. Likewise, thank you very much. Hey, let's hey let's stop cheap shotting people, huh? Safeties. <laughs> yeah, let's try to keep it. Within the rules. Where is it? Here? It's, it's, I think it's, no, you got to lower that. Here. Because your, your head's going to slide up. Mm -hmm. If you hit here, you're going to slide. You got to be almost waistline is kind of the, the oh, spot. So, so what you did, George yeah, Kittle, was on, on purpose. Wow. Yeah, that's what I thought. Ladies and gentlemen, you hit him right where you wanted. Yep. Thought so. <laughs> Find <laughs> him, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry, Harrison's, George. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. Harrison Smith. Yeah. That's what I heard. Yeah. Hey, thanks, buddy. That's awesome. Yeah, hey, you're actually because your helmet will slide. Yep. You are aiming for the dick. Yeah, mm -hmm. have to. Dong shots. How about that? You Only. know what I mean? I mean, that was that video of George Kittle then immediately going right in my uh, like that is yeah. right out of a movie, you know. And then Harrison on the ground saying, Ooh. "I'm sorry, buddy. I, what I'm do you so want? Sorry. From me? It's the only place I can go. I'm so sorry." And look at the old buddy's laughing at it in his face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Football's the greatest, dude. It yeah. is. It is the absolute yeah. greatest. How about him saying, like, the veteran quarterbacks making eye contact yeah. with him before the snap? Like, all right, where uh, do you want to do your little stop and dance? <laughs> do the because what he does is not normal, right? He no. is at a different level of disguise, and he has the freedom to be able to do that. I'd be pumped to hear how B-Flo thought of that at the beginning and where they're at now and how much more they can grow with that. Yeah, coaches love players because he's basically another coach on the field. He can come back to that sideline and give so much information to the coach, and, and that'll help him uh, dial it up. And I love what he said about kind of flow – you know, being in tune with how his different individual players are playing, especially in a system like that where they're blitzing like 60% of the time, which is um, which is nuts. But Harrison has always been on a different level. And you, you definitely know like the, the Aaron Rodgers of the world, they'll take that peek at you. You know kind of as a safety when you got him too because sometimes they kind of take that last snapshot. Actually, bind him on his last pick, he kind of gave Purdy some – fake shoulders to this way, and then came back and picked it off. Oh, um, good day. Oh, actually, his first pick, I'm sorry. Uh, so, yeah, it's always some game, gamesmanship back there with the – It's fascinating the because Brock Purdy's expectations are so high because of how he's played. Yep. And then, granted, he's already getting talked about how – like anybody could do what he's doing. That's yeah. how good he was uh -huh. doing. So whenever he has a couple of those moments where he either gets fooled or he misses somebody, it's like a surprise. Oh, yeah. And that's a compliment to Brock Purdy. I yeah. know it doesn't sound like it the way people are probably talking about him right now. Oh, he's ordinary. He's looking normal. It's like, well, the reason why they're saying that is because of how damn good you did look for a long yeah. time and how surprised all of us that have been around the NFL have been with how good he's been. The decision-making, the accuracy, yeah. the moxie, the in-the-face-of-trouble, just bending it around people. Like, everything he's done has been great. Great. The Minnesota Vikings defense made him look a certain way last night, although he still had massive throws mm -hmm. without Debo, without Trent Williams. Yep. Christian McCaffrey still had two touchdowns, which mm -hmm. goes to 16 straight games where he scored. And it's, it's like a... it was a good game last night for both teams. I came out of there on the other side of it going, that's a tough loss for the Niners because later, whenever we're talking home field advantage, that's going to be a real one. The day you're going to say, we didn't play our best game, should have, could have, got a win, just like they did against the Browns. Yep. And on the flip side, it's like, wait a minute, are the football gods kind of blessing the Vikings again mm -hmm. because at the beginning of the season, the football gods kind of uh, shunned them out of the football existence and everything that could go against them did. Last night, it went the other way. And it felt like the Vikings finally are kind of in that B-flow system and comfortable. Like, if anything, it's now yeah. where they're kind of hitting their stride because they had to, you know, figure out what the whole entire defense is going to be like with B-Flow because it's his first year. But with that, all of that happening, the Niners obviously still still going to be okay. But if you're the Vikings, you definitely think you can go on a run and go to the Why not? Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Defense is only going to get better. Kirk Cousins is continuing to get better. Justin right. Jefferson will be back in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. huh? Madison had that big run on first play yeah, of the game. Best game he's had. Here we go. Minnesota Vikings are back, Jack. Here yeah, we go. Addison kind of had his coming out party last night. Like, he can be the guy who can kind of yeah. right the ship while Jefferson is out. Hawkinson is still a beast. Like, yeah. Vikings might, might go on a little tear here. I did appreciate Joe Buck being like, Kevin O'Connell cheating in a week seven Monday Night Football. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> we caught him. We told him to go down. <laughs> it's like. They're saying that so that, like, hey, don't feel like you got to rush it. Like, we got nothing but time. Mm -hmm. We got nothing but time for yeah. you right now. You put your team in a bad situation if you're trying to you know, hobble. Out there. Get, hey, get down. Let's figure this out. And also, yeah. TJ, in a situation, you have no idea. Like, hey, you're obviously in pain right now. Yeah. Like, just 
Just sit down. Yeah. <laughs> Just sit down. Hour two on the other side. Aaron Rodgers and A.J. Hawk. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. Take three. Three. Hi, how's it going? My name is Pat McAfee. Used to hold balls for Adam Vinatieri. Now I'm in his home state. College game day is absolutely electric. And Brookings. <laughs> College game day has made the voyage to Brookings, South Dakota to experience a game with the best fans in college football. I unfortunately cannot attend because I have a game this Sunday, so I sent a man I trust to make my picks. A man who is my holder for almost a decade. Please be nice to him. Welcome this week's celebrity guest picker, Pat McAfee. Go big, go blue, go Jacks. Hosting Auburn. Yes, everybody saw this. The best fake punt in the world. What do you think, Pat? I absolutely loved it all the way up until execution time. That is not what we like to show in the brand headquarters and punting and kicking world. Uh oh, dance off. Oh, let's get weird. Oh. Yes. Oh. Duck that, huh? Bang! Right on oh. the top of the dome. That makes it a lot easier when you got a dummy standing right in front of you like that. Running, running. He's. Oh! Hi, Luke! Daniel Russo! Wax on! Wax off! Knee to the face! Yes! Yes! Serious. Go! Yes. Go! Yes! He's being stick with that picking. They celebrate by doing shotguns. And I'm a big fan of that. I'm going with the University of Virginia Catholic. That was great. Whoa! since 4 a.m. College game day comes to town, they lose their mind. The population of this state is about 800,000, and when the Jackrabbits take the field, they're alongside all 800,000 South Dakotans. The Dakota Parker was in Fargo for far too long. Today, 5 o'clock local time, the Dakota Marker is back in beautiful Brookings, South Dakota. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice, it could change their life. Beautiful people, welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, October 24th, 2023. Hour two of this program starts now. Football happened last night where the Minnesota Vikings beat the San Francisco 49ers. We'll be talking about that all day. We'll also be looking ahead to what the rest of the NFL season looks like and the stats that are saying who's, where, how, and why. It's a glorious Tuesday because the toxic table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Don Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. Nine year NFL vet, host of the Man to Man podcast and everything DB is here. That is Darius J. Butler. Hey. And joining us now, live from an attic in Ohio is a man who's a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, Whoa. the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, a man who's the president of Ohio currently and also broke down 
how and why Tommy Eichenberg and that Ohio State defense would stop the Penn State offense to absolute perfection. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hawk. Yay! Nobody's talking about that, A.J. We, don't, we like to do follow-ups on things you know, around here. Yeah, we like to do follow-ups, especially when our, our predictions are correct. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Boom. Call that sports media. Whenever we're right, we need to at least yeah, of course. let people Talk know about, about it. Yeah. You nailed it on, on game day. AJ Let's was go. A, with a stick, with yeah. a pointer. Oh, yeah. Saw yeah. That. Let's go, AJ. At or behind the line name. of scrimmage. Yeah, you're right. At or, at or behind the line of scrimmage, it's all it takes. And that's why that defense was able to shut uh, the Penn State offense down, you know, for the most part. Not completely, but for the most oh. part. Hey, you didn't really score. What, what happened there? Did something fly in your mouth? I got something on my lip. What, the heck, what is this? It's your jaw. Is it? Is it's like part of a cigar. You're in thing? Ohio, dude. Oh, you're part of a cigar, I think. Maybe a piece like of the guy, rubber jaws or size thing. Yeah, maybe you oh, no. chewed through. No, those, are, yeah. those are intact still. Those are still doing great. <laughs> Shout out Foss, too. I know Foss is using one. Yeah, Foss is, uh, was quoted in Washington Post today. He was. Yes, he Way was. to go, Foss. That a boy, Foss. Michael. Oh, hey, thanks dude. for putting your name on it, Foss, as opposed to all those other cards. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We appreciate you, pal. Uh, let's talk about the game last night, shall we? Minnesota Vikings beat the San Francisco 49ers. This is two weeks in a row now where the Niners, two games in a row where the Niners haven't looked like the Niners that we have become accustomed to watch. And also, Browns come out with a boom box Vikings come out with a boom box Ooh. that's before the game you know that's not after the game that's before the game I said on first take earlier it feels as if the fear that people have had playing against the Niners is kind of gone it's kind of disappeared a little bit over these last couple weeks what do you think the Niners look like in the future and what did you learn about the Vikings last night I mean I definitely feel like the Vikings a lot of people had kind of written them off like they had no chance they're going to sell everybody at the at the deadline and and try to figure things out for next year. I don't. It seems like the narrative has changed a lot because of what the Vikings were able to do against the Niners. I understand Trent Williams was not playing, but they forced Brock Purdy and it made him feel uncomfortable, made him throw a few picks, what, three turnovers for San Francisco. So, yeah, whenever you do that, it's tough to win. And with that being said, San Francisco still had a chance to win that game. Yeah, and just like they did in Cleveland. They, they played terrible in Cleveland. Brock Purdy had the ball slipping out, had his first pick in a while this season, I think, in that game. And towards the end, if Moody makes that kick, which is a tough kick, especially in Cleveland, they get a win and they slip by. Last night, they were driving. Still could have came down, won that game. All you need is one more play. And it's like, that is how talented that team is. Hembo sent me some stats on the roster construction of the San Francisco 49ers. They have the highest paid average per year at uh, Edge with Bosa. Yep. They have the highest paid average per year at running back with McCaffrey. They have the number three highest pay per year at tight end with Kittle and the number three highest paid in the year uh, per year for Warner. Number three offensive lineman with Trent, even though he's out. Number 60 tackle with Hargrave. Number seven highest paid with Samuel. I mean, it's like they haven't had a top 60 draft pick in two years. They are incredibly top heavy and all in. Yeah. So whenever we see these types of things, I think it makes us all go, wait a minute. Is this team going to be able to win a Super Bowl like they're hoping to do? Obviously, those are good expectations to have as opposed to like what the Colts' expectations are, mm -hmm. yeah. what the Patriots' expectations mm -hmm. are, what the Packers are. So these are Cadillac problems as Kelly Kelsey Plum describes it, but did you see something last night from the Niners that makes you think maybe they're not going to win the Super Bowl this year, even though they're built to maybe do that? No, nah, they would still be in that, you know, what, four or five teams right now that we would expect to go on a run uh, or potentially go on a run and win the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, defensively, they had to turn over early, but that's they lead the league, I believe, in, in uh, interceptions and they were top of the league in turnover margin as well. So that's a great recipe for success for any team. So, uh, you know, they, the Vikings were able to sustain drives, but this week showed you, like, it's not not a big margin of, of error You're when it right. comes to NFL teams. I don't care what your record is. Every Sunday, you got to go out there and put your, you know, your best shit on tape. Everybody's getting paid to play ball. Some yeah. people are getting paid to talk about ball. That is us and the man joining us right now. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a four-time NFL MVP, a Super Bowl champion, the founder of the second largest book club in the history of book clubs. Whoa. Ladies and gentlemen, I think. We don't know if that's accurate. Oh, it's probably, no, it's who's accurate. first? Oprah. Who's number one? Oprah. Oprah's had a pretty sure? good one. And then the Bible, so maybe third. That's all she was working out. The Bible isn't a book club. Ah, yeah, I guess. Kinda. Maybe. Oh, it's Obey. a book club. I mean, I haven't I even... don't know. A lot of different versions. All the hotels. No, people read about it, and they talk about it, what they read about it. And, and there's sub clubs yeah. of the big book yeah. club. So Church yeah. itself would kind of be the book club. So maybe the third largest – well, there's a lot of churches. Yeah, exactly. second, second excluding Church religion. Well, let's maybe. exclude religion. Oh. Exclude and religion. And excluding, religion. Religion. excluding religion. Church exclude and state cults. here. Okay, second large – well, cults. Yeah, what about cults? Well, well what do you even call a cult? I mean, Church, I guess cults, and state. 
Anyways, that's where the leader, women and children, here, brother, I mean, runs through everybody. Between culture really? and religion is politics. Okay, I mean, and no, if it were fits, we'd all be drunk. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate you, D. But anyways, massive book club founder. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a big club. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. We don't know where we rank. We don't know where it rank. We just try to figure it out. It's not easy, Eric. It's not easy to figure out. You know. There's there's a few good ones. I think it's it's almost time to to start the third season of it. Whoa! Whoa. You know, you know, the first one's gonna be. We're gonna start off with a bang. Yeah, I could imagine. I feel like there is uh, there's been some choices in the book club that have certainly been a part of some narratives or storylines that are happening in real time in a lot of lives. So I'm excited to hear what the first one is. Also excited to have you back on this week. How do we feel? Have we made any uh, progress since the last time we chatted on the Achilles? Are you getting back for the game this weekend? Where are we as we sit on this October 24th with you, Aaron? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a tough week of rehab. It's been. Uh, Kind of smaller gains. I think when you get to a certain point, um, you're not maybe having the jumps that I did early on where you, you're out of a cat and you're out of the boot and then you're in a shoe and you're up in the percentage in the alter G. It's been, it's been more of a grind the last week or so, but uh, a lot of good things we're trending towards. Um, you know, it's just a matter of trying to get down to 100% walking, like as far as it looking normal, and then... Uh, after that, then there's progressions. I think that'll maybe start to take a, a bigger jump. But once I can get to, to walking normal in a shoe, uh, which is close, really close, then uh, I'll make a jump. And yeah, you know, I, I invited Eli last night to do a little uh, play, a little catch with me, maybe on Sunday. So uh, planning on being back for our, our game as the road team at uh, uh, at MetLife. But uh, yeah, excited. I miss the guys. So yeah. Excited to see the guys. Yeah. So obviously, you were great on the Manning cast last night. Sounded good too. You know what I mean? There's a lot of things that are going to be said about the sound, the way you sounded. I thought it sounded, I thought it sounded great. Spot oh, yeah. on. Had a little, had a little T Pain reverb on yep. it a little. Mm-hmm. Ow, wow, wow. When you were breaking yeah. it down, then it went all the way the different direction. You know, had a little mm-hmm. bass in your voice, and then he came down in there in between. Thought you did fantastic on there. We were pumped to watch. I, yeah, you know, they were in my ear going, "You sound like a robot," and I said, "Does that mean I'm monotone and boring, or what are you talking about?" <laughs> They said, no, let's go get some headphones. I'm like, all right, I'll go get my, you know, my uh, headphones that I've, you know, taken some, some, some crap for, my old school ones, you know, no EMF. So I uh, had to go get the headphones, and I think things cleared up a little bit. But I enjoy, I enjoy being on with those guys. Those guys, it's, it's high-level stuff. I mean, they're, they're funny and, and uh, you know, great dad jokes. But when it comes to football knowledge, both those guys really know what they're talking about. And the stuff that they pick up on is the stuff that I, I see when I'm watching the game. So it's fun to be on with them and, and talk about that stuff. And then crazy stuff happens. You know, Addison gets picked off on a ball. He, he maybe could have caught on the first throw of the game. Then he rips the ball out of uh, Ward's hands there during the first half. I mean, that was, that was a pretty cool moment. Yeah, and I think that was one of the things. And we enjoy the hell out of the Manning cast as well. They got some augmented reality. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's got some real technologically advanced stuff over there that they got. And he had his kid, uh, Mosley, yep. and his friends <laughs> yep. lining up and doing the whole thing. And obviously the conversations with the guests are good. But, like, the story about Kirk Cousins going back to Addison, whenever Addison, like, the way Peyton broke that down, is like, Addison can't let Ward pick that ball off. Like, there is no way that can happen. And Kirk Cousins goes right back to him. Like, hey, got to build his confidence. That means a lot coming from, like, you guys. And are, is that the type of stuff that you're talking about that they pick up on? that maybe other media people wouldn't and that you relate to? What's that? And then it's, it's, it's uh, you know, and they got the information from, from Kirk, obviously, but, but just that little thing about, hey, Bost is out of the game. Now there's these other 10 plays we like. And it's not all passes. It's not all like down to foot passes, but it might be a certain run. You know, if, if Bost is, you know, you got to figure out, do you want to run at him and double team the whole time? Or do you want to run away from him and worry about him and been uh, wreaking havoc on the backside? But there might be some plays where you're like, oh, hey, Bost is out. That means we feel better about a keeper back to his side, or we feel better about a seven-step hard action taking a shot down the field because he's just a game wrecker. And I think this is cool things like that. It's cool for the average fan. It's cool for Bosa to go back and feel like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a study. Like they, they really do do this shit. And it's like, yeah, they do. I mean, literally, when a guy is that big of a game wrecker like him and Aaron Donald and Miles Garrett, who's you know, had an incredible game this weekend. Yeah. There's a few guys in the league, and I'm, I'm omitting, I'm just talking about those three guys, but there's there's other guys 
that are obviously really important. You guys just had a guy on in Harrison Smith who was one of those type of guys where before every play, you got to kind of figure out where 22's at because he's such a great disguiser. He does so much before the snap every play. You kind of need to be aware. There's checks that we used to have based on his pre-snap alignment. Uh, and then there's, like I said last time in the game, there's some things you try and get a beat on their pressure package back in, you know, 15 through, or, you know, what was he first year in the league? I think his first year was 12. 12 through whatever, you know, Mike Zimmer was there. You'd, you'd come up with these things like, I know what's going to happen. You know, as long as if Barr is here and he's here and Kendrick is over there and, you know, captain's on the edge, we know this pressure's coming every time and it never, you know, they, they, would, they would do their own self-scout. So, but those three guys I mentioned, those three guys on the front, you, every game you're playing one of them, you know, okay, if this guy comes off the field, then there's 10 other plays that we can only run with Miles Garrett off the field or with Aaron Donald off the field or with Nick Bosa off the field. And to those guys' credits, there's not many plays that they're off the field. So yeah. when they're on the field, they're absolute game records. That's what I was about to say about Miles Garrett. I, I don't remember a single play where I was watching because we got to be there and watch what he did to the Colts, and it was like, first of all, <laughs> what is that? How? How how is that allowed to be built that way? You know what I mean? Like how is he two seventy faster, stronger, jumps higher, and seemingly football IQ through the roof? But like that Bosa thing that they were talking about, as soon as Peyton brought it up, Bosa went to the sideline and he started like, all right, here's the time, here's the time. I didn't know that it was as simple as that at the NFL level. So like I think that type of detail you appreciate because it's like, hey, yeah, we all do that. But as fans, it's like yeah, that makes sense. Like, yeah, if this guy's off the field, let's take advantage of it. Let's go back to your rehab, though. Let's stay away from that. You're walking now? Are we using crutches at all? Are you walking now? What You, you got a bad, like a limp? What's going on? I'm not walking without a, a limp yet. But but uh, I was joking with uh, with my rehab folks and with Doc. When I was flying back for the, the game on the 15th, uh, I had assumed that I left my crutches in the car. And by the time I got to the airport, there were no crutches in the car. And I felt like that was kind of a sign, like, okay, you're done with the crutches. So I haven't been on crutches since that day. But I don't quite have the strength in my calf to be able to walk without a limp yet. And, again, you know, based on normal timetables, uh, you know, I have to have some perspective here because I'm, I'm not on a normal protocol. Uh, however, I'm competitive and I want to be walking without a limb. And so there's some frustration when you're not quite all the way there yet. So, Did you get crutches stolen out of your car and that was the sign <laughs> that you shouldn't use crutches anymore? Is that how this is? No, that I, I put them in my house in, in uh, kind of not on purpose, but kind of hidden in the, in the living room behind the door. And when I left the house, I'm able to, to walk, you know, with a, with a slight limp. But uh, I had assumed from the day before from rehab, I'd maybe just left them in the car. And instead, they were kind of behind the door. So we left, went to the airport, we're taking stuff off the off the, the car. And it's like, oh, there's no crutches here. So I was like, okay, that's kind of apropos. That means I'm done with crutches. So thank the universe, huh? Universe is letting you know, hey, we've moved past the crutches. Remember what you did? You hit them from yourself. Yeah. Let's go ahead, and it's working out. I love everything about that. I don't know how, like, I can't wait to hear the internet doctors break down what just happened right mm -hmm. there. I cannot wait to hear that. Uh, AJ, go ahead, pal. What does it feel like, honestly? Like your Achilles, you say you're, you feel like your calf, it doesn't have the strength yet to walk without a limp. Does your Achilles, is it like shooting pain, or does it just feel weak? And is it like anything you've ever felt before? I mean, I've had some, I've had some injuries, some frustrating injuries. Obviously, I did an ACL, and... I had some knee recoveries. I had a Jones fracture, uh, and then upper body. I obviously had the collarbones. One with surgery, one without. Um, this is a tough rehab for sure because there's just so many little muscles that you kind of got to re wake up. And it's not just the calf muscles and the, and the uh, tibia muscle muscles and the you know the foot muscles. Just everything kind of need to work and then. Uh, you know, as, as a unit. So you're kind of trying to teach the fibers to fire at the appropriate time. And you got to be careful walking too much uh, with a limp because you're going to start adjusting to certain things. And that's why we do so much work on the Alter-G, walking at a lower body percentage to try and retrain yourself to have the proper gait. What is that? To be able to get everything firing at the same, at the same time and, and to not have 
you know, cause if I'm, if I get to a walking point where I can walk kind of normal, but it has this weird kind of limp and maybe the timing is off, it's going to take time to recover from that. So we're trying to get to a perfect gait at a lower percentage and then, and then get everything firing, uh, eventually, uh, at a hundred percent. And we're getting close. It's just, there's the muscles kind of around the, uh, Achilles are, are obviously straining to, to, uh, to balance for the Achilles, which isn't obviously a hundred percent, uh, at this point. Um, so there's some strain on them, but, uh, you know, the surgery that I got, uh, I feel great about uh, what doc did, the protection that my Achilles has and the ability to push the rehab again, you know, I've said this and, and I think it's been slightly misquoted. So I'll be as uh, enunciate as well as I can. No, the goal is not to stretch the Achilles. The goal is to stress the Achilles. And the more you can stress the Achilles and, uh, you're going to, allow that thing to heal up the proper way to turn on the muscles around the Achilles uh, in the calf, especially, and, uh, and be able to uh, get back to doing some more normal things. I'm mind blown that you just forgot your crutches and said, you know what? Yeah. I'm not using them anymore. Done. That is awesome. I want to let you know. It's I, well, look, listen, I, I wasn't going to anyway. That was, I wasn't going to walk on the field with crutches again. I did that October 1st, October 15th was about, throwing and walking on the field without crutches. So I wasn't going to do that, but it, it, you know, would have helped me get along, you know, maybe in the, in the long hallway of the, uh, of the facility there at one jets drive. But, um, but I managed, Hey, let's go. Let's oh, keep yeah. moving. Let's keep moving. Woo. Jets coming. How off you the, doing? Hey, how you doing? Keep it moving. Jets coming off a bye. Obviously all this rehab and everything to get back earlier than any human in the history of an Achilles injury and the universe saying, yeah, we're moving on to the next stage of this whole thing is for you to return this season. That's whatever the people are hoping for. I believe that is in your deep soul, what you're hoping for as well, even though we're not putting timing on anything. For that to happen, Jets have to still be in contention, we would assume, with a sound mind. That is how you would do it. How do you feel like the team is going to respond after the bye week, and what do you think the team is going to look like against this Giants team? Well, the Giants are coming off a win uh, against uh, the Commanders. Um, their defense has, has been playing, I think, a little bit better the last few weeks. Uh, they, they definitely got to feel good about that. Uh, I know Tyrod. I've known him for a long time. You know, I, th I think he's a, uh, a phenomenal guy, and I think he's played really well um, over the years when he's gotten opportunities. Uh, they lost a tough one against Buffalo with some controversy, obviously, in the game, which there's always controversy in games, um, which we can bring up uh, once Ty asks me his question. But, um, <laughs> but I think they've been playing a little bit better on defense, and uh, you know if they. They have some had some issues with some sacks, you know, early on in the season, and some turnovers. Um, and like us, we've been playing better because our, you know, we've been better up front. We've been running the ball well. Zach's been taking care of the football. We haven't had, uh, I don't think, uh, maybe just one turnover in the last couple of weeks, um, which has helped us. Uh, so bye week was good for us to get some guys healthy. We got a couple of guys banged up, especially in the secondary uh, with DJ Reed and, and Sauce dealing with. Uh, um, you know, some issues, and uh, Eccles obviously had a, and, and Hardy are dealing with some lower body stuff that hopefully they'll be back from. So we were without our top four corners uh, on, on paper and uh, came up with a big win. Um, so getting healthy was actually good for us to have an early bye week, and uh, we'll see, you know, we'll see where we're at this week. I think a lot of guys are going to be back, which would be great. Obviously, it's a big game. We're the road team. You know, kind of our own stadium, which is kind of strange. Thankfully, we have our own locker room, I believe, that we still use. Um, I think there's three locker rooms there. There's ours, there's the Giants, and there's a away team. But, um, but yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be fun to uh, get back in there. And I know it's, you know, it'll be painted blue, but there'll be a lot of – a lot of green in the stands. Well, whenever you and Eli are playing catch before the game, that's going to be a clash of the two sides. Oh, yep. yeah. You know, because he uh -huh. is Giants royalty. You are now Jets royalty. Let's should, make I zing, should I zing a couple at them? Yeah. Let's make sure we win that game of catch. You know what I mean? I, I didn't know that cat playing catch was like a competition. And then I played catch with Odell Beckham Jr. at the Pro Bowl warm-ups. He won. You know what I mean? <laughs> he won the game of catch with me. I mean, the things he was doing was absurd. I'm like, I had no idea that this was a you, – you need to beat him. Okay, in this game of catch, Aaron. Okay, I will. Set the tone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We need to set the tone for the night with that game of catch with Eli Manning. All right, I'll throw a couple zingers at him. See yeah. if he can... And also, maybe one of these. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yep. you know, like the snag. Throw a couple one-handers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, something to think yeah. about. 
So I got to show him up. That's what you're saying. I really got to show him up. Yeah, Eli will love that too. Eli, Eli won't be throwing it going, what the f- is this guy doing? Yeah. <laughs> Why? I thought we are just having a little fun. It'll be a blast. d <laughs> has a question for you, Aaron. Hey, it's been uh, a lot of talk in the football world about uh, sign stealing uh, lately. And obviously, you're one of those quarterbacks notorious for using a bunch of signs with your receivers, you know, as well as Peyton and a lot of the other great quarterbacks. Uh, interested if you have any sto- stories of any elaborate schemes to get your signs. And is there a certain level of paranoia with that when it comes to our uh, quarterbacks and teams when it comes to uh, signs and things like that? Yeah, DB, great question. Um, you know, I was in the old system, uh, in, the, in the old NFL, before there was – uh, a headset, uh, a microphone in the defensive headset. So stealing signals is always a part of what was going on. And there were, you know, certain guys over the years who had uh, had that as a responsibility. Um, I know in college, I, I mean, I just know actually reading the stories this week, I didn't realize that you weren't allowed to do like advanced scouting and yeah. um, sending guys to another place uh, to scout on them. I find that very interesting, um, different. But, uh, you know, whatever, that's the NCAA's rules. In the NFL, it's been going on forever, and there's always uh, sign stealing that's gone on. It's part of uh, competitive advantage, I think. Um, I think that there is, you know, one thing to think about is, uh, number one, you have to get the signal right. You have to see a signal. And in college, it seems like there's four or five guys signaling. Now, maybe they know based on a shirt color. You know, one guy's wearing a yellow shirt, one guy's got a red shirt, one guy's got a green shirt. They can figure out who's the one actually doing the real signaling. Yep. Um, I would assume that the team would want to, you know, be careful and and have multiple guys signaling. It could be the live guy or could not be. Um, but listen, you got to you got to know what the signal is first. And then you got to relay it. And then you got to go make the play. So there's a lot that goes on. It just just it's not just this like blanket like oh my god they got the signal. What a great advantage it is. It's like, well, you still got to go out and execute. I might know what the, you know, I might look at a secondary guy and he gets a signal that I know for a fact means cover four, right? And then we got to still go out. And even if I check to a cover four beater, you know, and out in the post, right, to two or super side. Yep. I got to drop back. We got to block him up. Then I got to get that safety cover four guy. He needs to do what I need him to do. That You need to jump that out route. Mm-hmm. And then I need to throw the post. Your guy, my post guy, has got to win on the outside. Then I got to throw a perfect ball, and he's got to make the catch. If anybody is anything different, if I get sacked, pressured, safety doesn't jump him, who gives a shit if you know what the signal is? So I think there's, it's a little more intricate than just like, oh my gosh, what a scandal. Now, in college football with the rules, like, and I read the article yesterday about you know how many different games that this person was going to, and they were sitting one side and the other side. It seems like there was some sort of elaborate scheme that was going on. Um, but you still got to execute it. It's like when the New England filled the walkthrough, the walkthrough of what Carolina or the Rams, one of those years, right? In the Super Bowl. Yep. Like what does that actually do? You know, like, or you know what some of the plays are? Well, it's cheating. It's cheating, Aaron. I'm not saying it's not. It's, it, it, it's, there's some questionable ethic things about it for sure. But you still got to go out and execute and be able to react in the moment. Go, oh, my God. They're in this formation, which means they're going to run this and echo it to everybody on the team and then. They, you know, and then hope that they don't do any sort of adjustment to that specific play. So there's a lot that goes in. There's a lot. Of, it's not just so cut and dry. Like cheater, they know every play. That's why they stopped them. It's like, well, there's there's a little bit more to it than just that. We're all very confused, and they are assuming that there's going to be some video that is going to be released to the public. And they're saying like, because your point ethically and morally, I think that has been, that's why the new England thing was such a big deal because like everybody's trying to steal signs, but if they were recording and then breaking down, digesting, having it, and then you got Ernie Sims there as well, who's supposed to be this super genius. It feels like everybody just got mad to the level in which they went. It feels like that's the same conversation with Michigan. I feel, I don't know. It just feels like that's probably what it's going to be, but that's not been proven well, at all. There were the situation uh, about 17 years ago where there was somebody filming signals on the sideline of a game and AJ was there for this one and I remember thinking okay and this is like old you know this is you've got a camcorder on the shoulder filming, right <laughs> what are you going to do with that so you're filming a defensive signal you're not using it for that game you're putting in some sort of vault that uh, if that coordinator goes somewhere else and again you still have to go through the whole process oh I know what the signal is now I relay it to my guys, and then now they got to go, you know, execute against what the signal is without changing signals. 
a lot of, a lot can happen. There's an advantage. There's some ethical things about it possibly, but but I don't think it's it's such a crazy advantage as, as maybe it's being portrayed. Yeah, but the headline says they're cheating, so yeah, yeah. let's Take make deal. sure we remember they're cheating out there. Got a good team this year too, Aaron. I mean, they got yeah. a good team this year. Go ahead, AJ. Why don't they just put speakers in the helmets? I know Matt Rule had a great answer about this, but Aaron, what is like what's the reason that college is lagging behind? We wouldn't have to have all of that hoopla going on in the sidelines if we just had one speaker on defense, one speaker on offense. That's a great question, I, and I was watching the show earlier. I saw what Matt Rule said, and I agree completely. Um, there was, you know, between 2005 and 2008, there was a committee that would talk every single year about putting the microphone in the helmet, and I'm not going to name names on coaches, but there was one long-tenured head coach who was also an offensive guy who would give a dissertation about why it's way too big of a competitive advantage to have a microphone in the defensive side, and he was able to beat it back until my first year starting, which was 2008, when they said, you know what, the hell with that. Like, let's just avoid all this sign stealing that's going on. Let's even things up. Let's put a let's put a microphone on the defensive headset. So I don't see why they don't do it. College football is basically professional football. Most of the guys are getting paid. Free agency is way better down there. And <laughs> I think let's just do away with any of these silly issues that the NCAA is, you know, which is – a very questionable, uh, their own type of uh, no. ethics that they have. Let's just even it out oh. and uh, and give them uh, give them a, a microphone and the defensive helmet. And while we're changing things, AJ, didn't you say just let the baseball players take all the steroids? Yeah, there? you know, like back in the day, whenever they were doing their thing. No, but uh, it was a fun era, fun it, era to watch. <laughs> it was incredibly yeah. unhealthy, but boy, they were hitting bombs yeah, yeah. back then. But I don't think any of us fully understand why there isn't a headset in the especially with the money that's available now. I guess back in the day, maybe some programs wouldn't have been able to afford it, but now it feels like any budget, any school athletic budget could afford it and kind of move forward. There's a video now circulating that is adding to the degree in which Michigan knew these plays. So here's CJ, obviously look to his side. Look at that back area, okay? They're looking for who's giving the signal. And look at everybody. Hey, oh, oh, oh. hey, hey. The whole sideline is sending in a message to the Michigan D-line. It's like as soon as he looks to the side, okay, now we got... Everybody, what is it? What is it, guy with the white white guy with the beard? Let's look. Uh... There's a lot of guys looking over there. What they're doing there, the pointing to the sky means pass right there, yes. right? Yeah. They're, they're all pointing run and pass. That's awesome. So those guys are pointing to the sky. That means it's pass. And I don't know what the other people are doing. Can't that's tell, a good but... from the game. But I do love that the entire team's on board. It's it's not just one person on a sideline. No. No. It's not, We don't have the headsets, okay, like the NFL does. So we need everybody in on this. Hey. So if you're not on the field, let's remember, we're looking to small white with beard, and we're all giving a sign to everybody out there. What is it? Bo pass. Pa pass. Hey. If you don't have your hands up on film, you're get, you're running, actually. That's all Russell Wilson wanted, man. That's all he was asking for right there. Hey, that's, good <laughs> that's good culture right there. That's good execution. That's all I see right there. Hysterical. Yeah, uh, Ty has a question for you, Aaron. Aaron, obviously you guys are coming off a bye this week, and it gets talked about a lot about how certain coaches or teams are really good coming off the bye. I think with Mike McCarthy, you guys are always very good in Green Bay, but what is the difference between like a team who is good coming off a bye and a team who has a long time to prepare coming off a bye and then just looks like absolute shit the following week like the Packers this past week? <laughs> Jeez. First of all, what I always appreciate about Mike was you came in Monday and then you got out. So you had the entire week off. I think that's really, really important. That's why I was telling our guys, and thankfully we, uh, you know, we won uh, against Philly and Woody changed his tune and allowed the guys to get out on Monday. But I feel like it's important to get the guys out of the building. Get them out, get them refreshed, let them reset, let them get away from it. That's first and foremost. Second is... Be careful how much self-scout you want to do. I think some coaches from time to time would take that week, and the coaches usually have to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe Thursday, and then they're off. And there is a lot of work that goes on. Sometimes I think the self-scout can get a little bit much because what some coaches don't understand is you want tendencies. So as much as you self-scout, look at what you're doing, and it doesn't mean you got to change it. What works is usually going to work for the entire season. But when you get tendencies, that's when your offense becomes dangerous because then you can have adjustments off the tendencies. 
line up the exact same way. You've lined up 25 times in 21 personnel, and you've run this play 12 times. Line up the exact same way. Whether you did those 12 or 25 times in 21 personnel, and run something off of that. Because it will also find a way to run that play with a different motion or a different adjustment, or even you're in 12 personnel, but you're lined up as if you're in 21 personnel. You need to have staples. You need to have tendencies. That's where the big plays come from. Sometimes this over self scout makes you go away from some of the things that got you to that point that were successful. And then you realize later in the season, oh, that stuff we did really good before the bye week. Maybe we should get back to some of that shit because that's when we were moving the ball pretty well. Early bye week, though, for you guys out there at the Jets. Obviously, nobody really loves it. You said it came at a perfect time. Can you do as much change, or is that why, like, a later bye is much better? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think it just depends on where you're at a lot of times. I think for us, uh, this year was important because our defensive uh, injury stuff. Um, but sometimes you like it later. To You know, like, I always like to come just in the middle just so we had a chance to kind of get the first half of the season going and get the second half of the season. Like week nine was always the best. Play games, take a break, play more. But, uh, you know, there's certain times where you maybe wish you had a bye. Like last year, I wish we maybe had a bye after that London trip because we just kind of were gassed and came back and lost, you know, four more after the bye. And um, obviously hindsight is uh, 2010, um, better than 2020. Um, oh. So uh, it's one feet see is things a little feet. clearer, but yeah. – but you never know. I mean, we were always good after the bye, I think, because Mike kept it simple and and uh, and he gave us the whole week off. I think there's a lot to that. You've given a couple relaxed speeches, you know, without knowing you're doing it to Green Bay Packers fans. I don't know if you heard the tone in which Ty just asked his question, but boy, it's getting loud in Green Bay right now. I know you're in Malibu with the Achilles and the Dolphins. Yep. And I know you got your eyes on the Jets back home. That's home for you right now. It's loud in Green Bay. Aaron. It is loud over there. I don't know if you've seen that. Let me just let me just address two things that I want to address. Number one is look at how much the narrative can change from week to week. Yeah, you know, look at the narrative that was there about Zach Wilson, about our team, and then we win two games, and it's now you know Greeny's saying we could win the division. Like nobody was saying that shit a few weeks ago. <laughs> a lot of things change. Look at Minnesota. KOC is going to be out. They're going to trade everybody. Kirk's getting traded. They're shutting down Jefferson because they're cashed in the season. And they win two games. Now they're half game out of a playoff spot. Now it's like, hey, they could, you know, get back in this thing in no time. And Jordan Addison's going to be the bridge until uh, Jefferson comes back. And their defense is playing incredible. And you know, it's just the narrative can change so quickly in this league. It's overreaction mon Mondays every single week. Oh. But it's overreaction for the entire week. And then you ch and then look at what's going on in New England. I mean, Mac Jones is and and Bill's going to be out, and Mac's the problem. And then Mac goes out and balls out here. I think he was twenty-five or thirty-one, played incredible. Let him on a last-second drive, and now it's like Mac was never the problem, you know. And, and it just, it, you know, you have to you have to be able to laugh at some of this shit because it's so ridiculous, right? The overreactions and the and the blanket statements are crazy. The second thing I want to say is because I got accused, I think, of of making fun of Iowa. Um, last week when I was talking about that big field goal victory they had against Wisconsin. And I wasn't. That was just a, a classic, you know, Big Ten, hard-nosed football game. But I want to say this. That was the most ridiculous call that I saw all Thank last you. week. Thank you. That was a ridiculous call. That was – I'm not going to say all time because there have been some bad ones. I've been a part of a couple of them, one in 2012. Fail Murray. Um, <laughs> Fail Murray. But that was – and then classic – I mean, this is so ridiculous. Nothing about this says fair catch. Absolutely nothing about this. So the they, ball is on the ground. He's, he's pointing at it for his gunners to get out of the way. And then all they were looking at was, did he step out, correct, with a cor review? Correct. Yes. And then they're going to go back and, and wave this thing off? Absolutely ridiculous call. Classic of them to double down and say, yep, totally a fair catch. <laughs> Nothing about that had fair catch energy. Absolutely nothing. Feel terrible for the kid. Gutted for him. For Iowa fans, that's it's awful. I don't know where they're at now in the standings. Oh. Ty, you were talking about you know Big Ten West, to, you know championship game. I don't know if that knocks them out of it, but that was a ridiculous call. It, it was ridiculous. Uh, I think if they win out, they'll still have a chance to go to the Big Ten championship, but. It, I, it's going to be tough to uh, to bounce back from that. So yesterday, I did a whole thing about people getting bamboozled. The Colts, too. I don't know if you saw what happened to the Colts, mm -hmm. but yeah, right there with Iowa. <laughs> I mean, right there with Iowa, back-to-back -back place. Now, Miles Garrett, 
deserved to win that game. <laughs> so did Gardner Minshew, the mm -hmm. second. I just would like that to be known. But uh, we did a whole thing about them getting bamboozled, and they said I didn't even get it right. They called an invalid fair catch, but nobody threw a flag or blew a whistle. So that just came to the ref's mind after a review of something else and said, oh, yeah, but I did think at one point it was an invalid fair catch. It was like, well, nobody else thought that. The people that were playing the play, they didn't think that. The field itself, it didn't think that because there was no flag laying on it. And literally nothing stopped. So one person thought it was an invalid fair catch, even though nobody else did. And saying Peter or poison and getting people away from the ball, standard operating procedure in a punt return world, especially in college when the ball bounces a lot because everybody on the line of scrimmage can leave before the ball is kicked, which is different than in the NFL where only two people are allowed to leave. So there's a lot of this happening in college football. So that dude, there, you, yeah. yeah, go ahead. And I would I would add to it and say, is there anybody on the sidelines there? Because he caught the ball on Minnesota's sideline. Is there anybody on the sideline pointing as if it's like, oh, he, fair, he called for a fair catch? Nobody's pointing. Nobody's going crazy. I didn't see the game. I just saw the kind of that last, that highlight, uh, low light for Iowa fans. Oh, but that but that Anthony. sequence there was, was uh, you know, were there coaches on the Minnesota side who were, you know, making fair catch gestures if he like, no, nobody thought about it for a second. There's one person in the entire place, you know, or the or the replay official who was like, hey, let me consult page 72 here. Uh, <laughs> item A says if, you know, it's like, no, nobody, nobody thought that it had anything to do with the fair catch because it didn't. And, and it's bad enough what they're doing these kids, I think, for the targeting stuff, which I still think is absolutely ridiculous that they can kick a guy out of out of the game for targeting. The punishment doesn't fit the crime to me at all. And I heard Harrison talking about it uh, earlier and, and uh, you know, how he's lowering his strikes on this stuff, and they're fined. Hey, listen, it's pro football now in the NCAA. Maybe a fine system, possibly. But kicking a kid out of the game, I think, is so ridiculous because it's such a bang-bang play. You mentioned it. These kids are going super fast. There's in-the-moment, you know, ducking, angle change, moves. And I think you, you need to start – bringing in intent. There's intent with certain players where it looks like they're head on. And there's intent where a guy's just trying to face up tackle and the guy catches the ball and braces for impact and ducks his head. And a guy who's going for a midsection shot or a belly shot or even a dick shot, like you said, oh, that head goes down two and a half feet. Now you're hitting the guy in the head, head, head. not on purpose. Yeah. And now you're out of the game. Or if it's second half, you're out of the game and out of the first half of the next game. I don't think that I don't think a punishment fits the crime. I agree. I think intent needs to be taken into consideration, but then who's judging the intent? Are those humans? Are they robots? Like people are that look Big at Al. Who? Big Al doing it, I think. Big Al? Big Al. Alberto Riveron is not the guy we need judging <laughs> intent. Okay. No. Neither Walt Anderson either. Yeah, we don't need, we need Gene Sterator. Okay, that's what we need. You know Scott Hansen doesn't pee for seven hours yep. and does we need Gene Sterator. To only work every football game, uh -huh. okay? Not, not only, not only on CBS where he's at. We're talking Fox, what? ESPN. Yep. We just need Gene Steratore in a box, just ready at all times to review, reverse, and hopefully affirm any of the calls. Don't even have the refs on the field make the calls. Just have Gene Steratore in a little box pop up on a corner. That was a hold. Clearly, the guy grabbed his shirt. Obviously, there's a little gamesmanship there that preceded it. Ten yard penalty, replay, first down. Then boom, pop him right into South Carolina. That that was a cheap shot, obviously. That's what we need, Aaron. That's what we need. I so agree. I think I think we need Gene, twenty-five million. Let's pull some money from all the networks. Not for me. And and all the different sports leagues. Let's get him a great setup with like eighty different monitors. We'll have somebody, you know, a la Foxy, who can handle, you know, a lot of different shots going on and Hell games yeah. and get him involved in every single play. Um, because that's the problem. That I've said, you know, all the the great refs and a lot of them retired recently. Gene being one of them, you know, they didn't, they're not, they're not working for the league, you know, or if you did NCAA, they're working for the TV deals because that's where the money's at. And so you got a lot of great ones. Terry McCauley is one of them who is, you know, always a great referee. He's working on TV now. Uh, obviously, Gene, you know, was one of my all-time favorites. But there's a, there's a great referee usually on for all these networks who was a great, you know, white cap. Who's not working for the league? Who's working for TV? And uh, Gene, though, Gene's the best. Hey, on that note, Tone has a question for you. Yeah, Aaron, the, uh, the refs were a, a huge talking point this week. Do you think full-time refs would help fix that problem? And like you talked about 2012, like I thought that would 
lead to full times ref, and it obviously obviously hasn't. But do you think that would help? Now, I, I could be wrong on this, and I don't want to spread any more misinformation. But um, I believe that there are some refs that are full time. Okay. Um, mm. Again, you can you can fact check uh, me on that one, but I do think that it would probably help to have all of them full time. I think. Uh, an increase in pay, probably as well. It's a really important part of our game. We're a billion, billion dollar in- industry, and uh, you know, I think those uh, those men and women deserve uh, to be paid appropriately, where they can uh, make this their full time gig. There was there was thoughts about if we make it full time, are they watching too much film? Does that bring in bias? Um, I just think that uh, that's not something to worry about. I think they need to be held accountable uh, for how they're refereeing, and there's obviously incentives. Uh, to referee the bigger games in the playoffs and obviously championship games and Super Bowls uh, based on uh, your performance. But I think it's incentive enough to be uh, as objective as possible. Um, but I think that th- those men and women need to be played, paid appropriately. And they got a tough job to do to make calls in real time. And they're as scrutinized as the quarterbacks and kickers are, uh, as they, they have one job to do, and that's to interpret uh, the rule book in zero time possible. Um, I think it's good that we have kind of the extra official in the box to help them out with certain calls. And yes. Avoid some of these unnecessary challenges. But I think, you know, full time, yes. More pay, definitely yes. And technology usage, yes. Let's embrace it, you know, but make that an actual role. Have that person actually train. Find somebody who can see things in real time and quickly communicate, like the Kenny Pickett being short on that thing. Like, I know 212 left. The Rams have no timeouts left. Under two minutes, it would go to an automatic review. It's like the whole world can see the Kenny Pickett short right there. Like, can we not just have somebody say, hey, yeah, we got it wrong. It was actually short. Let's move on. For the- I, don't know. Go ahead. Did you, I don't know if you talked about this yesterday, but the, the problem is at the top of the screen there. I don't know if that's um, – Pickens? Is that Pickens? Yeah. But he, he, he temporarily blocks the referee, right? The side judge there cannot tell because – at the, if you slow mo it back, and I watched this yesterday when I was watching the show, um, if you slow mo it back, right when he is down, is basically Stop. when Pickens is yeah. blocking the view of the referee. So when he comes in, all he sees is he assumes, I think, that Kenny had gotten to a certain line based on the fact that maybe now he got pushed back a little bit. His forward progress is going to be at or around the first down marker. He didn't see him going down to a knee. Not the good. referee on the other side mm. can come in on his own, but again, if you're looking right at the bottom of the screen here where the four is, he doesn't have a view of, of Kenny to the far side either. Uh, so, again, this is a tough situation. Rams have called their timeouts to get the ball back. Obviously, he's short here. Gives the Rams a chance to come back down seven and tie the game, um, which, again, it doesn't mean that Rams win the game or even tie the game. But this is a, a game-changing play. George right? is a great that, run block. they didn't have a chance to, uh, to change just easily correctable, though, too. You know yeah. what I mean? And that ref can even say, couldn't see because my view was blocked. We went to the booth. He's short. Mm-hmm. See you later. We'll go the other way. Just, like, easy to fix it. And also, Matt Canada this is big brain football. Smart. Hey, I don't know how the tush push is going to go for us. So let's go ahead and get some bodies in front of the eyes mm-hmm. of those refs. He did some things. And then when the whistle blows, go ahead and keep shimmying forward because it will do the whole thing. Not a bad plan. Not Jeez. a bad idea. I think we're all at a stage, though, where we need to get the refs fixed. You know, and, I don't think, and Pat, I don't think the refs mind, you know, like having an extra set of eyes. I don't think that they're going, ah, damn it, you know, the eye in the sky, you know, made my call wrong. I think they, they, they like the help. They're trying to do their best in the moment. Everything happens so freaking quickly, right? I don't think they mind having that extra little help. I mean, that, the side judge isn't thinking like, oh, man, you know, like he, he's bummed that he didn't have a view of it. He's do, He's doing his best there. To be able to have somebody review that, he's not going to be like, oh, I totally screwed that up and I feel terrible. He'd be like, no, thank you for helping me do my job because I didn't have a good view of it. And then sometimes, you know, you make two back-to-back calls on a guy <laughs> that basically win a game for the Cleveland Browns. And then, you know, maybe as somebody in the sky goes, yeah, we're checking this guy's entire family to see if there's any money on anything for sure <laughs> with what just happened. And we're only saying that because he's not a full-time teacher or not a full-time ref. I just saw one of the guy's crews. They have all their side jobs mm-hmm. uh, uh, in there. There's a middle school teacher yep. that notoriously underpaid, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Notori- like, teachers notoriously underpaid in this world where there is sports gambling happening at billions of dollars. Like, that is what's happening. It's yes. like, why even leave the door open 
for that to potentially be a case or a conversation. Middle school teacher, right there, field judge. It's like, yo, that is, right? I mean, I, I appreciate what he's able to accomplish, and thank you for serving the community and the middle schoolers and everything like that. But it's like, let's make sure there isn't any wandering eyes, yeah. you know, in this world that we're in right now. Uh, Brad Friedman, sports part director that that's what Zeke did I think coming out of college yeah he's probably cruise director at one point too just like Zeke was but it's like this shouldn't I could be, be a ref this shouldn't be a case you know no. th this should not be there's another teacher in there it's like we don't we assume hey. everybody has good intentions but also let's leave this conspiracy fodder aside if it's possible going into this next generation you know what I'm saying Aaron? Well, yeah and, and I'm going to go away from the conspiracy fodder here and I'm just going to give a little shine to Mr. Land Clark because have you seen that guy's biceps? Is that Land? He's jock. Land Probably. is jock? Massive. Big Land Huge. is jock. Hey, you're not seeing a lot of white caps fat anymore. You know, Ed Hockey he's League. A new, he's the new Hockey League, man. Ed used to be, you know, wearing those mediums and, and jock. Now his son, his son, Sean, has been doing a lot of, a lot of biceps. But I think Land is kind of setting the standard right now. So big <laughs> shout out to Land Clark for uh, – having the biggest biceps uh, of the white caps in the league. And to all the other white caps out there, that's what you need to be shooting for. It's not just his buys, it's his tries, too. You wow. know, because they got that, he's yeah. got that shadow. Vascularity. He's yeah. more jacked than that. No, hey, way to go, I man. Think that's an old photo. Yeah. That's an old photo there, too. That's not a. That's not an up-to-date photo. Dang. I would like to give a shot. I'd like to give a shot to Cleve Blakeman too. He is yeah. properly jock. Looks oh, like yeah. he could still play right now if he had to. But whenever you're they're the we've talked about this on the show. The white caps are representing all of football when they're talking to people. Like they are they're a solo shot on national TV in front of 60 million people. Like there's not a lot of people that have that audience speaking at it. We need those guys to all have moxie, too. You know what I mean? Like, the guys who are scared to make their calls publicly, it's like, yo, everybody knows that they have no clue what they're talking about. That's just your natural reaction whenever you see that. So whenever there's a little bit of moxie and a little bit of confidence, yeah. that helps a lot, too, I think. That, that's a big deal. I think that's why everybody loved Gene, because Gene, you know, he, he would deliver it with that that flair and that style. And, and I don't give a shit. You're going to boo me? That's fine. This is the call. The call is the call is the call. But I think every player liked him because he would talk to you. You know, he would talk to you like a normal person. He wasn't scared to talk to you. He'd give you a little bit. He was – I thought you guys were talking about this the other day with the uh, with the hockey refs. How cool was that? Like, here's the first puck. Sid, welcome back. Young guy, congrats on your first game. And then drop the puck. How? That's that's cool. I like that. And Gene was like that. Gene could have a conversation with you. He'd slap you on the ass and say, hey, stop holding there. Hey, you know. Hey, the side judges said scoot up a little bit. We don't want to call it on a night. Now just scoot up and, you know, do this. Or, hey, pick up that, you know, like I'd look over at Gene sometimes. He's like, that was a good hit. That was a good hit. You know, like, <laughs> like all right, Gene, if you say so, man, it wasn't you know, roughing, the, roughing the passer. I got you, you know, just because he would talk to you like a normal person. And I think we all really, really appreciated that. And he brought his own spirits, uh, you know, flair and style to the game. And, um, you know, there's a couple guys who are kind of on that track now, I think, who are kind of bringing – Bring it a little bit, not just the, the biceps, but <laughs> some of those old guys, you know, had their own style. We appreciate Jeff Triplett and, and Terry, like I said, and Beat Morelli and um, you know, a lot of a lot of great ones over the years. Hey, where's Steratore from? I know, he's a Yinzer. Yeah, you're damn right. You're damn right. Not as maybe not as Yinzer as that, no. that white cap from <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know God. if that was high school or or high school. Their D division something. This guy needs to be in the NFL soon. I, I don't know how he has <laughs> Five-yard penalty, still first down. Defense, <laughs> number six, 15-yard penalty, the result, first down. All right. Face All mask, defense. That penalty be assessed on the kickoff. The extra point is good. Okay. Still first down. All right. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Obviously. Result of the play will be a first down. Okay. Replay first down. 15 <laughs> yards from the end of the run, first down. Personal foul, defense, number 58. 15 yards from the end of the run. And result, first down. He had a lot of boxes <laughs> yeah. there. I mean, I love this guy. Uh, love him. Even in the NFL soon. I don't know how a TV network hasn't picked him up yeah. already like Gene got plucked. If the NFL tries to squeeze the officials again and there's a lockout, you know, there's a strike or whatever. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. The world needs that guy. Hey, last I promise you, if there's another Phil Mary, Mr. Yenzer, he's making a right good call. Ball was clearly incomplete. We're getting out of here. First off, <laughs> I love everything about it. Uh, last question here, Aaron, because Conman has really brought it 
these last few days. I don't know if you know this. This man is batting a thousand right now. His hair looks better than ever. Nice. And his shirts have been at the top of the class. Even people on the internet have been saying, we love Boston Connor. Well, yeah. Isn't that happening? No, that's never happened, actually. It probably won't. Definitely not that eight-year-old that called in the one time. He's yeah. not the only one. That eight-year-old, Owen, has started something every live show. Yeah. Every live show, there's at least 30 people that just quote that eight-year-old yeah. right to Connor's face. And Connor, at the beginning, you know, I think was getting a little offended. But now it's like your calling sign almost, it feels like. Yeah, still offended. Okay, uh, good. Yeah, still, still taking out the heart out in those chips. You know, I'm just trying to I'm stack sh- them up. Sure, it's just because of the eight-year-old, too. Well, what are you trying to say? We got one minute. <laughs> Yo, Ash, hold on. We got we to gotta do this thing. Eight-year-olds, dude. Eight-year-olds. You know, I've never been, really been around them, but if that's what eight-year-olds are like, I cannot wait for my daughter <laughs> to become an eight-year-old. If mean cusses. If you're just telling yeah. people to off oh, yeah. on camera oh, yeah. all day long. That's what I'm talking about. No filter eight year old. It's a good age. You yeah. have they got a solid vocab. They you know depends on what you let fly at home, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, because they're like parrots, right? They're mm-hmm. picking up everything you're saying and they're running with everything. it. Everything, even the things you think they don't hear, they hear. It's like talk. Yeah, same same <laughs> exact concept. All right. Well, our show is ending on ESPN. <laughs> We're obviously very thankful for you. There's a third season of a book club that should be happening pretty soon, Aaron. Right? Yes. Yeah. What happened to Connor's question? Well, we got We're this. skipping right to that, huh? They're well, cutting us off because they know you never know what could come out. If we cut this guy off, we'd have to make his voice like a robot, but we cut this guy off now. Can't say anything crazy, right? That's how the show just ended. Perfect. So you actually did get cut off while you were saying, we can't cut this exactly. guy off. Should be pretty right, perfect. So now, we're on, now we're on back on YouTube. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Good. Connor has a question for you. <laughs> yeah, and I, 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 I'm glad it worked out this way because I, I don't think you know many people on TV want to hear your opinion about Israel and Palestine. But I actually, Jesus, uh, Jesus. No, just, just kidding, just kidding. Uh, Aaron, there's a lot of uh, quarterbacks around the league that have played to a very high standard. So when they go out and play, everyone is expecting greatness. You know, Purdy last night, obviously Herbert, who's going through a little lull and against the Patriots, which you referenced Josh Allen, but obviously Belichick, you know, there are a lot of different factors that go into it. But for these guys who are, you know, expected to perform at the highest level, why do you think some of them go through like a lull? And I'm not saying, you know, they're the first three to ever do that. But right now during this season, they are kind of those three guys that people on the Internet, at least fans are freaking out about. You mentioned how Patriots fans were burying Mac Jones. Well, now they've their teams, Bills and, you know, not not as much the Niners just yet, but they're burying their quarterback to a lot of teams would like to have. Why do you think that happens for, for QBs, especially at that standard? And have you reached out to any of them? Because you've talked about your relationship with Josh Allen in particular. Yeah, Josh is a good friend of mine, and I don't feel like I need to reach out to him um, to, like, pump his confidence up. Like, Josh is a very confident guy. He'll be fine. Um, I think, listen, this might be surprising answer, but we're on YouTube now, so I can say fuck, and it doesn't really matter. Hey, but- hey, 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 hey. Made it, made it, by the way. Congrats. That's not going to get talked about, but congrats. That was good for all of us. Close. I think, Connor, I think it's a great question because I think there's such an overreaction every single week that there's also an uh, early or an overreacting crowning, maybe, of some of these guys. Or, on the flip side, of burying these guys. People want to crown or bury people very quickly. You can't go through any rough stretches. Um, until you've hit a certain level, right? You, you you become like where Pat's at, where Pat can have an off game here or there, and nobody's going to, you know, think this guy sucks. You know, it's because it's Pat Mahomes. He doesn't suck. You know, but sometimes, you know, based on coordinators or, or plays, the way plays sync up or, or a bad decision here or there, you might not have your best game. And that's part of it. You kind of have to get to a level that there's very few of those guys at where they're kind of immune to the knee-jerk reaction stuff. Some of these guys, though, may have been crowned a little bit too quickly. Let them, let them play a little bit. They're not at the Pat Mahomes level, you know, and they're not at some of the level of these guys. And really, if I think about it across the league, uh, there's not many other guys like Pat who have kind of earned that ability. Pat's won two Super Bowls, won two MVPs, where you're kind of immune, uh, and you can go through a stretch, which he really doesn't, but you can go through a stretch where you don't play good for a few weeks. Everybody else, I mean, you're kind of subject to the knee-jerk reactions, and uh, and that's just the way it goes until you until you've won an MVP or won a Super Bowl or kind of get past to get past some of these things. So uh, as a quarterback, as part of it, you got to deal with the overreactions. But 
Um, some of these guys may have been crowned a little bit too quickly. I'm not talking about Josh. I think Josh is a phenomenal player. And, um, you know, you have a you have a game where you don't play your best. And, but, I, I mean, he, well, hey, oh, there we go. They're throttling. Now we're in the dark. No. They're throttling. Now we're in the light. <laughs> hey, how about the trip back to the little, darkness there, huh? Yeah. That was fun. I, was it? I feel like that was that was kind of like that music when you had an award show where it's kind of like getting you off the stage. Like, all right, bro. Hey, wrap it up. Get out of here. <laughs> no, it wasn't happening for me. No. I don't know what's going on over there. We just – we keep lights on forever. But if you want to go to the – JK. You got JK. Fuck on me. How's he doing? He, he doing good? You guys both grinding out right now still, right? Yeah, we've been grinding. He's – He's been a little quieter lately because I've been kind of pounding him, you know, oh. taking the pond time with the rehab. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, taking yeah. the pond time. Yeah, you have. AJ, hasn't he? He's been yeah. going deep in the pond time. <laughs> yeah, he said it. You saw it. He, had, yeah, he was explaining it. You use your fist and everything, man. Good. I told him I, we got a little bet. You know, losers got to pay for a, a day in the city, you know, take me to Kennywood. Nice. And uh, <laughs> do some do some Yenzer things. Yeah. You know? Yes, I love everything. Have a couple. I have a couple Iron Cities. Oh, Ooh, wow. Hell yeah. You scratch me right where I hit. You're going to go to the potato patch? I mean, oh, I mean you do what you got to okay. do down there at Kennywood. But I do like the fact that you told J.K. Dobbins, welcome to Pound Town, I'm the mayor. You know what I mean? Because you two have really been motivating each other through this entire process. I think when it's all said and done, you will reflect uh, highly upon your time with J.K. Dobbins. Does that mean you're going to recruit him to the Jet? You know, Ooh, is, oh. is J.K. Dobbins already being recruited right now to be a future teammate of Aaron Rodgers? Well, that'd be tampering, so I, I obviously haven't been doing that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Just have a good time. He's on a rookie deal anyway. Just vibes, guys. Yeah, of course. Who cares? Okay. But, yeah, we're vibing out. We're vibing out. We got solid vibes. Could you imagine? Three place. Very solid vibes. Hey, have you seen this Ravens team? Have you seen what Lamar's been doing with J.K. Dobbins there? And I know, yeah. like, very unfortunate. Hey, Lamar and Debot wanted to what, brought it up before the show, like, have you seen what Lamar's doing? Have you seen any change, like, from a quarterback brain, a guy that's considered, like, best thrower of football, maybe, yeah, best, best thrower of football ever? Have you seen anything from Lamar that's different than maybe years past in his throw game? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I've always been a fan of Lamar since he was in college. I think every year you gain a little bit of experience, and, and for him, I think it's just more comfort in the pocket. He still does all the other crazy stuff. He scares the shit out of you. Anytime this stuff happens right here, right, he breaks the pocket, he's – maybe the fastest guy in the field possibly every game and then he can he can throw it all over the place um you know i love this play and i saw it yesterday him just stand in the pocket you get tracy walker coming unblocked basically there and he just throws a you know beautiful ball over the top there of a defender and hangs in there and that's a that's a that's a really nice play but the guys won mvp you know sometimes we forget about who uh you know who lamar jackson is he's a, he's a hell of a player so happy for, happy for him, uh, happy for Odell, and uh, that was a big win for him. Detroit came in, you know, they've been they've been rolling, um, so big, uh, you know, big win for him. Hey, we appreciate the hell out of you, brother. Have an incredible week of rehab. We'll see you whenever you're beating Eli Manning uh -huh. in that game of catch, right? Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna throw some hard ones right at his belly button. Oh, so if you miss a little low, just because. Yep. Yeah. It goes right to uh, tip VP, right head to head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna let him know. Yeah, you let him know there's yeah. a new king in New York. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jet life, baby. Yeah. Hey, he's a good flip cup player though. I don't know if you guys are gonna get into a flip cup game with Eli. Ooh. Remember that video of him with Daniel Jones? Yeah, yeah. killing it. He was playing flip cup. Do you know Eli well? I I know him a little bit. I don't know him that well, but I enjoy being around him. I think he's hilarious. I think both men and you know Peyton, but they're both low key really funny. Like they might, you might watch the show and be like, "Oh, you know, they've got some bad jokes, different things." But in person, those dudes are real good time. Real yes. good time. And I, you know, I've got a chance to hang out with Eli a couple times now. Uh, you and Eli were good. I mean, like his <laughs> sense of humor. The, I was standing at this one golf course uh, at a place, mm -hmm. looking at something on the wall, and just. The zinger that came at me from Eli while walking by me looking at this historic human being who accomplished a lot was just like so savage, <laughs> so quick, and delivered just like so nonchalantly. And then he just walked away. Didn't even get my reaction to it. Just left the room. I was like, oh, Eli's a killer. That is, yeah. I don't think you get to see that, but that's why he wins a couple Super Bowls. Exactly. That's why in those moments he's able to have it. Let's talk about that. Do you think you have to have that? Uh, AJ brings it up a lot. And I think... We chat. To be a quarterback, you kind of have to have that super alpha mentality somewhere, right? And that's something that you mentioned it last week. I think that's a real deal in a trait that you have to have at the quarterback position. Do you agree with that or no? 
yeah, you have to have that. You have to have a little moxie. You got to have a little sense of humor. You got to, you know, be okay pranking people. And um, there's a lot of different things I think work. Uh, interesting to see personalities of all the guys across the league because everybody's different. I'm a weird hippie who also, you know, loves his teammates and feels like I could lead and, and inspire just about anybody from any walk of life. You know, there's guys like, uh, you know, Peyton and, and Eli who've been, you know, have the, the, Bloodlines, the lineage, the you know the the dad jokes, the ability to relate to anybody, big pranksters, um, the, and everybody's got different personality. It's just how can you relate to your teammates? Can you be authentic? Can you avoid you know you know all the cliches from time to time? What are you willing to to uh, to lay on the line for your teammates? And um, how do you deal with adversity too? I mean, look at you know especially in our league now with all the the critiques all the time and the ups and downs and the whimsical feelings about uh, about certain guys that can change from time to time and you know I think that uh, it's it kind of highlights character you know you're willing to stand in the fire and and uh, stand up for what you believe in and deal with all the criticism where you're gonna lay down when uh, when things get a little intense it's hard to find that guy They've been looking. You know, a lot of teams have been looking for a long time. Tough to find it. You know, it's very tough to find it. And shout out to you for having it, even though you are just some old-ass hippie out there, you know, does those drugs from the jungle. That's right. And uh, worries about his own happiness. Why? And tells people his own personal decisions on stuff. What? You know, you're able to lead. And that's uh, it's a beautiful thing. And we're thankful that you come on the program, pal. Thank you, man. I, I believe in medical freedom, freedom, informed consent, and I'm voting for Robert F. Kennedy Jr. So have a great day, everybody. All right, all right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Thank Yay! you. Nice. I have a feeling that might be the first book of the book club. What was it going to be? Is that, is, I think the author might be RFK Jr. Oh, RFK Jr. is an author. I didn't know that. Yep. Was it fiction yes. or nonfiction? He's a doctor, right? Yeah. Uh, some of sorts. Yeah, I think lawyer. He's a lawyer, I believe, right? You can say that. I mean, could you imagine? We knew you were voting for RFK. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Po- Poyer just flipped the table in Buffalo somewhere. Like, <laughs> Hell kidding? yeah, Are you kidding me? <laughs> Tell him, man. Let's go. About time. All right. So now we know who Aaron's voting for. Yes. We would have never, oh, we never okay. guessed that. Never guessed AJ? that. AJ? Never... Now, granted, I will say... <laughs> There's going to be people that are really mad that Aaron said who he was voting for on this particular program. Yeah. Especially when you see the title of his book. The 2021 one? Or? Uh, no, the one in the three there. Uh, a letter to liberals yeah. from RFK. Oh. Jesus. Jesus. So, no, I think Aaron's talking about the 2021 book, I would imagine. Oh. oh re- what about the 2023 one? Vax, unvax. Let the well, science speak. That is the one that Aaron read. <laughs> Boom. That got what about this one here? I don't know what year it is. The third one over uh, down here. Vaccine villains. Yeah. All right. We know who you're picking. Oh, Aaron. Yeah. That comic looks Dude. sick. Do you, you see that comic? I didn't know he had bottom? cartoons. Yeah, RFK Jr. is doing cartoons. Steal back your vote. 2008. That's yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. RFK Jr. has been, do- <laughs> He's been doing it. I wonder uh, yep. when Aaron and RFK Jr. met, if that room was oh. just... Oh, just the explosion of happiness oh, when yeah. they ran into each yeah. other. And with that being said, you can vote for whoever the hell you want to vote. That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. That's just who Aaron was voting for. And his vaccine decision, that was just Aaron's vaccine decision. I'm vaccinated. Yep. I got vaccinated. Mm-hmm. I had 104 and a half degree fever, too, whenever I got COVID shortly after Hurt. getting vaccinated. Now, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that it was wrong. I'm just saying my decision was to do that. Aaron's decision was to not do that. Then when he got COVID, boy, oh boy, Ooh. did everybody find out about that? Toe fell off. And they still hate him for it. Oh, yeah. And in in proxy, you know, a lot of that going on, boy, we have gotten absolutely slaughtered by the people that truly believe that the vaccines were everything that we needed to survive. And, hey, I agree. I believe you. But also, there's people like Aaron that exist that don't agree with that. And one of them's an author who's running for president. Yeah. yeah. And the other one was the MVP of the quarterback both years of the NFL uh, in the NFL COVID era of the MVP. So we apologize if we piss people off, but also this is journalism. We're learning about the greatest football thrower of all exactly. time. You're welcome. Consider it a documentary. Uh-huh. Yeah. And if we piss you off, just shut the fuck up and keep it to yourself.
Because <laughs> people aren't doing that. I don't care. <laughs> people people are not doing that. No, they're, no not. they're not. People are not. They are writing the most amount, mm -hmm. actually. We hate this guy so bad. Yeah. Let me write an article about it. Washington Post, I got tipped off that they are not necessarily going to be singing my praises in an article. And my first thought was, Washington Post is a big deal, right? That's a big, Washington Post is a huge deal. Wow. And they're like, it's not going to be good, we don't think. With all the questions that we've got asked, we do not think it's going to be great. A lot of, and I'm like, well, Washington Post is writing about it. It's, holy shit. Washington fucking Post. And then I check out their Twitter, I'm like, 20 million followers, I think they have. Mm -hmm. They're oh, like yeah. a legit operation. Oh, yeah. yeah, one of the major ones. It's like, holy shit, we had the Washington Post writing something? Not good, but still, that's a fucking big deal. Then The Athletic obviously has their thing. I think Greg Doyle, the Indy Star, wrote today uh, about us, which I know Greg well. Allegedly, the Vanity Fair, I think. Is that a magazine? Vanity Fair. Yeah. Well, I, I, I've yeah. been told that Vanity Fair might be writing something. It's like, Jesus Christ, Washington. You do a cover shoot for that? Yeah, Don't they usually do like, like a, cool cover shoots? That'd be cool, you with like a bunch of syringes and stuff. Yeah. And like, hey, pick your, pick your shot. Yeah, you know? Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's the vision for the... Photo shoot. But, Might be. Me I mean, neither. I, I don't even know. I don't think I was yeah. asked to, to be photographed. Uh -oh. I think it was like, hey, this is not a. I don't think they're trying to. I don't think they're putting I didn't know a filter. Vanity on Fair there. did uh, unappealing pieces. Yeah, to be honest, oh, yeah. I, I had yeah. no idea. Remember uh, Vinny Chase? They actually did him dirty, but he ended up winning over the reporter and Mary. Oh, yep. yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. You never know. You might, whoever's writing this, you might be able to win him over and you guys might be buds. You know? yeah, well, yeah, I don't think so. I, I mean, every. It's wild. Every day I get a text from somebody like, heard there's something coming down the pipe from insert name of thing that I've heard of before but never had any interaction with. And they're like, don't think it's going to be good. I'm like, what the fuck did we do? Yeah. And then they start listing things off. It's like, oh, I can see how you would hate us. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, you know, you re read a couple of these things. It's like, oh, I can see that as well. So I'd like to let everybody know we genuinely are attempting to bring happiness into people's lives. The fact that that isn't happening for you, I apologize. And I understand why you potentially hate me and ipso facto hate everybody. But we're just doing our thing. You know, we're just going to keep rolling. And we appreciate the hell out of you acknowledging our existence. And, uh, yeah, just keep it coming. It's been a lot of fun to learn a lot of terrible things about me. Mm -hmm. You know, and anonymous sources saying things about negative about me that I've definitely made money for in the past. Yeah. So there's a lot of there's a lot of goodness coming and stuff like that. It's awesome. But this is our life now and we're lucky for it. This is not a woe is me. This is a holy shit. This is what we kind of expected, but I couldn't have guessed at the Washington fucking post. Mm -hmm. Vanity Fair, allegedly. Well, you ain't got haters, compliment. you ain't popping. Hey, getting started, so, Yeah. Yeah, let, like, that's a big deal. That's a compliment, you. man. Hey, so thank you for consuming the content. Thank you. Yeah, like, should yeah. not be that big yet. We we just started in a basement. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then they're talking about all our, uh, the numbers and stuff, and they compare us to fucking Stephen A's first take. It's like, that's the biggest sports show mm -hmm. well, in the world. Don't compare us to everybody else. Compare us to the biggest ever. We built this thing on YouTube, you know, for this crew right here. And as soon as we drop onto a network, which is where everybody else has been created, they're like, yeah, but look at this. It's like, okay, all right, I respect you guys. But we're very proud of what we've accomplished. Oh, yeah. I'm very thankful for Aaron coming on and telling his story. I'm very thankful that we get a chance to chat with, like, the greats around the sports. I'm very thankful that with ESPN, we're getting access to more people and more mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. than ever before. Highlights. Highlights. Clips. We're getting, we, NHL clips we get mm -hmm. to play. Yep. Baseball clips we get to oh, play if yep. we want. Off season, we're going to be able to run all the sports that are taking place. Doing. I mean, it's like we're very lucky, very thankful. But the fact that these big places are acknowledging our existence is a little wild. And maybe one day, it'll have a positive one. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's coming anytime <laughs> soon. I don't well, think that's coming anytime yeah, soon. Definitely not. But if, if you, you know, someone is asked, don't be a wuss and do it anonymously. Just sack up right. and say what you feel, and let's keep it moving. We know least, exactly who it is. Yeah, 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 yeah for I sure. Mean, but everyone should. Oh, do we? Okay. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Good. one million percent. Can't wait to chat later, guys. I have no clue. You I only saw the screenshots is. that you guys put up. It's you, you piece of <laughs> shit. Yeah, you know who it is. It's it was it. me. It was me, fellas. <laughs> Knew it. <laughs> what if they did say? Somebody, <laughs> yeah. somebody what if they did? worked close. Be awesome. the alias AJ Frank. Yeah. <laughs> TJ <laughs> Frank from Ohio mm -hmm. had this to say. No, it's, uh, yeah, whatever. Hey, you yeah. think – uh, you think there's any chance that Aaron will be on any of those register to vote videos coming up? Raise your from the NFL. Raise your vote. The <laughs> Ducks yearly one. When is the election? 
next, next year. Yeah, next year. Yep. Oh, you know, money. Hey, register to vote. Make sure you register to vote. But if you're not voting for I, who I want you to vote for, then don't register. That's Whoa, cool. AJ, that is doing? not how it goes. Yeah, yeah, it That's matter. exactly how it goes on all sides. No, we know. that is not. Speak out. Speak your truth. Unless I disagree, don't. Yeah. You know, that happens both sides as well. Oh, and that's what's fun about living in Indiana and Ohio. It doesn't matter. What's that? <laughs> the states are going to be red no matter what. No, so, like, not Ohio. Is. Really? I don't know. Not Ohio. Not, not here. Yeah, yeah and yeah. Indianapolis is like very Democrat. Yeah. Really? Very, very Democrat. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Very. You're thinking I of need the, to look around a little you're thinking, more. Yeah, you need to maybe change your algorithm. <laughs> yeah, I think it seems I Seems like what you're seeing in I your phone is potentially a little bit different. Why How about that? Fair. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> like, Ohio, like I think, blue. swing state. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Think, I oh think yeah, big is, swing state. I, I I didn't know it was uh, blue <laughs> at any point <laughs> in this. Oh yeah, Ohio, PA, Indiana. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The whole area. Indiana has been blue before. Indianapolis. Oh. Like the entire city. Oh, yeah. City. Okay, yeah, city. sure. Like maybe the most blue out of any city. Uh, there's probably a couple others. Yeah, Boston. But super. And during COVID, that's when it all kind of got, came to the whole thing. Yeah, I, I guess in the, uh, I'm thinking strictly election wise. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's like blue. Electoral votes. Yes. Uh, what the fuck's going on with the speaker thing? What is that? Oh, uh, who knows? They have no idea. Yeah. Yeah, like that's like, such a big it? joke over there. Like these people get mad about like politics. aren't Bro, get mad about politics. You know what I mean? Like, don't get mad at us about anything. Politics are such a joke. I don't know enough about it. Obviously, I haven't looked into it. I need to at some point. I probably will dabble. But I'm right now trying to enjoy my life and, like, f sports and everything, so I kind of stay out of it. But whenever shit makes its way into my algo, it's like, oh, it's a real deal. So we just have no speaker. That. What the fuck is that? How's that even happen? Uh -huh. I thought there was just automatically one. I thought that just happened. I have no idea what's going on. Why isn't Aaron Rodgers the speaker of the house? You know what I mean? Is that why is that not happening? I'm sure he would get overwhelming support for that. If he he, <laughs> all right, right, let's get to a break. Or Kornacki. We got Sean Sharania joining us on the other side of the. Where is Kornacki? It's almost Kornacki season. He's probably in the lab right now, yeah. getting ready for it. He has not been on NBC's coverage at all. No, he is what not happened? on S N F. So I guess like when playoff time comes, percentages. Yep. That's when he'll come back. This Kornacki is, guy. He's the best. Is he still doing his normal stuff, though, that he, he, his non-sport oh, yeah. stuff? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. know. Oh, okay. Is he still doing oh, stuff? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Okay, Kornacki still has his fastball. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 He'll come into Sunday Night Football when it matters. Kornacki has his Playoff sleeves time. rolled up. Yep. He's on that touch screen. Mm -hmm. And he's got more tab capabilities so and good. quicker recognition of percentages and stats and ipso factos than anybody else in the map touch screen game. Exactly. Remember? Not even close. Last year with the situation with the playoffs because of the Seattle and Rams, I think, before the yep. uh, Packers-Lions game. I remember him just dominating that board. He, was the, he was the bearer of bad news. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what Kornacki does. That's right. Mm -hmm. Or maybe good news. Could be. Usually. Depending upon who you are. 2024, we'll see Kornacki at his finest. That's right. oh. He's just getting started, too. He's just in his prime. It's like the World Cup, too. He only gets to perform once every four years yeah. in that particular world. He's going to have his best game yet. I think so. Dingers. When is it? October, November. Yeah. Next football 2024, season. 2024, yep. Can't wait to enjoy the football season next year and not hear about that every fucking commercial. Yeah. Well, the spring will be really fun. Spring? Yeah, because that's when, they, uh, yeah, that's when they'll decide who's who. And then we really go this summer. We're getting brought up in a lot of politics talk because of Aaron talking about the vaccination stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to let you guys know, I know everything you're talking about. <laughs> I understand it all. That's what I'm here for. That's what people think, too. They say, you know what? We need politics ideas. Let's go to that fucking doofus in a tank top. That's what they do. Stay locked in on it. And that's an, a bigger problem in society. A lot of people think they're experts on everything because they might be an expert in one thing. That is not the case. Let's remember that as we go into political season. Like, we don't need to be taking opinions from people that have no fucking idea. Now, the people that know, let's go ahead and take their opinions and do that. But let's make sure we are... You know, the right people are talking about the right stuff. Yeah. I get very pissed off whenever I, both sides, I have friends, both sides. Grants have a platform because of something that they've accomplished nowhere near politics. And then they have a full speech about how everybody needs to feel. And it's like, who says you have any fucking clue about that? Oh, I've done my research. Oh, uh, okay. Awesome. Your algorithm has fed you memes Hell that yeah. affirm <laughs> what you think. Yeah, but enough memes. Yeah, it's like, all right, <laughs> let's make sure we let the the professionals do the professional stuff. But I appreciate how much everybody cares over there. Because all anybody wants is the world to be perfect. Of course. That's right. Yeah. And that's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. This is the year. 
This is Whoa. the year. This is the year. The world comes together. Mm-hmm. Let's go, world. Huge day. Let's go, oh, United world. States. Woo. We're going to be a part We're of it. We're to a good start. We are. A, well, I don't know if that's true. I mean, the Washington Post just wrote some stuff that's going to divide some people. <laughs> well, starting from this moment. Yeah, from now on. Yes. All right, yeah. let's get to a break. This is on the other side. Boom. Greatness. Unity. Boom. Whole world. Together. Together. Yep. Camera. Forever. Team on me. Team on three. One, two, three. Team. Team. Take five. 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 Hey, that ain't gonna help. Miz, that ain't gonna help. That's gonna do nothing. He was a three-sport athlete at Plum High School where his volleyball team was in the mix for a section three title. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. American Century Championship coverage rolls on here from the back deck of Edgewood Tahoe. How about Pat McAfee talking by, man? What are you going to do to change and make Tua better? Have you gotten so, into that? This is very early in the whole process, yeah, and you're shaking no. hands, kissing babies right yeah. now, and you're a zero-win head yeah. coach that everybody loves. Zero wins. Zero win. <laughs> but what what are you thinking about that for Tua? How do you make him better? Um, we're going to start with scoring more points than the opponent. Wow! Holy shit. Oh, no. Uh, you are changing the game. Changing the game. <laughs> yeah. Through math. Yeah, uh, right. No, I think... Um, there's 
I, I, I was just so fortunate in, in my career to be around the, the process of how I look at things with, with the empowerment of the right teachers that I, I look backwards forwards, okay? Um, what things do I see that are really awesome about his game on tape, even though we're at... Hey, he's it, accurate. Hey, boom! He, he, that's what I was just about to say. Oh, I didn't know. I, I was just... I, I, you were leading me. That's how, You should do this, maybe. Dude, think about it in the yeah. future. But you, he's or we so should, accurate. Or we should just spend the time finishing each other's... Sentences. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, did, did, have we known each other for... Our whole lives? Oh, my God. You tell... Me? Wow. This is weird. <laughs> dude. Whoa, it seems like you guys just that. became. Dude. Wow, this is fucking weird, AJ. Bro. Hey, this is... Did we swap skins? <laughs> no. Wow, we learned a lot about yours, by the way. I mean, yeah. This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pig! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this frozen frenzy NBA tip-off, Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, October 24, 2023. Hour three of the program starts now. Football. Football. Happened last night with the Vikings beating the Niners. AJ Hawk is to my left. You're right. I don't know if you heard. There's a lot of things happening on this particular Tuesday. Tonight, the frozen frenzy will be taking place on ESPN Deuce, Woo. which is covering all 32 NHL teams playing tonight in a red zone like fashion should be electrifying for the NHL. Also, Aaron Rodgers was just on the program. Shout out to him for taking about an hour of his time yeah. on this particular rehab Tuesday for him. And also this evening, the NBA is Ooh, tipping no. on. The NBA. Nine year NFL vet Darius J. Butler is here. That's Big good. fan of the Miami Heat, I do believe. Absolutely. Yeah. And any other yeah. team that's doing well. Bingo. Yeah. Of players. Nice. players League. I like the players. Smart. One half of the hammer. God. God. Cowboys Turn Diggs is here. Loves betting on NBA <laughs> games. Yeah, you can expect me to bet on a lot. A lot of NBA games t before February, March, April. That's right, because yep. the season's starting tonight. It matters tonight. It doesn't right. just start to matter on the day after Christmas. Okay? Or after Super Bowl. Or after, or after March a week or two off. I've, or yeah. any, okay, yep. NBA matters tonight. April Fool's Day. Tonight. In the talks of table at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt know that. Joining us now is a man who's been a friend of the program for a long time. Mm -hmm. We knew this dude when he couldn't even grow a beard. Yeah. yeah. Now he's got maybe the cleanest jawline with beard in the history of sports media. His hair is always perfect, and his eyes are always on his phone as he's trying to dissect and learn everything he can about the association. Ladies and gentlemen, Sham Sharanya. Yeah, Shami! Pat, AJ, DJB, the boys. It's NBA time. I, I, I know Pat's hype. Pat, you look hype right now. Yeah, you dude. Look like you're ready to go to a game tonight. Bro, yeah. Frozen Frenzy's happening tonight. What? The NBA tip off's happening tonight. What? Gonna need multiple TVs on this Tuesday. <laughs> Gonna need multiple TVs. Uh, what do I need to know about the NBA as it tips off here, Shams? I'll, I'll start with uh, one particular subject and then you can let me know any of the other prominent things. Giannis just signed a massive deal with Milwaukee. Congrats. That's the both of them yeah. getting that deal done. I know he said in a presser about the deal that he wanted to see if the team would go all in and make a winner. That will kind of affect his future. They bring in Damian Lillard. He's oh. talking about Portland. Are they the favorites now? And tell me about that Giannis decision. Yeah, listen, the, the league has so much parity, Pat. Like, 
literally f- the last five NBA champions have been five separate teams. That's the first time that's ever mm-hmm. happened in NBA history. I mean, in the last three, four years, all all the NBA teams have made the playoffs except one team, Charlotte. So, you know, unfortunately for Charlotte. But oh, I, I think I what, what I mean to say is oh, there's there's oh. so much parity. It's tough for me to say if Milwaukee's the the the, the dead stop. Like they're the, they're the team to beat. But I do think them. Boston, you have to look at in the Eastern Conference. Thank and in the you. West, there, there's a bevy of teams as well. But I think when you look at Giannis' decision, I think the moment they got Dame Lillard, that showed to Giannis the loyalty that they had for, to him as far as he made some comments this summer. Like, I'm trying to win a championship. I love Milwaukee. I'm a loyal guy. But if we can't win it all this year, uh, this year, we can't win it all here in Milwaukee, I could look to move. I could move. And that was a warning shot around the league. That was a warning shot to Milwaukee. And give credit to the GM, Pat, John Horst. He did this in 2020. Drew Holiday, they acquired Drew Holiday in 2020. They gave up a a bunch of draft picks, a bunch of draft swaps. Giannis' extension was on the – he was on the brink of not taking an extension and possibly leaving Milwaukee. They get Drew Holiday. He extends on a Supermax deal. They win a championship. Again, three years later, Giannis puts the organization on notice. They go get Dame Lillard out of nowhere. And then in, in, and then he signs early on an extension, and we'll see. Maybe they win the championship, maybe they don't. But I think from what I'm told, Giannis literally woke up yesterday morning. He knew his deadline was last night, and he wanted peace of mind. He didn't want this to be a distraction for the rest of the year. He knew if he didn't do this extension now, he was going to be asked about this throughout the season. This was going to be the number one storyline throughout next year. Um, th- throughout this next year into the summer, and he decided to just do it. And I think now him and Dame Lillard, I think they've had some heart to hearts. They've had a lot of conversations. They want to play together for the next three years. Hell yeah, hundred eighty wow. some million. That'll make you a peace of mind. Bingo. I <laughs> make you a peace of mind. Good to the NBA, man. They pay. They yeah. pay over there. Go ahead, AJ. Shams, so, uh, Clay Thompson was on the Manning cast last night. It just got me thinking. Like, what's that window look like? To- do the Golden State Warriors still, are they a legit contender to win it all? And how long is this kind of window open for them out there? That window is open as long as Steph Curry is, is dribbling and shooting the ball like the way he is. I think his, his he's kind of like LeBron-esque in that way. I think him and LeBron are going to be so special. I mean, Kevin Durant obviously is in that category as well. Guys that just are going to have this crazy longevity. I mean, the, the ability to p- play up until – 40 years old uh i think steph can do it for sure and i think that's where their window is he's he's not gonna be a free agent again until 2026 uh he's gonna be extension eligible in the next year or two as well i mean he, he could be him and nicole Jokic could be two guys that could be in the 70 million dollar per year range pretty soon with the way the cap is rising so all many these are, 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 are escalating so as long as steph curry is there and doing what he does they're a contender but Clay Thompson, he's entering the last year of his deal. They've had extension conversations as well to, to bring him back like they did uh, Draymond Green over the summer. But I'm told the sides are far apart on an oh, extension. Uh-oh. They're offering a two-year extension, not at the salary I'm told that he wants. He wants a longer deal, three, four years, more money. And so there's a gap there, a significant gap. And so I, I don't see an extension being reached yet. They're going to play it out and – Clay Thompson, he's a guy. He's a very, he's a very confident guy. He's a guy that, you know, wants to get back on that elite level, and I think he's going to try to prove that. I expect a Clay Thompson with a chip on his shoulder this year. I expect a Clay Thompson who might, might just have uh, one of his better seasons over the last several. Seemed like a normal human last night on the Manning cast. Yeah, that was the most yeah. I've heard him talk. I think most I paid attention to old Clay Thompson talk. Seemed like a good dude. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I didn't know much about him. Seemed like a good guy. When he's on his boat, you know, he's he, either he's on his boat or he's on Manning cast. I mean, he, those are the two places you're going to see Clay Thompson at his He's place. a coxman? What, what do you mean? He's he's out there on the rides water? To practice, right. He, yeah. he he rides his boat to practice, to games sometimes. Yeah, he's he, oh, he's, wow. he's out there. What's that boat and we talking he's about? Literally, he's literally riding. Well. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's a yacht yacht. I mean, it's definitely a bigger boat. We're not talking small boat. We're talking mi- mi- mid-sized boat. Like a cigarette boat? Like they were running down there in Miami? Kind of. Mm. You know? <laughs> kind of. Is that the type? Is that what we're talking about? What type of boat are we talking about? A fishing boat? He, he I, I, I'm pretty sure it's a fishing boat because I'm sure he enjoys the fish. But when he's on that King boat, I mean, he's one of those boats. Maybe. He's he's like the wind is, is in his in his hair. Like he's he's going pretty fast. He's not. He, this isn't a slow boat now, Pat. Yeah, of course. He's a daredevil. You yeah. see him play basketball? I mean, mm-hmm. he's running from side to side shooting those threes. He's a massive part of it. If he's going, right, they're going to go. Mm-hmm. Isn't that kind of how it goes with the Golden State Warriors? Yep. 
It, it, 100%. As, as Steph goes, as Clay goes, as Dre goes, that's a, that's how the Warriors go. Oh, oh bars, Shams. Wow. I love that. <laughs> Darius has a question for you. Hey, Sh- hey Shams, excited for you. New season. Hey, Bomber is clean. Yeah, hey, back- But uh, some new to the NBA this year, obviously the in-season tournament. Uh, what's been the feel for the players around the league with uh, with this new thing coming to the league this year? Yeah, it, it, it's going to be an interesting one, D, uh, DJB, but I appreciate the bomber love. You know, you, you, you're you always dressed in sharp, so I got I to gotta always, always got to match your energy. I try. But What's the J? I, I, I I think, are you DJB to everybody or middle Darius J. J. Oh, Butler? That's my handle on every Darius oh. J. Butler. Yeah. yeah, we understand on, that. Is, oh, yeah, DJB. Right. Have we been calling you the wrong name? Nah, nah. DJB. Like DJ 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 well, where's the that J? between me and... That's just me and DB. Hey, That's a me and DB thing, man. Oh, oh we like crazy. that. We like DB. that. Okay. okay, we don't want to infringe. We just didn't want disrespect either. You know, we don't want to infringe. We don't want to disrespect. <laughs> Mute our mics, or yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. got the actual move. <laughs> Sorry, Sean. Well, there is. What I would say is, I think it's it's a trial period. I think players are trying to see how, how this in season tournament goes. But you know what? You know who this tournament will be great for? It's not. Uh, uh, listen, I don't know if LeBron James. Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, I, I'm not sure if those guys are waking up for the in-season tournament. I mean, all respect to the in-season tournament. I, I, I think those guys have won championships. They're trying to win a ring. But when you talk about guys like Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, right. Luka Doncic, that, that not, not the legacy superstar, but the superstar of today's day and age where this in-season tournament, it's a new thing. So if you could be that superstar that ends up winning – you know, two, three in season tournaments or, Zion. or, or, or back to back. Sure. Zion, throw Zion in there. Ingram. I mean, uh, we, we, a, a lot of guys, you know, we, we can just Trey Young. Like, oh, Trey Young's been in the conference finals. Imagine if he wins an in season tournament championship. So huh. I think for that, wow. Come on. for today's age Come superstar. On. What are you talking I, about, Paul? I, I feel like, Come yeah, on, the legacy builder. Come on. Like, yeah. 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 This you guy has six. Kidding me. This guy has six in season rings. Oh, okay. yeah. that's, that's cool. Huge. Guess what? So do they. And we shit on them more than anybody. Well, we should make no, it. No, it's a whole true. new thing. No, it's I'm, not. This is ridiculous, Sean. Can they get pinky rings for the in season one? Because it's a little smaller. Can we get pinky rings for the in season tournament champions? I got six. Six pinky rings. What are you talking oh, about? Oh my God! Now, by also Nicole, giving man. away 500k a player. Oh. 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 The, and the back end roster guys. That's real money. Oh right? well, there's a lot of bums getting paid 70, 80 million dollars. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, Sean. Today there was a big one. I never Bingo, heard of. Yeah. I'm not saying he's a bum, but I did not know who this human was. Yeah. So if you start in the NBA, you're getting 150 million dollars, no matter what. Now. So uh, the Greek freak, who we all know and appreciate, and sells out arenas everywhere, got 180 million. And then Cuz just signed, Ooh. what's his name? Jaden uh, McDaniels. I believe he got what? 136. 136, yeah. 136 million. Okay. Okay. Hey, way to go, Jaden. Yeah. I love Good that. Good yeah, player. Yep. Good Cat. play. Great player. Smacks the floor. Does he start? Yep. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Two-way player. You know, a, a great two-way player. What's that mean? Very you have to be in on, basketball. On the There's yeah. some people out. What do you mean two-way player? We play defense? On? Exactly. When you got to make he's shit a, up a about guy. a guy who get. Gets paid 130 million. Yeah, that's, that's this guy's problem. having a good day today, and you just want to shit all over. Can we learn about why he's getting paid? The amount of money he's getting paid. That guy doesn't give a damn about a thing. Highway robbery against A. Rod. <laughs> he does not Whoa. care. At so Pat, all. let me give you the rundown. Jaden McDaniels, uh, one of the one of the best defensive players in the league. I'm Jesus on Christ! The podcast. Yeah, he is coming. He shouted out Jaden McDaniels yeah. as one of the underrated. Up and coming players, a guy that's uh, given him the Ooh. toughest time defensively. This is Paul George saying this, not me. Ooh. I didn't say this. I, I I think there's a lot of love around the league for right. Jaden McDaniels as a defender. I think he's still got you know he's yeah. still got some ways to go offensively. But oh, the Timberwolves, they ways they to believe go. in their guy. Twenty three, twenty three to go. Oh, in your face. I think oh. I think he's got a lot of upside on offense. Watch this. But this is a guy. Oh, oh. 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 Oh, 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 watch, We're getting watch, a Jaden McDaniel introduction. Let it Look roll. Oh, Look this guy's a Pacers. So I don't oh, like this. Hey, this is good for Jaden. Oh, no. I like this. Come on. Come on. Oh, Look at this. Oh, 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 oh. Hell yeah. The guy's breaking backboards. That's why you get $136 million. Call him. Oh. Oh. When the go. Timberwolves talk deals with the Blazers about Dame Lillard, oh. with San Antonio about DeJounte Murray last year, those two teams, they asked for Jaden McDaniels. Yeah. They asked for draft oh. picks. So, so this is a guy that is valued, and and I will say this: Minnesota, which is is this, you know, not not New York, not Chicago, not LA, not not a top market. Minnesota is going to be paying the luxury tax potentially 
uh, over the next year Hell or so. Yeah. For the first time in 20 years, they've put themselves in a position with Rudy Gobert, Colin Anthony Towns, um, Anthony. Anthony Edwards, now Jaden McDaniels. These are guys making hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars. Rudy Gobert, 200 million uh, on his deal. Colin Anthony Towns, max contract. Anthony Edwards just signed a 200 million dollar max contract, and now Jaden McDaniels, 136. So Minnesota is, is that a lot of money team? on this yeah, team. Yeah, that's a Rod's team. That is that is. So sh- shout out a Rod. Shout out Mark Laurie. They're they're. They're going all in, investing in this team right now. I do like that A-Rod's like, you remember when our Yankees teams were winning? You know why? Yeah. We just buy everybody. Exactly. That's what we need to do. That's what we're going to do. And they've done that in the NBA. I appreciate it. I don't know. I know Anthony Edwards. He's great thespian. Yeah, yeah, yeah great yeah, actor. He was in that Adam Sandler. He's a dog. Movie. Kermit Wilson. He is a dog. dog. Hey, I like the way you put a little bass in your voice talking there, too, because you're right. Anthony Edwards is an absolute dog. You can build a team around him. And in the U.S. training, right, this just got done, the USA stuff. I saw videos of him talking shit to people in oh, the yeah. scrimmages uh-huh. that were happening. Uh-huh. I love I love that you build a team around that guy. Okay, Rod. Yeah, my apologies, too. I did not realize Jaden McDaniels averages 12 points. Five rebounds and two assists. Thank you. That's on me. That that reeks of 130 million. And plays. Oh, he was being. You're such a. Oh, yeah. What's your right. deal? You're such a hater. Come I'm on. Not hating. I'm not hating at all. I'm just saying I didn't realize he averages 12 points, five rebounds, and two assists. He's only 23. That's going to be 20, 20, and 20 in five years. Boom. He's the third, two. fourth option on offense. Boom. Exactly. I mean, we got to pay that guy that much if he's the fourth option. Yeah, have to. If you want to win, <laughs> that's what everyone says. Duh. Tone has a question for you. He's talking about paying people. Yeah, Shams. What the fuck, dude? I was, I was. <laughs> I wanted to watch one big three this year, okay? And that was the Suns. And that was Kevin Durant, Bradley Bill, and Devin Booker. And two of them are hurt. What's that? Are they going to – are we going to see this Already? team together? Two, what is happening? Gee, Sean, De- come on. Yeah, so Kevin Durant's in. Devin Booker was questionable with the toe injury. I'm, he is in tonight. Okay. He will play tonight. Okay. Uh, yeah. The Suns said he is probable to go. Uh, Bradley Beal still officially listed questionable. I'm told it's unlikely he plays mm-hmm. tonight. He did have a workout in this morning. He is feeling better. He's got a back issue. Uh, he tweaked his back over the last several days. And and the Suns, they're trying to be safe with Brad Beal. It's a back injury. Throwing him out there tonight. Uh, he just got back into practice yesterday. Throwing him, him out there, kind of like the Warriors with Draymond Green. He's coming off an ankle injury. He just started back doing five-on-fives. The Warriors feel like he needs another several days, you know, over the next week or so, ramp up. Hopefully for Draymond Green return over the next week, uh, within this week. But – yeah, Bradley Beal right now, he is improving. So, you know, miracles could happen, maybe. Never say never. But uh, as of right now, he is he is more on the unlikely side uh, to suit up. The Suns are preparing as if he will not be in the lineup tonight. Okay. Uh, let's just, let's, so go ahead. We, we, we will see Bradley Beal soon, though. Okay, if it's not good. tonight, it's going to be Thursday or Saturday. Thursday they play the Lakers. Uh, Saturday at home, the home opener. You guys know about the gorilla yeah. out there in Phoenix. Ah. It could be, uh, you know, if, if he doesn't play today or Thursday, uh, l- look at Saturday uh, at home against Utah. Yeah, maybe the gorilla plays. Nice. Right, if anybody's Something injured. About, you know what I mean? Cool. They still be able to have that power trio if you f- uh, sub him. Let, hold on. This I need to know the answer to this. And this is an interesting thing because we learned of this guy late last year. And we should have known. I understand multiple-time MVP, but we're not like an NBA show. I learned of the greatness that is the Joker last year on the run through the playoffs that he had. We're talking no-look passes, setting picks, playing D, like just one of the smoothest, most hilarious styles of basketball that I think I've ever seen. He is a guy that was able to kind of handle things, old Joker. And when he came back this year for training camp as he goes court, Oh, look at that. Oops. I look mean, at just that. throwing oops in the All Star game in which he looks like he's trying. not even trying. Well, nobody is. It's the All Star game. But like, <laughs> yeah. He comes back and he's sitting on the sideline of practice and he's watching a video of horses and he's like trying to figure out which one to buy and he just seems so disinterested in basketball. He gives a press conference, whatever, when he walks in and he's just moping in there. It's as if he does hate the sport of basketball and that is how he. Is that the case? Is this just his personality? Is this every single year? And it, what is he just back at 100% night one, even though he's paid no attention to basketball offseason all the time? <laughs> Listen, you can't be that great. You can't be as, te- like as, as gifted. As, as, like his rhythm is always on point. His vision, the way he plays, the way he shoots. Like his shooting as well. His shooting has gotten better year after year. See these trick shots he makes? Listen. Maybe he's just got this like freak alien ability 
But, uh, you know, when I talk to people around Denver, I think there's a little bit of a sly laugh, a, sm- a sly smile. Like, this is a guy in, in Nikola Jokic. I think he's fun. I think he does care about other things outside of basketball. But this is a guy that, 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 that loves the game, clearly. And I do think winning is very important to him. And Ke- Calvin Booth, he's their second year now full-time general manager. And I remember when he first took over, his mantra to anyone, to everyone publicly, privately, is like, we need to exhaust this window with Nikola Jokic. This guy is special. He's one of one. He's like Tim Duncan. He's like Steph Curry. He's one of these generational guys that hopefully we we have him for the next you know, 15, 20 years because he doesn't want to play anywhere else. He doesn't care about anything else. He doesn't care about media. He doesn't care about any coverage. He just wants to go out there and be a great leader. And hoop. He has no opinion on his coaches. He has no opinion. He just wants to win. He wants to hoop. Wants to spend his family time with 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 his with his with his, with his wife, his girl, with his with his daughter, with his Horse. kids. Like mm-hmm. that's what he cares about. With his horses, that's what he cares about. And I do think Nikola Jokic. Uh, this is this is a guy that's incredibly talented. So you 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 can't be that good without giving. Uh, you know what? I I completely concur with that because of how talented he is. But this is my first time really experiencing this. And then I think. One of the greatest things was when he was told when the parade was happening. Mm-hmm. Like, you finally, first time ever win a championship. <laughs> and then like, he got there and he was hammered. It, he was absolutely Which hammered. we love. We're happy about. But yeah. his immediate reaction when he was told that he had to stay an extra three days to do a parade, he's like, who tell horse? I got horse race. Who, what are we even doing? And then he's just gone. And then he comes back and it's like, I should expect him to play like the way he played in the playoffs all year. I, that he's must watch television all year. 100%. I mean, this is a guy, Pat, he can literally average like 30, 15, and 10 this season. Like, that's how town he is. Now, will he? Million, I, 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 I do think Jamal Murray is a guy, guys. Pay attention to Jamal Murray. He, he tore his ACL a couple years ago. He missed the full season. But last year in the playoffs, he used the whole regular season to, to ramp up, get, it, get his game right, get refined. He, took, he takes his game to another level every playoff run. I think his, his splits are like 17 in the regular season points per game to like 25 in the playoffs. He's, he's, a, he's a star, and I think the, the Nuggets are preparing for him to have an all-NBA season, give him a super max next summer. So Nikola Jokic is great. Keep an eye on Jamal Murray as well. Jamal Murray looks super cool at the ESPYs. Yeah. Go ahead, AJ. Super cool. Shams, are there any uh, sleeper teams out there that maybe some casual fans may be sleeping on? Oh, sleeping. Snooze it. Yeah, I, I, listen, I, I think in the Eastern Conference, just because in the West, you can name a bunch of teams, right? Lakers, Clippers, Nuggets, Warriors, Suns. I mean, that's five teams right there, right? But when you look out East, you really only think about uh, you think about the Celtics and you think about the Bucks, And then there's kind of a, a, a trickle off. Fucking right. Philly, I mean, with this James Harden situation, that's kind of throwing their whole season. Mm. What is that situation? Yeah, is he gonna, what is showing that situation? Up or what? He he has not Pat. He has not been around the team. He has not been present at any team activities. It's always not happens, anywhere in sight mm-hmm. for the last ten days. He's literally been away from the team, well. and there's there's literally the team has no idea. I don't think James Harden knows kind of next steps right now. He's tending to you know he sold the team. He has he's a personal issue that he's dealing with. So the the, the team has excused him <laughs> okay. uh, for now. Okay. But Makes he, he 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 he. There's no idea. I, I don't think the Sixers know if and when he will be there. I think at this point, though, I think it's it, it, it appears unlikely he would play on Thursday. Now, does he show up? We'll see. But, uh, you know, he hasn't played in – he hasn't done anything competitively around the team in 10 days. And, Pat, he joined the team in, in, in practice for practice, uh, I believe it was October 5th. You know, that first week of October, it was that Wednesday. So about four weeks ago, he joined that team. And he's done one five-on-five scrimmage with the team since joining the team. That doesn't sound like a guy that's playing anything. How'd he do? Shamsi put him up? Was he just step out? I, I heard I heard James Harden dominated that practice. Oh. I heard he had some nice passes to Joel Embiid. I heard oh. he made some catch-and-shoot threes. He was – I remember that practice. It was – never forget it. It's off memory. October 7th, right after practice, I got about three, four messages. James Harden killed practice. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> th- that was the reaction. Wow. and. I think there was such a buildup around that organization from the coaches to the players. Like, yo, if James Harden looks like this, we have a shot. And then he hasn't done much since. Well, he's ordered bottles and mm-hmm. done some other stuff. It's certainly been a loud off season for old James Harden. Connor has a question for you, Shams. Yeah, Shams, uh, real quick. You keep saying Jokic. You're the only guy I have heard say Jokic's name without saying Jokic. Are we saying it wrong? And is it Jokic? 
I, I, might, I might be saying you're wrong. Oh, Yoke no, Shams. No, no. You're not. We can't be the ones That's correcting you. Yeah, that, j- Yo- Yoke you work for Yoke the athletic. Yoke. Whoa. You, we can't be correcting you on stuff. That ain't how this goes. Not the athletic. <laughs> Jokic. Yeah, there Jokic. it is. Yeah, I, like Donkic. Yeah, like do we, we do do we do we have can, can we pull it up? I yeah, mean, can we, can we from who, who do you trust? Like, yeah. what which, which announcer should we pull up saying yeah. his name? Mike Breen says Jokic. Just throwing that out there. Trust that. Boom. I, I, I'll, 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 I'll I'll always ride with Mike Breen. I'll always ride with Mike Breen. But but AJ, uh, I think I was supposed to answer your question. Well, I would look at the Cavs. I'm very curious of how. The, see, you see how this comes to me late. I'm really curious how the Cavs season goes this year. Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, Evan Mobley. Hopefully Evan Mobley takes the next step this year. I think he has defensive player of the year ability. Uh, So I I think that's the sleeper team I got my eye on. And Atlanta. I think Atlanta will be a lot better this year with Quinn Snyder. Are you getting the proper pronunciation? Yeah, we have it up on the screen. We're trying to connect it. It's Jokic. It's Jokic. 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 I look like Jokic. 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 Nikola we, Jokic. We can't be correcting you, though. That can't happen. That can't become a normal. And also, Pacers. The Pacers are the team you need to look out for. I, yeah, good sleeper. Yeah, I, you, you need to watch it. TJ McConnell grew six inches. Yep, mm-hmm. he did actually. Big son What's your good. intel on him? He, wow. he's, he's, he's 6'10 now? Yeah, yep. he's a he's Pittsburgh six, guy. He's 6'9? Yeah, yeah. 6'10. Mm-hmm. Just, he's about to dominate yeah. every arena he walks into. People are forgetting about that. Yeah, he's a real Wemby now. Yeah, speaking of, what... Ooh. Hey, What's Connor the, has a question for you. Yeah, let's deal with this alien, Shams. I mean, there's a photo of him covering, like, an assistant who is just a normal six-foot dude, and Wemby looks like a freak of nature because of how much bigger and how his dimensions are. Are, are they going to be incredible right away with Pop and Wemby running the show, or what should our expectations be for Wembanyama this season? I, I think the expectations for Victor Wembanyama should be very high. Hopefully I got that one right. Victor Wembanyama. Nailed it. Nailed hey, it. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Hey, Sean, back. Redeem, I, redeem myself. Redeem myself. He's back. I, I think the the one thing when I talk to people on San Antonio, the thing with Victor Wembanyama that's so impressive is his focus level, right? Like he's so young, a rookie. The fanfare he's gotten, the hype, the expectations. You would think some of that is getting to him. You would think that he might change his approach. Like, but a guy like that, so focused, he only refined his body, his game, his mindset. He gained 7 to 10 pounds of muscle Ooh. this offseason. And so just think about that. He's only going wow. into year one. I think he, I think he's only going to keep – that's what I'm curious about Victor Romaniyama is how does his body – how does he keep getting muscle? Because that – like we saw Giannis when he first yeah. came in the league and how he looks now. Like Giannis bulked up. Now he's he's a bully in the paint. How does Victor Romaniyama fare as his career goes on? But I think his focus level is special. I think he'll be special right off the bat. But the Spurs – this is not a veteran-laden team. I, I don't think this is a team that's playing for home court advantage or playing for a shoe-in for the playoffs. But listen, if they mess around, get to the play-in tournament, like I, I don't see that being out of the realm just because of how great and special Victor Wembanyama. We go back to the NBA draft. Everybody was talking about Wemby, like even like LeBron, I think, and like uh, oh, yeah. a lot of NBA guys were like, yeah, Giannis was singing his praises very loud. He's, have you heard about this kid from France, pretty much, they're talking about? They're like, he's a game changer, like completely different. We've been seeing some preseason clips of him. Ooh. Everything they're saying and everything he was doing against in Europe and everything like that, he's been doing in the NBA. Is he, is this going to be in the regular season? How big of a difference is it from the preseason shit that I'm watching versus what the regular season looks like? Because in these preseason clips, he's swatting. Yeah. He's in the paint there at the three, <laughs> and he's jumping and swatting it somehow, like palming it, and then driving the – shaking six through people legs. Throw, through somebody's <laughs> legs off the backboard and dunking. It's like, is this guy in a fucking all-star game every single <laughs> night? Is this really what it, this is going to be like with this guy? It's literally like you just create like the ideal player to dominate in a video game. Whoa. And that's exactly that him. and that's exactly what Wemby is. Yeah, it was a call, but it's okay. He'll, they, they, they can wait. They can Who wait. was it? What was but, the news? What, what was it? Anything cool? What, 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 <laughs> you know. I'll let you know after. I, if, if there's something, I'll come on. I'll, 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 I'll let you guys know after. Hey, 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 Sean, it might be Sean. Make you wait. Okay. Okay. Anyway, it's a bad idea, but you bad business, but what do we know? <laughs> regular, regular season basketball, of course, is different. And, and, you know, on, on, I had uh, Lou Williams on, on my show uh, yesterday, actually, on Run It Back. Shameless plug. I'm sorry. No, great but show. But he made the point. Welcome back. He, he, he made the point. He made the point that, you know, in the regular season, someone is going to test him, right? Like, does a Pat Beverly test him? Like, there's mm-hmm. going to be a player. There's going to be a couple guys out there around the league, physic, like physical guys that are going to, 
verbally, physically go at him. And I think he's oh, going to be prepared awesome. for that. That, that Spurs are going to be prepared for that. Um, and, and so I, I am curious how once he's challenged physically, mentally, once there's some trash talk involved, you're, you're only going to get that in, in the heat of competition in the regular season. I love that. I love that the guys are watching him. So what, dude? He's seven what? Ain't going to be able to handle once I start chirping him. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're going to break him down. That's a hilarious, like, yeah, we got him, though. And what if he is? Because the way he talks about, like, the universe, yeah. and mm-hmm. I'm here. What if I he is set. just, like, this super deep-thinking anomaly? I'm excited to see it unfold because the highlights have lived up to the hype of what he was at the NBA draft mm-hmm. yeah. when none of us n- casuals had ever fucking heard. I had no idea. I'd never heard of him. And then all of a sudden, because I heard, I'd heard of Chet, right? Because Chet... You know, dressed like an asshole and was awesome. Mm-hmm. Played college, right? looks yeah. like an asshole. Yeah, but he's awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, uh-huh. do that whole thing. Yeah. So I'd heard of him. What? This Wemby guy, I'd not really heard of. And then they're like, yeah, greatest of all time, probably. And then now it's kind of happening. Can't wait to watch it. Is Zion playing? Zion is 100% ready to go. And we all, right. you know, I think the NBA world all wants him to be ready uh, to play a full season yes. and ready to go all season. But. Uh, the Pelicans have a lot of injury issues, though, overall. I mean, Jeez. this team doesn't going to be without Jose Alvarado, GTA, Grand Theft Alvarado. I don't know if you're familiar with him, Pat. 6'1", 6'2", guard, just absolute pest, hound. Sneaky. Steals the ball from footage. behind. You yeah, know, he's sneaky. got a – yeah, he just, he, he just hides in the corner, the just runs up and steals the ball from behind. GTA. He's out. Najee Marshall is out. Uh, Trey Murphy's out to start the season. So they're uh-huh. down three rotation players. But so Zion Winston, yeah. ready to go. One thing to keep an eye on, Pat, is how much he handles the ball, how much point forward he plays this season. Because before he got hurt last year and messes Hammy up, remember that Hammy injury came on a, on a play that he was coming up dribbling up the floor. He, he started to play more point forward, even though they have C.J. McCollum. So hopefully Zion can get back to that because I think he was playing his best basketball as a point forward. He came in. Oh, Look at that. My God. Everybody's talking that. about this guy's out of shape. This guy's out of shape. Well, how can oh. he do that then? How come we can't have him play all the time? Because it has been the fact that the Pelicans have kind of held him back, right? That's an accurate depiction. At, at different points, yes, and I think they, in, you know, in their in the medical staff's mind, and really a lot of people around that organization's mind, like they wanted to make sure that his conditioning was on point. Don't want to throw him out there when his conditioning or his basketball shape isn't up to par. Again, this is under their medical assessment. Zion knows there was a if point. he can play or not. Okay, Zion's well, been that way since he's twelve years old. Yeah. Okay, he knows what he can do and what he can't do. I'm play. excited to watch. Let him play and announce him last, too. Please. Come on, Donner. It's time. Come on, Zion. Let's go, Zion. Need you. We're on Zion's side. That dude's been paid over $100 million in basketball contracts. Oh, we yeah. still Couple. have yet to really yeah, experience. Yeah, the guy from the T-Wolves actually deserves it more, to be honest. Well said, Donny. Well, yeah. How, how many tickets that guy from the T-Wolves ever sell? You talking about Luca Garza? No. <laughs> We're talking about the guy who just got paid up there. Oh, yeah. Well, they should have paid Luca Garza with that because that's all I could think about when when Shams was talking about Wemba Miana and someone you know fucking talking shit and challenging him whoa, physically. Whoa, 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 whoa! Luka Pronunciation Garza. there. Whoa, whoa. I have a cold, Shams. All right, shut up. Get off my ass. All right. <laughs> Luca Garza would fucking eat Wemba Miana's lunch. <laughs> Period. Has Luca, they, has Luca played in the NBA? He's well, yeah, you know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In the preseason, the guy gets you know. Yeah, he had a good preseason. Yeah, oh, no he shit. Does. He does every year, and then they don't give him a fucking opportunity because they paid that goddamn Frenchman way too much money, who no one likes or respects. All these guys love Luca, and what's he gonna do? He's gonna have to fucking go back to Des Moines and play for the Des Moines Timberwolves, and he's gonna light the G League on fire, and he's still never gonna get a fucking opportunity. It's sick. There he is. John. Boom. Eaten. Easy bucket. <laughs> Give me that. Right. Oh, yeah. Smiling, smiling, having fun. Good teammate. Yeah. Team loves him. Yeah. yeah Has he played in the NBA, though? Just Double. the G yes. League. Oh, yeah. He no, played for the Pistons, he's, got he's dunked played, on like played, three plays a in a row. In a row, but he was sprinting up and down the court. He, he was. plays defense. Yeah, he's going to get flat backed every once in a while, okay? <laughs> That's fucking part of basketball. <laughs> what a pass there. <laughs> Two way oh, 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 on. He's doing his vision. thing. He's and, doing his thing. And he got under the bucket for the board. We fucking get a, a shot of him hitting the deep three here because he does that quite a bit as well. <laughs> Look at that. Look at the pick and roll game. Pick two guys. Oh, you board, board, board. Board. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 Eat some glass. 
Look at that. Oh. Back down to oh. Oh. That's actually Drops. pretty good. Oh. 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 That's actually pretty good, Sean. Yeah, no shit, Sean. <laughs> it's BP, too. Luca Garza. All right. Shams, we appreciate your time, buddy. Good luck this NBA season. You're going to crush it, pal. Thanks, fellas. Appreciate y'all. Yo- Thank you. Hey, it's a long one. Love you. Appreciate it's a, you. Love hey, you, it's Sean. a long one, huh? The season long. You're on right now for the next six months. We're going to be on every day, every day. Four day, you know, four, shows four days a week, but I'm, I'm five days, you know, seven days a week. There it is. Eight. We're ready. We're ready. <laughs> Eight days a week. I like maybe what? nine. Eight cups of coffee, you know, hey, nine yeah. days a week. What? What? Maybe, what? Days a week. maybe 10 days a week. What? 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 Ladies and gentlemen, Sham Sharani. Yeah, Shams. Sham, 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 Sham. What you guys do to him is not right. What do you mean, yeah, you guys? Ty, you, you got a little heated with old Sham Sharani oh, there. Well, he's just a nice guy. Had to. You know, Shams good boy. He is a good, good boy. boy. Hey, he's we've seen him a long way. Oh, like, yeah. Legitimately. Oh, yeah. Nice. Very beginning. He was the nicest. He'd come on our show and we knew fucking nothing really about basketball, obviously. No Back connections. Then, yeah. Back mm-hmm. then, yeah. And we're like, Shams, can you just just tell us basketball? And he would. And then he started breaking news. Uh-huh. And he started it was after climbing. that COVID game. It was the first time he's been on. Yeah, the Utah. Because yeah. we were so flustered because they were like, everybody remain calm, okay, not a big deal, but game's been canceled, get the hell out of here, save your life. And he nope. goes, ah! oh, That no. was the first time that we learned of the COVID situation happening in the United States of America. Yeah. And then Rudy Gobert. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fingers go bare. Mm-hmm. Shortly afterwards, he goes, ooh, ooh oh, yeah. you, you scared? Yeah, he was the and first one. It was like, yeah, world scared. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to shut it down, actually. Yeah, it's gave, not just that Utah game. Gave all of them COVID. And then what I think, March Madness got yeah. delayed, yep. mm-hmm. not canceled. Right. And then every other sport just kind of followed suit immediately. Mm-hmm. Boom, we're down, we're down, we're down, we're down. Except for Australian Football League. Yep. Aussie Rules Football played for like three days after everything stopped. Congrats on championship, by the way. Yeah, Collingwood. Magpies, American one. Good work. Uh, hey, Coxilla, way to go, pal. Congrats, brother. I got up to watch the, the grand final, you know, that happened there at the uh, the Sydney. Uh, the Proving Grounds. Yeah. The, uh, Opera House. We got the Opera House. No. No, no. stop uh, mocking the Magpies, please. I'm, we flew to sales, pal. You didn't. Okay. I'm a St. Kilda guy. You know that. That's yeah, St. Kilda sucked this year. They were just terrible. They're, they're due. terrible. They're you're, due. You're a Richmond, you ass hat. Yeah, you run four teams. If you do recall, you had no loyalty to anybody in that island, and that's why they'll never respect you over there. You know? I was almost off the Collingwood Magpies there for a bit, too, because there was some real salacious shit coming out. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. That team got real testy. Well, there's a lot of things that happen, I guess, in Aussie Rules football. It is football at the end of the day, but yeah. the Collingwood Magpies have won. They have the only American that's ever won. Mm-hmm. His name's Mason Cox. Coxilla. Yep. Congrats to Coxilla. Way to go, Mace. For you Americans that have no idea what Aussie Rules football is, we didn't know either. And then it was the only sport left playing, and we learned about it quickly because we watched it. We had to stay up till like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. to watch these games mm-hmm. because then we would have a sports show the next day, and it was the only sport that was on. So they would at least give us like 30, 45 minutes of sports talk and a little competitive juices. It's a great sport. Awesome. Yeah. It is. It's vastly different than rugby. It is a high flying sport. There's a lot of punting involved, which mm-hmm. I love. It also makes a lot of sense why a lot of Australians have come over to American football and taken very quickly to punting footballs. But they got some oh, heavy yeah. collisions. Oh, yeah. Time. And a lot of running and shaking. It's a good sport. Loved it. And we have an American that's champion over there. Yeah. Those guys kill each other, like legit. Yeah. It's like old, it's like a hockey mentality almost. Yeah. Like they've, I think there's fights. They hit each other very hard, not a lot of pads. And then afterwards, it's like, let's go have a pint. Let's, you know, go, get let's go get hammered. Yeah. Mason Cox has a full Australian accent now. Yeah, he does. I haven't talked to him in a couple of years on the program. But he uh, was talking afterwards, and they were chanting USA over there for him. And he just started dropping, like, a full Aussie accent. It was like, how could you not? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great accent, great sport, great time. Congrats, Coxzilla. Congrats. Congrats. You go, Mason. Congrats to you too, AJ. This has been a great Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. You know what I mean? We talked hockey. We what? talked basketball. What? We talked football. What? We talked to Aaron. What? We talked a little presidency. What? what a show. Not bad. Yeah, Harrison Smith was great too. I got to watch that. Nope. Guys are stud up. Man. Why am I always forgetting about that? That's on me. That was a long time ago. That was so long. It was. Great conversation. It was. He came fresh out of a massage. His hair was still oiled up. You see that? He got a nice head scalp massage. Looked great. Oh, yeah. I saw that, sounds pretty nice, huh? So nice. Especially really. when you're the hitman, you're throwing that helmet around. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, massage the head. Like the penises. Darius, you want to do a... Uh, going head-to-head, yeah. Yeah, well, he said that's what he was aiming for, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Why are you trying to sneak in uh, things on uh, today on with Stephen A. and Unk? You said, and then that, that option. 
D, you got that good D, and you try to throw in the D when they had just had A, B, and C, and you try to keep throwing in the D. <laughs> well, I was talking about Team D because, I mean, if we're going to ipso facto this thing, he said, well, if you're Team A and you beat Team C and Team B lost to Team C, then ipso facto you beat Team B as well as beating Team C. And I just want to say – Team D's coming in there yeah. to kind of disrupt everything you got going on anyways, mm -hmm. you know, just to further the point. That's what I was trying to do. What are yeah. you? I did, I'm shocked that Molly or one of them didn't jump on that and continue the conversation. You're right. What if we do throw in Team D? And so, yeah, they moved on to the next section. Well, then Team E, would might, then I would have to roll True. in exactly. Team E. Yeah. And then you I don't even, know if you would have got to E. You probably wouldn't have got that far. That's what was A, B, C, D, E would be the next one, you see. You're right, correct. You're right. I stand corrected. I didn't know we're going backwards. Z-Y-X-W-V-U-T-S-R-Q-P-O-N-M-L-K-J-F. Oh, no. When did you learn that? Well, in high school, I was told by the older people in our school that if the cops show up at a party, they will ask you to recite mm -hmm. the alphabet backwards. And if you're able to do it, they'll let you go. If not, you're getting an underage. So I'll tell you what, when I was about 14, 13 years old, I had that thing memorized. And that's the first time I've done it in a few years. I'd be done. I can't yeah. do that over. So. Sorry, yeah. I don't even want to start. I don't even want to start yeah. to try to figure that even, out. It's a nice party trick, though. There's yeah. a gun to my head. I wouldn't be able to do it sober. So, well, I think you did. That's usually what gets people in the DUI. They ask them to do it. And they said, well, "I couldn't even do this sober." And like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> DUI. There you go. They gave me full DUI test for walking down the street one morning. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I failed all of them. I guess they were right. Ooh. Bullshit. What are you going to do? <laughs> you know what I mean? They're right. <laughs> I guess they were right. Now, the story they made up was not, but I'll tell you, that was a real changing point in my life. Darius, you want to change some lives today, D-Butt? Let's do it. D-Butt, what do you want to do? You know, we've done the putting. It was not good. No, yeah. don't do the putting. It was oh, not good. No, I'd like to see it make it. Don't Back do the to putting. Back to the putting. Oh, yeah. Come on, it's yeah. basketball yeah. season. Basketball. 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 He's not scared. He's not scared. Basketball, He's not scared. basketball starts How about today. something hockey? We can make a hockey He's thing. Yeah, it's a few slap shots. Yeah, into the net. Yeah, any of it. Someone give him one-timers? Can Bill send some one-timers his way? Bill, put on goalie equipment. We'll, yeah. Uh, you know, there's I a lot of things we can do. Bill? I'd be embarrassed. Basketball starts, What do you want to do, DB? Button. All right. Okay. This is so dumb. Yes. Go for the left one, though. Don't go for that right hole. That breaks both ways. I like that idea. Yeah, okay. Now we're talking about a new game plan. Yeah, you yeah. you still got diagonal. Here. Stand in the same spot, but putt diagonal towards oh, the left. Longer putt. Ten that footer. One? All right. I like yeah, that. Yeah, that. He's got smart. it. You know, because uh, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Yeah, but let's uh, not even talk about D coming in there. No. You know what I mean? Oh, A squared. Don't want that good D in there. How about that? A couple oh, of alphabet we... things going on here? What is this deep show? Alphabet yeah. Pythagorean theorem. I mean, <laughs> fuck <laughs> I yeah, dude. What are you, you thinking here, D-Bot? This, this be... Oh, let me get it right in the heart. No. Practice. In the heart. That's not how Practice. it works. That's not how it works, pal. I've never shot at this hole before. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dude. We know you have. Okay, we know you've been out here trying to do your thing. We know you've been up there. We know you've been out there. Mm -hmm. We know Butler Birdies is thriving. You're actually on the other side of the ropes at a live event. Yeah. yeah. This dude was actual that, golf hey. media. That Shaking awesome. hands with the shark. I saw that. that. Was awesome. You were talking to the shark and Brooks Kepka, is that right? Yeah. Shark was a dog. Brooks was cool as shit. Got to meet wow. a bunch of the guys. Walked the walk first six holes with uh, Phil. Phil and DJ. That's Phil. Phil's calves. You bet, it. You bet oh, with him? Yeah, Phil's got right. huge calves. Were you telling him, like, hey, you're going to bring out your driver here in the rough, hit it around this sign, and keep it in the fairway? If you don't, you owe me $2 million. Nah. <laughs> My brother was giving him some. Hey. Pull out a three wood. Oh, a little motivator. Yeah, that's awesome. Phil Mickelson will play to the crowd. He will. Oh, yeah. From oh, what I've been told. Is that big, Mitch? Nah, little brother Denzel. Oh. Denzel. Yeah. Hey, Butler Birdie's getting a chance to affect a golf tournament. It's beautiful. Now you have a chance to affect twenty-five people's. Here you go. Thirty people's lives. Wow. <laughs> if you yeah. could go. Look at those shoes. <laughs> three of seven. Oh. Three. Four uh, of seven. Four. Three <laughs> of seven. Now you're going the other way. Hold on. We're going to make sure we get the, the rules clear here, D. Okay. But staying on the same hole that he went two of 16. 14. Yeah, 14. <laughs> okay, whatever the case. <laughs> two, okay, it's a new realm. Two, two of vacuum, 14. Right? I agree. You learn from your mistakes. You never waste a, a loss. You never waste Whoa, a exactly. learn. Okay, capability gap is closing every single day. If you can go four of seven here. <laughs> Three of seven here. Yeah, there you go. There we, go. we will give 30 people $500 who retweet 30? this post 30. and say something nice. Just a quick 15K. Okay. That's all. You want to get it any closer, D Bud? Last week was a nine foot putt. This week is a seven foot putt. Will that help him? We shall see. No. Has been to a live golf event since the last time he putted. 
Does have Butler birdies. He goes. Oh, 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 oh nice. Wow. Atta boy. One for that. one. Golf gods. Move a little closer, That's butts. Right. If you can All go the two What's of your the two next problem? six. Yeah. I respect the red tees from Butler. What if he makes seven out of seven? <laughs> then what? He's going to make them all. <laughs> Might be the red tees, but nonetheless, it's one for one. If he goes seven of seven, AJ. Oh, he didn't. Oh, he got right. It hit the ball that was already in the cup. No, well, that's what's going to happen whenever you're putting from so Connor? close. Open your eyes. DJ B is, is just that, locked Is that far in. enough for you, Connor? Absolutely, DJ B. All right. Oh, he's standing on the hole. Butler birdies, DJ B. Can't help. Has to go two of his next five for 30 people to win $500. Oh, oh. swing and a his backswing. <laughs> you know who did. That was Tone Diggs with a oh, no, no, little no. mouth fart. No, that would be a that, that con. Went be a that con went in. That was Tone Only Diggs. bounced off because the ball yeah. is a classic. Always works. I've never yeah. seen that one done before. <laughs> Which one? Take the ball out? Yeah. No, nah, because it, it, it just rolled. It hit the ball, if, man. If we had a replay, uh, we would see. I think twice yeah, it happened. rolled off that. So, yeah. which I, I, so I appreciate the move. He's, he's, made the, he's made the first three pretty much. Well, yeah, pretty basically. Good pick. That's a good. Oh, Ooh. no chance to bounce in and out there. Confident stroke, though. Has to go two of the next three here. Seems like it's something that could happen with the way he's been putting today. You got this. Darius J. Butler! Man, that oh, thing's just turning left. Rimjaw. That thing's turning left. Hey, yeah, ball Michael over. Have the record still. Hey, Rimjaw. Hey, Butch. All right, hey. D. Butch got to go two for two here for 30 people to win $500. Has powered through a couple. Bummer. Nah, and he doesn't bummer. even give himself a shot there at the end. Oh, no. I don't know why this was the chosen activity <sighs> for another week, but I do appreciate the fact that he said, oh, here's something that I'm not great at. I'm going to stare it down once again. Mm -hmm. You could conquer this thing, D butt. Not today, though. Yeah. Not today. Boy, oh, boy. That happens. Not today. Tough day. Basketball. Hey. It's all right. Basketball. Golf's going to get us all someday. I, I saw a DJ miss a few. Exactly. There you go. There you go. Exactly. You go. Don't lose your confidence. I think you should do that again next week and the week yep. after. Yeah. Yep. How many more weeks we got? Tim? Who's your favorite live team, D butt? Uh, um. <laughs> the high flyers or. Bro make Brooks Zombies. Cool, so smash, aces. smash is cool. Smash GC. Four aces. Smash GC, yeah. Four, I, I, honestly, I like DJ. I like I like how he plays. I like the speed, yeah. his pace. DJ's I like his, his personality. Yeah, he's got moxie. He's got it's like a quarterback out there. Like a you know, one of those. he doesn't and seem to overthink it. Too. Yeah, yeah. And his walk is cool. Yeah, yeah. he's got a great mm -hmm. gate. Pre beard, not Moses. great. Beard, great. Yes, he the, really he wants saunters. To I yeah. think Bill didn't feel so he saunters up the fairway. Yeah, he looks super cool whenever he walks. Yeah. And then he remember he was the first guy that was going real long. Mm -hmm. It was like uh now everybody yeah. seemingly goes real long. Oh yeah. And I know Phil Mickelson had his run about hitting bombs and seeds yeah. and everything like mm -hmm. that. Delicious. But DJ was going like 365, 370 when nobody else was really doing that. She looks effortless. He dude. was making courses real small there for a bit, and then everybody else seemed to catch up. Am I is that an accurate reading of golf? Hundred percent. He used to hit a draw and he would hit it even further, but when he got really good, he just switched to a fade and it was so easy for him, and that's when he started winning all the majors. Yeah, he's a dog. And he got really uh paid. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it. I believe there was a quote Brooks Kepka said to somebody where he said, uh, yeah, man, this could all end tomorrow. I don't come from much, so, like, yeah, I took the massive payday. Mm -hmm. And it's like we watched that swing time or uh, yeah, full swing, yep. full swing uh, show on Netflix. It's, like, very understandable why Brooks Kepka took a multiple $100 million deal yeah. at the time in which he did. I Still tough to watch. I don't, I don't find myself yeah. watching it as I haven't much. figured that no, out yet, have they? No, they haven't. No, the, they got cool dudes, but I'm not going to watch it. Cool dudes, cool concept. Maybe, Maybe they need to go middle yeah. of the week. Maybe, the Maybe they need to go like prime time. Yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday would be sweet. Maybe middle of the week, That'd prime be awesome. time. Maybe. Because they can put lights. They got enough money. They can put lights on pretty much. Mm -hmm. They can set up courses with mm -hmm. lights. They need to figure something out. Tiger's yeah. League is going to be on Tuesday now, though. Oh, that's going to be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Tiger. I thought Lord. it was Monday. No. Let's see how that goes. I think it's the Tuesday after the Super Bowl. Or. I, I thought it was the Monday after Monday, Monday after Night Super Football Bowl. is over. So I might be wrong. You should, should, no, you're probably right. That shoot, one, shoot. They're <laughs> driving into a simulator, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. To get and then they go place yes. wherever yep. they are yep. on that particular hole yep. inside a massive warehouse. Yes. Yep. And there's going to be live audience. Yep. And it should be a pretty relatively quick thing that has the chance to have some sick chip ins, mm -hmm. yeah. some great putts, some good moments. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think moment. it's a good idea. It's like top golf for actual golf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how far though? How far can they are, do they are they capable of hitting indoors after they drive into the screen? I think they're making. I think it's going to be massive it's I, huge i found my i don't know how one ended up 
in my uh, email, but like somebody sent me one about getting a team in this whole thing and like the whole idea of what it is. And like the warehouse drawing in the pitch deck of it, oh. massive. I mean, it, it looked okay. like it was very, like so I think you're going to be able to get like 100, 75 yard, 100 yard shots almost in there. You know what I mean? Like they're going to have to hit low liners. They got pretty high ceilings. That are just like, have you seen these like Amazon warehouses that just get built? Massive. Oh, yeah. they're everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, just you're get right. built like out of nowhere. Right. It's like, those have giant, you're right. Those have giant ceilings because they, who know? Yeah. Right, you're, okay. So I don't know if it's, I don't know what it will actually be, you know, like the bison out front of the Buffalo Bill Stadium. Yep. Mm -hmm. But I will. It, the thing that I saw, it looked like there's actual shots, like actual second shots coming. You know what I mean in there? So it's like I'll watch the first one for sure. Yeah, and if Tiger's mm -hmm. able to golf, it's like he doesn't have to Man. walk. And he's he just talking as, as far. He just goes over here. He's mic'd up. You're seeing him still be able to do his shit, like chip ins, mm -hmm. and he'll be able to. We just we need them. Runs. We need the players, like because a lot of it's going to bank on the back and forth between all the players. Yeah. So we need them to really bring it, to bring the juice. You know, maybe you – nah, there's not enough. Like, maybe you team them up with a, a human, like a personality or, like, somebody else, and then it's always, like, Tiger and dude or lady versus Rory and dude and lady. So then there is some sort of banter potentially that could happen. I don't know. Because some of those uh, matches have yeah. been pretty – they're Pretty tough. Boring. Yeah, yeah, very. Because whenever they're golfing, it's like yeah, they're golfing. They're like locked in. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't. I don't. They usually go back and forth and talk because I didn't see them talking to each other at all. No. In co in actual competition, yeah. I don't no, think so. Not really. No. Super locked. That's in. why the that's why the Netflix show is tough at times because like the guys are so dialed in doing their thing, and they're not really like there's not that cool banter and making fun of each other and stuff we we're used to. But that's what happened at Tahoe. I need to stop talking. You need to stop talking. <laughs> oh. Stop talking. To me. You're right. A couple of times, and we're waiting for 72 minutes to hit a shot because the whiz is, is hurt three <laughs> fairways back. The whiz. Yeah. <laughs> the whiz. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, I accidentally shit. said that to him, and he was so distraught. What did you just call me? The whiz. I got a buddy that we call whiz, so. I'm face. Kefilia? I'm FaceTiming a Miz. Khalifa? What's, what's, no. what's, what's Hockey Miz, player. What's Miz Khalifa got going on? <laughs> Something awesome. <laughs> Probably losing a match. He'll answer. Yeah. Golf's all day every Breaking golf clubs. He might be in an airport. He's going to win Tahoe next year. Well. If he gets that six iron figured out, he told me and Pat about. Is he? Oh, my God. My eight he iron, good. Seven, good. Nine, flawless. <clears throat> my wedges, I'm even hitting them good. This six iron, though, I just can't. I just can't. He figure it out. He went to the range after the round and said he finally figured out for like 200 <laughs> balls. Like, oh, did you? His one, his one six iron. Lunatic. What's your That's favorite club? That's the only club? issue he had, though. What's the only that? issue he had. It's my favorite club? Yeah, I know you're talking about the two at uh, two. Deuce. Two wood, you're talking yeah. about yeah. Deuce. What's your mm -hmm. favorite? Two, two wood might be my favorite club, to be honest with you. It has the biggest. That Deuce thing is awesome. Yeah. I was starting to use I should have used that more. Through. All reliable. It is. It really did. I think that's. The Deuce is my favorite club. I think that's what I'm going to say. Unduffable? The unduffable was a lie. Um, <laughs> unduffable was a lie. You can duff with that thing if you. What? Yeah, it's crazy. You, can really, you just drop your shoulder just a little bit. That fucker goes right into the ground, and then you're fucked. You're duffed. That's the way it goes. What I've realized is golf is going to be impossible. You know, but I got how many years until you owe me twenty million for me to make what top fifty at a championship? What was, what was it? What would we say by the time you're sixty-five? Yep, sixty-five. So I got twenty-nine years. But plenty of time to figure it out. That's numerous lifetimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't you want to extend it to 70? We can go to 70 if you want. You're an athlete, too. You got time. I do. Yeah, You're right, D-Butt. Yeah. You are. Extended to 70. Athlete. Yeah, I would like a five-year extension. Same price, though. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have to move down to Texas and train with old Tony Romo every day now. That's the only way you can get there. That'd be sweet. I do like that Tony Romo has committed his entire being to being a golfer, and then he shows up at Tahoe and uh, – him and Steph Curry battle it out on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah. he's a golfer. How about Steph rolling that fucker into win for an eagle? Oh, man. I That's mean, it. they killed Fish. Fish Wait, would what? have been rolling in for eagle, too. Uh, so someone yelled in his backswing on the 18th tee shot, right? Yeah, yes. and somebody was a bit boozed up, yeah, and just, yeah. You know, because that area on the 18th, where your oh, team's yeah, rowdy. rowdy. Yeah, who knows rowdy. what they were looking at. That's a very rowdy area there. I mean, that is man. real deal. Man, you're going to do so well in that next year. AJ. So are you, man. You're going to win. Mm. Hey, we know we're going to go through the roller coaster of emotions and how we feel about playing next year here from now, what is it, October 24th until July 7th or whenever it happens. So I look forward to watching your progression and then 
you know, we'll be out there on the first team wreck. I thought I thought I wasn't coming. I thought I wasn't supposed to come to this. I um. And then you're gonna have like you're gonna start out eagle eagle birdie, but yeah, I was always coming. Well, and then it will get the whole eleven or whatever, and I'll be like, oh man, I forgot I have not played eighteen holes of golf since last year at this tournament. Yep. Mm-hmm. And this is a lot of golf. This is a lot of golf. But I will say, it's never the the tournament is awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it is an awesome setup. It's a cool thing. It's a great vibe. Tahoe is beautiful. I'm just not built for it. That's what I'm realizing. <laughs> Every year it's something. Last year it was the back of my feet. This mm-hmm. time it was all of my toes were bruised mm-hmm. and I couldn't walk. That's a, quite a deficit when you're golfing and having to walk 18 holes every single day for four straight days and you don't do it any other time in your life. Does Hoka make golf shoes? That's what I need. I need to do something. I need maybe, to, yeah, maybe the Jags are not. Awesome. Yeah, those are cool yeah. looking golf shoes. Yeah, yeah they, they look sweet. Cool you have to looking. get taller clubs though if you get those Hokas on. Yeah. Yeah, you have to use JJ Watts clubs. That was stupid. You remember? I mean, his clubs were actual hockey sticks. Yeah. yeah. He's so. Yeah, it's like fu- nine iron was above my head when I we put it on the ground. He's so fucking big. People forget that, I think, because it's like you, for instance. We don't talk about it enough how you're just an absolute weapon. And we watched his Ohio State highlights last week. Sick. Cannot wait to go to Utah. Hey, let's go, Utah. 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 I've heard yeah. some great things about going to Utah on this particular Friday. We even got a tweet from uh, the Utah Athletics saying, oh, yeah. welcome to town. It's going to be beautiful whenever you get here. It's like, thank you, let's Utah go. Athletics. I had one of the players said, Brother McAfee, due to our Latter-day Saints <laughs> uh, speech, welcome back home. We cannot wait to get out there. Long flight, I do believe. It's going to take a little bit to get there. But whenever we're as far at as Seattle. What's that? Nope. Not as far as Seattle. Though. We know Seattle was the, you know, as long as it's not as far as Seattle, you're good, right? Seattle was so far. Far. So far. It was beautiful up there, though. It didn't rain. Yeah. Uh, it did rain. Utah looks beautiful. Lo- lo- looks very beautiful. We're in, what Utah Boulder looks. was gorgeous. Yeah, yep. mm-hmm. it's like right. It's similar topography, no. I believe. Salt Lake is sweet. I've been out there. It's sweet. Looks. You a skier? Nope, not at all. But uh, I did like. Uh, I worked at a Utah game years ago as like a, an audition. Me and another guy, we did like a booth below everybody, and they filmed it, and we did it like we were doing a game, but it was just for like the execs or whatever. How was it? Did you do pretty good. You called great game. Oh. I'm sure it was awful. No joke. I bet it was. We were out. We were. We weren't outside, but we were out in the elements, and it was cold and rainy, and we were like shivering and dying. We had no clue. It was. Uh, it was a great learning experience, though. Which network? You don't have to say it, but it was for. Uh, it was for Fox. It was FS1, I think. Okay, so you had nice. Is this during the season? This is after you retired. When was the audition thing? Like as soon as I got done, because actually my brother-in-law Brady was doing the game for real on TV, like the floor above me. Oh. Mm. Classic nepotism. Of course. Classic TV nepotism. Right, getting an opportunity. Yep. Yep. Well, we're thankful yep. it went however it went because now we get a chance to enjoy your uh, toxicity every day. And there also, we get to revisit. You were a fucking wet. Do you ever remind yourself of what the – like your kids were there. They they got to see you, I hope, what you used to – this dude was a menace on the football field. Yes, he yeah. was. Bro, abs- oh. absolute dog out Crazy. there, bro. Wait, they say I, six, I seven pick sixes? Yeah. Yeah. That's real? Yeah. No, Pat said that. That's not real. Oh. <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> Fifth all time. Seven interceptions. Yeah. Oh, okay. Seven interceptions. Seven. I'm like, oh, shit. I said pick sixes. I'll just make it sound a little better. Who's going to get you? Hey, that sounded hey. a lot better. That's crazy. But I think you did have like hey, it's there, yeah. two or three. Yeah. How many did you have? Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe one. I think my freshman year, maybe it was the only pick six I had. I scored on a block punt my last my senior day. Yeah, it was Kent State freshman year. Yeah. And then here's his uh, NFL highlights. But, you know, d but. But D but uh, knows my kids got to take a picture with Marv Marv Harrison Jr. That is all that matters. Oh like, yeah, I'm the best dad, the best dad on the planet now. Hey Marv, this is with a cast on, right? No, 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 no. cast one. No, is later. Ben. No, it's later in this highlight reel. Me you doing you always spat Ooh. it up. Yeah, PK Subban over there. Uh, yes, highlight. I did. I got one. Well, I had spat it from the jump. So After. from the beginning, I had to keep spatting. Like AP. That. And did you it. did you get a uh, shoe deal? I had, I was under armor when I first came in, and they let me. Uh, oh, I did the shocker. Click here. clack. Yeah, throw the shocker. Oh, I did the shocker here. I jammed it. (laughs) 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 Boom. Uh, That right there was one of the hardest hits I've ever delivered or taken was that on on, uh, Aaron Aaron Foster Foster. in the goal line. And it looks like nothing, but it was like straight neck broken. And you just just tried to kill a guy and here you come again, obviously. Aaron Aaron Foster was a monster. He was. Aaron Foster did the amount of bows that I've seen Aaron Foster do against the Indianapolis Colts. That's the cast. That was nasty. Steelers won that game. What'd you weigh when you played, AJ? Uh, I came in at like, oh, what's this guy tried to get me? Um, oh, yeah, let's fight that. You know the only reason that worked on Ben? Because I got sucked up. I took like yep. a big old step into the line of scrimmage when I should not have. And so I think I 
disappeared from Ben's vision for oh, a second. Oh, AB farted your Isn't face. Isn't Antonio Brown tackling you? He farted your face. Yeah. <laughs> like what, the chiropractor guy. What, what did you weigh? What did you weigh? Uh, I came in at like 248, and then my, la- oh. my first probably four or five Jeez. years, and then my last four or five years, I was like 230. These highlights two. don't realize that if AJ would have played in the AFC North, he would have been a 14-time Pro Bowler because all the plays were against the AFC North. Yeah, he had a hell of a run against them. You know, physical football teams. That's, right. mm-hmm. That's the type of style that AJ liked to play, but your athleticism was something that, you know, watching those freshman highlights of you last week – it's awesome. Nuts. You just get dropped into a game because of an injury, and then all of a sudden, eh, give me that thing. Centerville, Ohio, you done good, AJ. That boy, oh, yeah. 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 You done good. Kirk Herbstreit, too. That's a, that's a welcome to the college football moment. I Freshman year at Wisconsin, I think we ended up winning the game like 13-7, to 7, like every game we ever won at Ohio State. And C. Grant, unbelievable player, I was backing up, rolls his ankle. I get thrust in there as an 18-year-old playing against all grown-ass men on Wisconsin's offensive line. They had like three fullbacks that were 270, almost could knock your head off every play. Like that's so I was like, oh, okay. This is yeah, this is it. You didn't back down though, did you? It was great. We won the game. I got blasted a few times. We got to make a few tackles and yeah, build some confidence. If somebody's gonna die here, I guess it's gonna have to be you. Exactly. AJ Hawk has told us before mm-hmm. about if I'm in a situation where somebody's gonna die. It's not going to be me. Nope. It is going to be you. And that's what he felt like. He's an 18-year-old. That's right. Just like whenever he was 14 and he decided to end Kirk Herbstreit's padded football career. That's right. The other president of Ohio. It's funny how the world comes together, doesn't it, AJ? It's a beautiful thing. Every, everything's connected. Is someone up there Someone up there controlling us or what? Whoa. Oh, don't you say that. Washington Post would be pissed. Is he talking about conspiracy theories right now? Oh, I, I apologize. Yeah, I did not mean simulation theory. I didn't mean to say anything. Oh, you were talking about God. No, nah, you know, simulation theory. Someone's controlling us. Yeah, you, you sent me something the other day about the old simulation theory. Yeah, there's some uh, theorists, which I don't even know what the hell they're titled, super smart person that does what Oppenheimer did pretty much. Okay. Right? I didn't even know that was something. Just scientists. So when you get to a point that is so smart, your job is just to, like, po- hypothesize about potential things, mm-hmm. I think. And then it becomes a law. Yeah, it's bananas. Yeah. How do, how do they find who the smartest? I guess they find themselves. That's yeah, they, I mean, like Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking, he was one of those guys who was just making How did he do theories it? He's about still black around? holes. Well, I have no idea. But somebody yeah, said well, basically yeah, that the, yeah, the math says it's more likely to be a simulation than not a simulation. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. some math person. It's like, Jeez. I would love to what hear how happened? we got to this part. And what, <laughs> what are the statistics? This is like when the Bigfoot hunting guys told me what a Bigfoot sounds like. It's like, we know. If that's the case, there's a lot of news to break here. Yeah. We have an exact sound that this thing that nobody's ever documented makes. That is awesome. It feels like that type of thing. Our math tells us that it's more likely a simulation than not a simulation. It's like, I believe that's possible, but I would like to see where the fuck these numbers are coming from. <laughs> what, are you, what is the math that you're adding up? The amount of room that space potentially has? I have no idea. I have no clue. That shit makes no sense. None of it. Yeah. But I appreciate that yeah. they exist out there. Keep yeah. doing it. Yeah, keep, yeah. Doing. keep, keep doing. hypothesizing. Smart people. Keep hypothesizing. Take low Tesla. What's that? Smartest human ever. Dog. It makes all the math make sense. People right. say Tesla's actually a huge piece of shit. Nikola Tesla? Mm-hmm. I don't think it's... Is that yeah, a actually. company or... Oh, I think you... you, you just, is that a maybe voice? I don't know. No, no, no. The people actually do say Tesla is a huge piece of shit. So oh, is it because are, of the time in which they lived? Probably. There's there a lot of terrible stuff? Probably. That's an interesting thing to kind of add into it. Mm-hmm. Like Albert Einstein, when, when he was alive recently. I learned that in an Oppenheimer thing. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that? I did not. Bro, I've only seen him in black and white with that fucking yeah. crazy hair. And I'm like, oh, yeah. oh, he must be he must be real old, like long time ago. He was in that Oppenheimer movie. Oh, yeah. He still mm-hmm. had it. He was pretty quick witted at that time in the Oppenheimer. 40s. Mm-hmm. I didn't, did you know How this? much of that did you watch? I, I knew yeah, when did he die? Was it forties or fifties? He was pissed. He was not happy with what they were doing. Well, Oppenheimer. Op was definitely What'd you 40s. see, like forty minutes of the Oppenheimer? No, I watched the movie. Of course. I watched it. I heard it was not as everything that Everyone thought it would be. I, I think my take was that it could have been like two hours shorter or something like that. I think yeah. if I do recall what I thought. But it was nice to learn about things that had happened and yeah. taken place. I enjoy that. Second time was much easier just because you knew what they were talking about. And also there's two different movies happening allegedly that yeah. I didn't know going into it. Mm-hmm. If you watch it, the black and white. Oh, I might need to. I'll watch it. Yeah, like they follow Oppenheimer's life and then they follow the. AJ, sounds like you're not going to watch it. That's what that sounded like. No, I think when it pops up on my feed somewhere, I'll probably pay the money to rent it or buy it. You're going to have to have, like, what, four or five hours? Just like the uh, Killers yeah, of the Flower right. Moon? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That's three hours. How long is that? Three hours and 26, I think. Ooh. Yep. That's Leo and Bob De Niro? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. De Niro has a southern accent in that movie. It's awesome. 
I watched that movie. Okay. What, you already watched it? I watched the movie. I saw the movie. How long? Huh? Three hours and 30 minutes. You watched something that was three hours and 30. It was date night with my wife. I love her. So we had to get out in town. We know it. you love her, but we know you would it also was, be elbowing her three minutes in and say, all right, we're right, not night. doing this. It was date night. <laughs> not doing this. Okay. It was date night. How long? Did, did one of us not know how long that movie was? <laughs> sure. Whenever date night was discussed and figured out? <clears throat> Maybe. How many times did you look at the clock? Buddy, I went to the bathroom a couple of times. I was wondering real quick, like, how are we? How much the movie? Is there going to be some action in this thing, or what is? Uh, great story. Figured out the story within the first like thirty-five minutes. That's always fun. Mm -hmm. And who knows if I'm right or not? But that's how I'm viewing it. Sure. And we're going to move forward. And Scorsese tells a great tale. Always. We were there for more than an hour. That's what I would like to let everybody know. <laughs> oh, congrats! You almost. Thank you. Yeah, just like the previews ended, you saw the first like opening scene. You said, "All right, let's get, let's do this." That's a whole other thing. Unless I was lied to by the wife, like. That movie start time was nowhere near the actual start time. No, no. Oh, it's minutes. not. You got to go 30 minutes late. Go 30 minutes after this. This was like 25 minutes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That used to be 10. Yeah. Now it's, yeah, it's pushing Brutal. damn near 30. Yeah, I'm so sitting there. And now, okay. We showed up on time for something for the first time ever. Like, I think that's maybe our first time ever doing that. It was pretty cool. We are a movie going couple. Like, enjoy going to the movies. But then they have the lights on for this thing for 25 minutes. They're not even the lights off previews happening for the first 15 minutes Jeez. and then the lights go off and then the whole thing starts and then i didn't even know the movie was three and a half hours until after we left so like after we left she was like we're missing like two and a half hours of this movie or whatever and i'm like two there's two more hours of that movie how is that even possible i guess it was a good story yeah. yeah, I guess it was a good story. Movies like that, you really can't show up early because if you do, that's the situation you're in where you're there for four and a half hours. I'll watch the end of it. And the Osage tribe was nice to learn about. Mm -hmm. I did not know they existed. I did Based not. on true story, right? Mm -hmm. I, that's what I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning, wow. Scorsese comes out. I think it's Scorsese and gives. Wait, like Tom Cruise before Maverick? Because that's that was unprecedented seeing Tom pop up before Maverick. So Scorsese pops up on the screen right before the movie starts and oh. gives a speech about how long he's wanted to tell his story and true story and everything and thank you for supporting the movies mm -hmm. and then boom he goes off and then we're right into Love it that move the osage though what a what a group yeah hey they were the i don't know how i don't want to say they were the first ones but like i don't want to give it too much away Ooh. it's not giving away honestly what you told us about the osage tribe makes me want to see it more okay Same. so osage tribe Same. leaves uh Kansas, Missouri, and somewhere else goes to Oklahoma from the way that I watched. Yeah. This tribe goes to Oklahoma. They find a new piece of land. As they're kind of diminishing and, and kind of, I think, like dying disappearing, off. dying off, they find uh, oil on their land. So then they keep the rights to the oil and negotiate deals with everybody. So then they become like the wealthiest people pretty much in the area and they start living good like we got we got mansions we got jewels we got diamonds we got everything and then obviously mo money mo problems mm -hmm. and uh that's where de niro and leo come in Hell Hell yeah. yeah and numerous other whites you know that come in and and kind of wreck shop i'll say but it's actually learning about the osage was cool very very cool the more you learn about the natives and everything it's like it's crazy fascinating time what a yeah. crazy weird time it, was. It, it is not just here though like worldwide it is a yeah. Yeah. you know it's uh wait is leo a good uh, I th from the previews it looks like bob de niro is a bad guy and leo is, falls in love with somebody and is a decent guy yes that is what i thought yeah well. don't give that is up, that not i it? do want to see it and i i don't want to know already yeah. Yeah. whether or not that's yeah the trailer, I, feel I like, like no i like no when i go in <laughs> yeah we already know unfortunately Leo has a southern accent, I will say. Mm -hmm. Interesting hair. Still handsome as the devil. Always. Of course. <laughs> Which is a big part of it, by wow. the way. Big, yeah, big I part feel like I know kind of what that Charming first hour pants off a moose. Will you stop it? I'm not oh, giving away well, anything. <laughs> you know, this is based on what you told me. No, just off the trailer. I don't know. It's a long one. I'll probably finish it whenever I'm at home or something. But you finished uh, I'll tell you Avatar how 2 yet? What's that? You finished Avatar 2 yet? So that so uh, so 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 so. so, so uh, you guys imitating? Who are you imitating? What? You uh, what? what? When you're saying so like that, what does that what mean? What do you mean? It's not imitating. It's celebrating. Don't repeat yeah. my question. You do it. Don't buy time. Re Wait, what's that? Huh? What? <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> not us. <laughs> oh no! How was the parade? Uh, 
That was awesome. I saw a little Becky, Becky yeah, Hammond really counting money. Yeah, awesome. Becky Hammond was yeah. counting the fine money. Sweet. Adam, talk your shit. Yeah. Becky. Yeah. She's the best. NBA needs her. Oh, no. She'll be there soon. Yeah, shoot, absolutely. Shoot, shoot, shoot. <laughs> shoot, shoot. All right, I'm done with it. Let's get the fuck out of here. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, ladies Break. and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Breaking it. Uh, before we get out of here. Okay. This was at the buzzer, not because of us, but because of order, you know. Oh. Mm -hmm. And logistics. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a birthday today. God damn it. It's not yours, Connor. I know. That's why I said God damn it. What? I didn't know we whose birthday yours? it was. I, I hadn't said happy birthday. Well, that's the thing. Nobody does. Because then, as we wrap up this show, there's no better way than to celebrate a man who's been really the only graphic designer for our company for numerous years right now. Big things on the horizon in his personal life and also in his professional life. Ladies and gentlemen, happy birthday to Dirty. Happy birthday, Dirty! Happy birthday, Dirty! Now, I do Where's believe it? there is a, uh, a cake. Yeah. If you could, happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh, he's coming out here. Okay, I thought he was. Happy birthday, dear Dirty. It's a bunt cake. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Dirty. Appreciate you. Happy birthday, Dirty. Like the Dirty. Dirty, we appreciate you. Hey, you're about to embark on an awesome adventure mm -hmm. with your uh, bride. This next year is going to be your best year. We appreciate the hell out of you. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, have a birthday. Hey, baby. Happy birthday, Dirty. Hell yeah, Dirty. Hell yeah. That's a real talent. The art. Dog. Capability. Real talent. Dirty's made us better. Dirty also, remember, if you go up to Indianapolis Coach Training Camp, catching punts, mm -hmm. spinning the pigskin a little bit. Yeah. He's about to be a dad. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the club. Those first three weeks. Good luck. It's like buds. Yeah. I mean, it's like, <laughs> Tough weeks. <laughs> like, not as, you know, buds is like for Navy, obviously, getting ready for war, vastly different, but Sim it's like human buds. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's like, how can you be tested to the max? All right, no sleep, doing something you've never done before, and the worst case scenario is the actual worst case scenario. Good luck. That's what those first three weeks are. I was never told that. So I would just like to do my service to other potential fathers out there, Dirty more specifically. Just know the first three weeks, everybody's thinking the same things. And you're gonna do great, Dirty. Mm -hmm. Proud of you, buddy. I don't know how you have four kids. I don't know how you have four kids. I don't know how you did it. I don't know how you guys got through it, but I'm incredibly impressed, AJ. I thought there was nine kids there yesterday. Yeah, there, there was, was 14 of them. Mm -hmm. And you talk about them beating Marv. Hey, what Marv just takes off too in the middle of that game. You guys got a guy over there in Marv. And Kyle He's McCord, awesome. too, maybe, huh? Yeah, man. I mean, Marv also is, like, a, such a unique superstar to where, like, he's super down to earth. I've heard, I've heard from a million – like, he showed up at Bobby's son's birthday party. He had it at the indoor facility a while back, and he gets Mar He just asked Marv to come. Marv came, take pictures, talk to the parents, everything, just because. Well, I got a jugs machine session at 5, 6.30, and 9.30. So when is this party? Oh, <laughs> uh, it's at uh, 7. Oh, can we be 740 maybe I can swing by? I got to do more jugs. Hey, now, with the NIL, are the academics still as expected as they were before? Do we know that? Hard to imagine. You got to stay it's eligible, right? What do you have to, isn't there yeah, a certain like, yeah. threshold to stay eligible to play? Yeah. Interesting. I haven't really talked about the academics much in this new what NIL. Five? No. Notre Dame, we, we chatted about it with Freeman just because you asked him about it. That's oh, getting hard. into school, though. That's to get yeah. in. Not now, once you're in. Yeah, have we heard any discussions about once you've been in? We had a couple guys on our team that were academically ineligible for a few bowl yeah. games. It that used to happen, happen all the time. That used to happen more, way more than we see now. Now it's not happening. Because everything's online. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. If you got NIL money, you can just get... Oh, You can use, use Fiverr and have someone... Pay ten bucks <laughs> yeah. and someone will write you a paper. I used to have the guys coming out of school. I, I feel like I never hear that anymore. Ever. Never. That's a good point. That's a good point. Everybody's doing great. Yeah. Hey, I'm yep. happy to hear that. This, yeah. this generation of athletes takes care of their academics they just did. like they take yeah. care of their finances. That's right. Probably well, has to do with like how college is now and how much different it is for 
like guys like Marvin Harrison to go out. They can't. Yeah, they can't go. They out. legitimately can't. Like, so they're doing their work, and they're doing their football. They're playing video games. Congrats to them, and congrats to Marv. If you don't want to go to the NFL, maybe use your one transfer. Come to West Virginia next year. Oh, you know what I mean, come to West Virginia next. Good year. idea. I heard, yeah, I heard rumors about that. I mean, we can start them right now. It's just rumors. You know, yeah. we can sit down and say whatever. Yeah. Is that what you're hearing? Yeah, I, I think I saw a few reports. Hey, Ryan Day texted me. He said he enjoyed being on the program. That's huge. Nice. How about him? That is cool. We that haven't awesome. really looked back on this. Yeah. Him talking to you seriously. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Oh, it's awesome. That was the best. It was pretty cool. It was. That's fucking pretty hilarious. Like the way he handled it all. He had a big grin on when I come on. Up, yeah. And I don't think people actually realize that. I think they thought, like, he had no idea that was happening. That was we did not tell yeah. Him. yeah. Yeah, we did yeah. not tell him. <laughs> he could have reacted very differently. Oh, he yeah. He definitely could have. Yeah, and it, it certainly, uh, you know, that's one of those decisions that, you know, has to be made in real time that you don't mm -hmm. think about. And I assume in business school, they're not necessarily going to teach you, or journalism school or TV school or right. anything like this. Um, like, all right. Not easy to book some people, and I'm not saying Ryan Day's that, but head coach of Ohio State, going to be tough to potentially get on the program, especially with what took place with Lou Holtz just a few weeks back because of our program. Now, we have a couple wins because he's friends there and we got an Ohio State legend on the show, but do we want to tell him and give them any reason at all to potentially not come on the show? The answer was absolutely not. It might not have even been him either, but someone probably would have told him, like, yeah, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, because everybody show. is so smart. Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying the Ohio State SID is and acts that way, but everybody is looking for reasons to tell people to do stuff or to not do stuff, especially if they're getting paid to say stuff and they might not even know what the fuck they're talking about. So we decided not to tell him. And, uh, mm -hmm. I think it was the right play Absolutely. because it got to showcase Ryan Day who he is. Yeah. Like him just going in yeah. there and just bobbing, weaving with it, talking. He's a dude. Yeah, he's a dude. Yeah. Dude, he's, he's not like he's not out. a robot coach. He's a guy. He's a human. That's what I think showed beautifully. It was awesome. I, I think it was good for Ryan Day. Like, I, you know what I mean? And if we would have told him or the people around him, and obviously his people are the best, and they wouldn't do this. But there's been numerous situations where we have pitched something that we thought would be a good move, good idea end up being solid and it gets killed before it even gets to the person because the team is so smart in protecting the person it's like ryan day's the head coach of ohio state okay he's fucking smart i assume he's a dude loves football like let's see he handled it beautifully yeah yes, he so did. incredibly pumped about that i think we might come on the show again too <laughs> yeah that'd be, be awesome sweet. that would be cool yeah for sure i don't really remember hey. anything he said because uh you know like that mask is very uncomfortable when i was doing it but it was a good time. I heard, I seen there's a big rip down here on the neck. It's almost like two pieces yeah. now. There coming is, together. yeah. Well, it's very difficult getting it on without ripping the entire, you know, chin and, and everything off. So it's, it's a very delicate process. What are you going to say, ZD Baby? No, before Ty went out there, we like asked who's in the production truck. We we're hiding for, from Ryan Day. And now he was like, there's a 98% chance Ryan Day punches me right in the mouth. <laughs> Like he he had the mindset to like get ready and take one in the mouth. Could you imagine? It, it, you were in character. He's sick. Mm -hmm. You came up, you shook everybody's hands, boys. Boys, and then you gave a wave to the crowd as uh -huh. if you were an 86-year-old man. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were in full character. Had to be. Had to be. Just pay respects, and I'm happy you two settled that. Mm -hmm. He came out on the other end of it, I think, looking good. Oh, yeah. I think so. That game between Michigan and Ohio State, Ugh. buddy. Huh? Let's go. How about in Utah, the game we're going to? There's a dude that plays both sides for Utah. Plays Ooh. offense and defense. Here we go. Absolute dog. Like, there is – some real star power happening around college football this year. And I'm not saying it's different than any other years past. I'm just saying this year feels like there's teams everywhere. Loaded. Utah's going to be fucking sick. On yeah. Friday. Pumped. Let's, let's enjoy it. Seeing the scene looks amazing. I think it's going to be chilly, yeah. right? It's getting better. Weather was supposed to be cold, rainy Friday. That has moved to Thursday now. Perfect. Friday now, kind like of clear 50, sky. 53 and sun, it looks like. That's Afternoon, high. morning, like 36 yeah. Yeah. in the morning. Ooh. It'll be a little chilly. That's nicer than Ohio. Ohio, yeah, bro. No, it's supposed to be like cold and rain. The game day was perfect, but oh, yeah. Friday yeah. was that, nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So game yeah. day was perfect. I was expecting it not to be. So I had that big wool fucking jacket on. It got real hot. Yeah, it got real. It was the perfect football day because I, I hit game day with quick with you, and then we went out, hit my buddy's tailgate, and then went to the field for pregame. And I was like telling my kids, I'm like. This is the most perfect day you could ever have for this game. Like, we are very lucky to be here. This is the awesome. dream college football day. And you guess what you did? You told truth on that Zotron, too. <laughs> that you boy told hard. truth. It ended up paying off. All right, let's get the hell out of here. We're back tomorrow. And then we're off uh, to Utah 
for Friday's show. Cannot wait for Thursday, though. Mm -hmm. huh? Thursday's going to be a big one. Oh, yeah. Kick off week eight of the week NFL eight. season. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Will the insane finishes and covers continue from week seven into week eight? Is this the new NFL now? Is it the 70% public Ooh. losing weeks? Have those begun because the AI of the sports book have started to keep up and find out ways to beat us all? That's what we find out on Thursday. It's just, I think, the bad or the good teams, the teams, the Lions, the Niners, all those teams that have been just covering, they just didn't this week. And that's going to happen. But, you know, you know who did? Oh. Chiefs are the best ATS team in the. Uh, that's very the different than normal. Yeah. Yeah. Rare. That is very different than normal. The Chiefs normally do not cover. They win, don't cover. This year they're covering. You know why? What's that? It's a great way to end it. Because you know what we love? Love. Travis and Taylor are in love. Mm -hmm. Every new thing we see that gets printed in a publication tells me that they love each other more and more. Hell yeah. Exclusive from Daily Mail. Taylor Swift thinks Travis Kelsey's NFL dominance is beyond sexy and loves going to games so she can bond with his friends and family. While Kansas City Chiefs star Travis Kelsey, he's telling a pop star that she's his lucky charm. Okay, risen! They're in love, boys. Yep, yeah. Yeah, Everybody yeah. needs to understand that, AJ. This is actual love. These two are Has perfect. Has he been ring shopping? Huh? Has he been ring shopping? You know, sometimes when you know, you know. I want to let him know. That it feels like we've known since the beginning, this might be the perfect matchup, like actually. And uh, I'm happy Taylor Swift is getting to experience sports. You know, got handshakes in sports. Yep. Mm -hmm. You got yells, you got crazy. It's like, welcome to the sports world, Taylor. Welcome to the sports world. And shout out to you, Travis, for representing for all football. You're doing a great job. Let's get the hell out of here. NHL Frozen Frenzy tonight. Here we yes. go. NBA tip off tonight. Yes. Bingo. Oh, Philly, game seven. Philly's game MLB seven. game yeah. seven. Which? Oh, yes. Yeah. We haven't discussed much, but. In Philly. Tell you what, old buddy last night for, uh, who was the guy that had an absolute monster night? Arizona. Uh, you're talking yeah. about Adolis Garcia for uh, Tetris. Yeah. yeah. Yes, he is awesome. Okay, so the Rangers have advanced. Yeah. Yes. They yep. beat the Astros. Yep. Mm -hmm. Astros always good, except for when Ted Cruz is in the building. Right. Yes. Yes. Ted Cruz is a losing oh. machine for the Astros. That continued last night. Rangers going to the World Series. Yes. And now the Phillies, who have been unstoppable at home, lose last night at home. Yep. Yes. It's all right. Boys are back tonight. Boys are back tonight. Phillies dominate the Arizona Diamondbacks in Game 7 in front of that crowd, and we have a World Series between the Rangers and Phillies that the whole world's going to want to watch. First Game 7 for Philadelphia Phillies. They want an experience one. You know what I mean? Why not? They just want an experience one. They wanted their fans to experience one. There's nothing like Game 7. No. Nope. No, no, no. Especially in that stadium <laughs> with those bats. Mm -hmm. Oh, tonight's going to be fireworks all over the yard. And I have been told that if one team wins... There's a chance we have a person on the show, Mark. Certain nice. someone. Oh. Okay. He does this. Mm -hmm. yeah. As long as he's not on the schedule right now. Sweet hair. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, and he hits it real far. Mm -hmm. He was relacing his glove mid-game. Oh, yeah. Because he's a dog. With his teeth? He's self-sufficient. No. He's an independent. He dropped out of high school when he was 16 so he could become the guy that he is. So that he can become the guy in a game seven at home, must-have game, hits six home runs. Hopefully. He's going to hit six home runs tonight. Yep. That'd be awesome. And he's coming on the show tomorrow. That'd be a lot. Let's go. Has anybody ever done that? Anybody? No. <laughs> What's the most home runs one game? Five. Okay, so I was in Four, ball. actually. I think four. Uh, I don't think anyone's ever done five. I know several guys have hit four. Bryce might hit five tonight. Bryce okay. might hit five okay. tonight. Oh, yeah. From what I've been told, he's seeing the ball. It's a beach ball. That's good news. <laughs> also, Stott shot. That's going big. Mm -hmm. This Diamondbacks team, I do apologize for seeming like we have not paid attention at all. If you win, we will certainly pay you. Your good graces that you have earned from beating the Philadelphia Phillies. Well, but that's the team of destiny over there in the original capital of the United States of America. Yeah. With the way their fans operate and the way that Liberty Bell has been sitting there for so long, mm -hmm. there's no chance they sure. they lose tonight, is how I feel. It's a win win. Because if the Phillies win, let's go around to the World Series. And if the Phillies lose, baseball season's over. All right, know? let's get out of here. <laughs> That's probably a more accurate depiction of what's about to happen. Uh, let's get to let's get to this evening. Let's enjoy our lives. You all are the greatest people of all time. Thank you for allowing us to do this every single day. Obviously, there's a lot of shots to the shins that are taking place. It comes with the incredible fortune and luck that we have to do this every day. You're the greatest humans on earth. We appreciate you. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. You never know what somebody's going through. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.